weekend, Mean Girls was number one, followed by Beekeeper, Wonka, Anyone But You. Fifth was Migration. And then you had Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, <clears throat> Gunter Karam, Night Swim, Boys in the Boat was ninth, and then the top ten was rounded out by the Book of Clarence. And a lot of celebration about movies happening with the award show season in full force. The 29th Annual Critics' Choice Awards were held last night, uh, hosted for a second year in a row by Chelsea Handler. Uh, it aired live on The CW. We have a couple of clips to play yeah, along yeah. with this. So Oppenheimer and Barbie continued to be the big winners for film. Oppenheimer took home eight awards, including Best Picture. Barbie received six awards in total uh, for television. <clears throat> Beef, The Bear, and Succession took home the most awards, also mirroring the Golden Globes. Has anybody here watched Beef yet? I couldn't get or into it. Or some of it. I, I, I think I watched two episodes. It was one of those that I'm like... This is more annoying to me than anything. Not just the the, the whole plot conceit. It uh, is that the one that begins with the road rage incident? Yeah, yeah, and, and it continues on. Yep. So there's, it, it starts off with sort of a road rage um, interaction, and then that is the crux of the series moving forward. So I caught about ten minutes of it, and I, I kind of agreed, Case. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to dig this. Some okay. people really, really loved yeah, it, yeah. but I was like, I can't get into the the, the characters. I'm like, you're both a holes. Okay. Uh, Emma Stone won Best Actress for her role in Poor Things, while Paul Giamatti won Best Actor for The Holdovers. We have a clip of Emma Stone uh, in her acceptance speech, and let's go to that. Here we go. This is the Critics' Choice Awards, and they, it is about outside opinion <laughs> at an award show and critics, but I'm very grateful to the critics for this. Um, but I'm just learning not to care what you think. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> thank you still so much. It means a lot. She's great. Um, That's the, uh, wonderful. That movie's getting a big buzz. It's supposed to be very quirky. It has sort of a, a Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein vibe. She's oh, yeah? this, she's this uh, basically um, child's mind, brain put into the, the, the body of an adult woman. And um, so it, it has all those elements to it. So they're saying very, very quirky, but okay. uh, the critics love it. Okay. Uh, referring to his visit to In-N-Out Burger following his Golden Globes win, <laughs> Paul Giamatti joked, Wow, I didn't think my week could get any better than going viral for eating a cheeseburger. <laughs> and he said, Seriously, guys, I need that endorsement, so let's all just pray for me. Ah. So. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Um Margot Robbie presented her friend and Barbie co-star America Ferrara with the 2024 See Her Award. And during her acceptance speech, Ferrara said that as a first-generation Honduran-American girl in love with TV and film and theater, she said she had yearned to see people like myself on screen as full humans. We also have a clip of Harrison Ford. He received a standing ovation when he accepted the Career Achievement Award. So let's hear a little bit of Harrison Ford's speech. <laughs> The fine actors, I see many of them here tonight that I've worked with, and I'm, I, I'm deeply happy to have had the opportunities that I've had, and I'm grateful. Thank you. Um, I won't take any more of your time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he is he is now uh, performing Harrison Ford as Harrison Ford. He's that gruff thing, but it, yeah. it, it's so, it, it works. I yeah. won't take any more of your time. Uh, he also uh, thanked his wife, Callista Flockhart. I also uh, want to thank Charo. And all his co-stars throughout the year. Charo, how old is Charo anyway? 73. 73. Just like Casey's mom. Okay. And then uh, finally, we have a clip of uh, Kieran Culkin. He won Best TV Actor. He's on a roll. Yeah, he is. And he is phenomenal in succession. So here is uh, his acceptance speech or a portion of it. I'm a little bit thrown, actually. I had some stuff I prepared to say, but um, I have this uh, hair that grows on the side of my ear. Uh, this like it's not like a ear hair. It's like on the side here. It gets really long, and then my wife surprises me by plucking it. <laughs> and then Sarah Snook discovered it on set, and she started doing it too. So a few minutes ago, I feel this pain, and she goes, "It's back." And I was feeling it, and I said, "I thought it was on this side." And then my wife, who's sitting on the right, says, "No, no, no, it's there." And then they both started taking turns plucking my hair, and it was really painful. And now I'm here talking about it. <laughs> 
<laughs> instead of saying what I had prepared to say. Uh, so the, the char his character in the show, is it is it very similar to he himself? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very much so. He's a talented actor. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm curious to see where he goes from here. I agree, and uh, but but it's uh, you get a lot of him now. The snark. It, he's, yeah. he's a shallow, yeah. evil. You know, there's a lot of complexities to that character. But yes, he's very quirky and super snarky, sarcastic. Right. Like right. like, and the what they write for his character is just oh my god, he can just cut with a word man <laughs> it's it's an interesting character steve you would you would yeah it. i think i'm looking forward to that so a few deaths to report unfortunately uh but uh long long life for joyce randolph best remember for playing trixie norton in the honeymooner she passed away over the weekend in manhattan she was 99 years old wow. Uh, complications from dementia, according to her son. Good run, though. Yeah, Ms. Randolph uh, emerged from obscurity with credits including an appearance in uh, the Clorets gum commercial and a play called Ladies' Night in a Turkish Bath uh, to join the cast of the Honeymooners and one of the most enduring, enduringly popular sitcoms ensembles of all time. She was the last surviving member, of course, uh, Jackie Gleason. The Honeymooners began as a skit on his variety show, Cavalcade of Stars, and um, he, of course, played Ralph uh, Cramden. Art Carney was Ed Norton. Audrey Meadows was Alice Cramden. And uh, Trixie was cast a little bit later on the skits. Roughly 10 minutes in length continued on CBS on the Jackie Gleason show from 1952 to 57. And then became a freestanding half-hour comedy sitcom called The Honeymooners in 1955. And it just ran for two seasons, 55 and 56. But it was considered one of the all-time I breaks. know. You know what? I like it. I've never been a massive Honeymooners fan. It always seemed a little depressing to me. The fact that he's always threatening to murder Alice. Yes. Yeah. You know? Uh, Jackson, come down here. I murdered Alice. Uh, Joyce, Virginia. I need you to help me hide a body. Sarola was her name, her birth name. She was born in Detroit and headed to New York in 1943. She changed her surname to Randolph because casting directors thought Sarola was Italian and she kept being asked to only play those roles. You're Italian. Uh, she <laughs> came to Gleason's attention as a replacement for Elaine Stritch, who had originated the role of Trixie. Uh, Ms. Randolph brought a more wholesome interpretation to a character initially played as a former burlesque dancer. I didn't know that. Uh, Matt soon replaced uh, Pert Kelton as Alice. They actually did The Honeymooners when Jackie Gleason had his famous variety show later on. Um, it, it, so he had one in the beginning, then the one right. later on, and they did another version of it that would appear as a skit again in the variety show. Yeah, it said it continued in the 1970s on yeah. CBS, but they had other actresses yeah, playing yeah, yeah. the wives. Uh, so... In a 1999 interview, uh, she said that she had little memory of her time with the Honeymooners because of the breakneck speed of their work. She said, fast-paced, very little time to socialize, just enough time to read and memorize lines. Uh, she described Jackie Gleason as a mercurial figure, jolly or else in a black Irish mood, and Art Carney was shy and quiet. Uh, Gleason died in 87, Meadows in 1996, and Carney in 2003. So that's the end of that very, very famous yeah, yeah. ensemble group. Uh, another person passed away, Bill Hayes, actor who played the colorful Doug Williams on Days of Our Lives for more than 50 years and he died at 98 years old. He I recognize this guy the second I saw the picture. Originated his uh, Days of Our Lives role in 1970 and played the part on and off throughout 2023. Uh, the show's statement also observed that he and his wife Susan uh, Hayes remained the foundation of the Williams Horton family spanning more than 50 years. So she played Julie Williams on the show. Wow. Uh, they were awarded Lifetime Achievement Awards at the Daytime Emmys in 2018. He was an original consideration for Screech on Saved by the Bell. I had oh, no they idea. They thought about he was that. too mature. Uh, he got his start on TV as a singer on your show of shows in the early 50s. Uh, even uh, after he got his break on days, he continued to guest on shows like Matlock, Hooperman. Cop Rock and Frazier. Cop Rock. Do you remember Cop Rock? I do. Yeah. But listen to this. As a successful singer, he had a number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100 for five weeks. Do you have any idea what he sang? No. Steve, he sang the ballad of Davy Crockett. Wow. That was I used him. to love that song. It was a huge yeah. hit. Davy, Davy, Davy Crockett. Crockett. King of the Wild Frontier. Wow. Uh, that sold over two million copies, by the way. Uh, on Broadway, he starred in Rodgers and Hammerstein's uh, Me and Juliet in 1953. 
Uh, and uh, they had their wedding uh, on uh, the two had their wedding on the show in 1976. So he lived a long and a fruitful. He, he worked up until 2023. Apparently, the best way to ensure longevity is to join a soap opera. Yeah, because apparently. you'll live forever. All right, and then one more death to pass along. Peter Crombie, who was a recurring and popular character as Crazy Joe Davola on oh, Seinfeld. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Passed away on Wednesday. Oh, he was man. 71, yeah. That's a shame. Uh, details on the death were not disclosed, but apparently he had a brief illness. Uh, Crombie's unpredictable Davola appeared in five episodes in season four, which included stalking Jerry <laughs> and dating Elaine at one point. Uh, the character was named for TV producer Joe Davola, who has dozens of credits. Uh, the actor himself had 35 credits, including uh, films My Dog Skip, Natural Born Killers, The Blob, Seven, Rising Sun, and Born on the Fourth of July. We have a clip if you want to hear him being crazy Joe Davola. Oh, okay, here we go. Hey, message, I'll call you back. Thanks. Jerry, Joe Davola. <laughs> I have a hair on my tongue. I can't get it off. You know how much I hate that? Oh, of course you do. You put it there. I know what you said about me, Seinfeld. I know you badmouthed me to the execs at NBC. Put the kibosh on my deal. Now I'm going to put the kibosh on you. You know I've kiboshed before. And I will kibosh again. <laughs> No details on survivors <laughs> no. or memorial plans was immediately available, so something quickly happened. Did yeah. you see that? I think there was another guy in person who was a soap opera guy I was not familiar with, but he was also like a physical uh, fitness guru who passed away just like 51, 52. I did, but I skipped over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this guy was like in the most incredible shape I've ever seen, and I'm like, if this guy's passing away. Yeah, Adam Sandler are posting something about him because he was in, I think, the movie Grown Ups. Yeah, he played like a. He worked at the at the water park or right, something right, like right. That. But I, I didn't. I wasn't really that familiar. It's like, with him, like so. I'd seen the guy, and I'm like, oh, man, well, there's no hope for me. Uh, Jason Momoa has cleared the air about being homeless following his divorce to Lisa Bonet. That's so sad. With all his film credits that he's homeless. He said, I'm just houseless. I'm not homeless. Oh, oh well, there's a big distinction there. Uh, he told People Magazine in an interview on uh, Friday. He said, I have a nice trailer. Everyone's like, Jason Momoa is homeless. And I'm like, <laughs> relax. I have an effing sleeping bag. <laughs> Uh, Momoa, who caught attention last week for sharing his newfound transient lifestyle, explained that he is actually excited uh, to buy a house, but only one day. Uh, Momoa further joked that people will be dumbfounded when he eventually pulls the trigger on a home purchase. Uh, but his misconstrued comment came from an interview that he did with Entertainment Tonight last week in which he explained how his work life led to a nomadic way of living. He said, I don't even have a home right now. He said, I live on the road. Uh, he's been traveling across the U.S. while filming an upcoming docuseries called On the Rome. And he added that he has an effing sleeping bag for when he needs to rest his head. He impresses me as the kind of like a, like a Jack Kerouac kind of, yeah, yeah. no problem. Yeah. Roll with it. Uh, he said, he's a bro. I'm, I'm always in these weird places. And added that uh, fans have been shocked to see him pop up in their small towns. He said, it, it happens all the time. They're like, what the hell are you doing in our hometown? And he said, I love the idea of just being with everyday people and doing my craft, which is filming and then showing them. And so I think through doing that for so long, I got to be curious about it. Um, his traveling doesn't end with the docuseries either, which is released on Max on the 18th. So this week it's coming out. Uh, he is jetting off to New Zealand to film Minecraft. After oh, he's that. In the, that's right. The Minecraft movie opens up. So, yeah, he's uh, he's a busy fella at this point. Add Kevin Hart to the list of comedians who believe that award shows are not the best environment for the craft. Uh, Hart told Sky News that he would never host the Oscars, saying award shows are, quote, very cold and not for everyone. He said those gigs aren't good for comics. He said it's no shot, you know, to the Oscars, no shot to the Globes or anything else. Those just aren't comedy-friendly environments. Uh, he said uh, his comments come on the heels of Joe Coy receiving the criticism after some of his his jokes fell flat while hosting the Golden Globes. Um, and he was uh, going to host the Oscars in 2019. Of course, he stepped aside after some past offensive tweets came to light. However, David Letterman, whose famous 1995 Oscars hosting woes, as you had mentioned last week, Steve, became the gold standard for how quickly it can go off the rails. Yeah, uh, He had told uh, the Hollywood Reporter Scott uh, Feinberg in a 25-year anniversary of the night that he believes 
Hart would actually be a great host. He would. But, uh, yeah. But he's saying it's it's just a it's tough, tough room. So tonight we have the Emmys because they were delayed. Yeah. And so it's like a conga line of award shows. And it's like, you know, uh, the, really the thing to do is to get to the awards. And I think it, it ebbs and flows from year to year depending on how many people have seen the things up for awards. Right. And that's really what I think would determine his excitement about it. Well, years ago, the whole thing... It, it started to turn into more of a roast of the yes. audience and, yeah. and, and a reverse roast at that. Because normally a roast is like a group of people right. talking about one person. <laughs> this is one person talking about various people in the audience. Right, right, right. It's a weird dynamic. It's really strange. Yeah. You know what I mean? Somebody got slapped and yeah, no yeah. one can't yeah. do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I saw an old clip of Kevin Hart with Jimmy on Jimmy Fallon's show. Uh, and Steve Irwin's son was there. I forget his name. And he you know, was bringing animals like yeah. Steve Irwin used to do. I I don't love Kevin Hart. Like I don't think he is hilarious like like people do. But th this clip, he was so scared of the animals. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. Like, but you could tell he was genuinely right. nervous. He didn't want to go anywhere near them. And it was it was a really good clip. I watched um, a current movie that he has out. It's on Netflix <laughs> called Lift. Yeah, I how is that? Over the weekend. I I still have, I still have like an hour left. So okay. Um, I, I won't. I'm not going to give right. anything away. Um, it's. It's interesting. It's it's good enough. It's a heist type of movie yeah, yeah. Um, with an ensemble cast a la, like, Ocean's Eleven. Um, but the thing is, is Kevin Hart is not playing funny Kevin Hart. Mm. He is the ringleader. He's the Danny Ocean. And so it's weird. He's got a couple of humorous lines here and there, but for the most part, it's straight is, ahead. Is he good? It's, it's, is good? It's, it's, it's pretty good. Okay. I, okay. My personal opinion, yeah, we got some enjoyment out of it. But it's kind of different seeing him not being the comedic lead. Yeah. Did you right. see uh, the movie he was in with Brian Cranston, where Brian Cranston was in the week? Well, you were actually there on oh, set yeah, when it was being were. filmed. Yes, yes yeah, I yeah. did. And I thought that was okay, too. But that was different. Kevin Hart was playing a more um, hardened... Right. Uh, uh, Streetwise. Street, you know, father, trying to make ends meet. And and, and I, I, I thought he did a good job at that. The script was, mm, it was just kind of okay in the whole, in the movie overall. Uh, but this was a little bit different. Um, when you were on know. set, did you suggest some new lines? Or I, I listen. I'm just a radio guy, but I do it this way. I tried to. Yeah, but, but they, 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 they just did a bums rush. It fell on deaf ears. But get uh, him out of here. I think it can be, you know, a, a and that was um, whereas you know you had a couple of uh, mains playing off of each other. This one, there's a he, he's like the ringleader. So I don't know. Yeah. Are you enjoying it so far? Uh, yeah, but uh, again, you know, these Netflix movies, they. They're Netflix movies. You know I can suggest like, something, and maybe yeah. you'd be in on this, Casey. What if, to really give him his bona fides as far as a dramatic actor, a remake of Training Day, him as Denzel, but he's driving in a child's seat? Okay, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Would you like that, Preston? I like that. <laughs> I think I can work. The whole time he's just in a booster. Okay. He's got the Fisher-Price steering yeah. wheel. Yeah. All right, uh, a couple of other things to, uh, other things to mention. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation about the state of Zendaya and Tom Holland's Yeah, what's going on there? After he had unfollowed, or she, I'm sorry, had unfollowed everyone on Instagram, including Tom Holland. However, the uh, actor told TMZ recently that they are absolutely not broken up. Uh, and the co-stars have been dating since 2021, so they're fine. So I was watching a TMZ clip, and they send their, their folks out, and they have these, these photographers, and, and, you know, they're... They catch him. He's walking down an alleyway from the gym, and the, the way these guys just jump all listen. Oh, I, I know it's part of the job, mm -hmm. but it but it's they they shower them they, they shower them with compliments, and they're just barraging him with questions. He just came out of the gym. He was totally nice. He was fine about right, it. Right. But it's like, oh my god, every waking second they're getting bombarded with questions. Yeah. So Zendaya stopped following everybody. I think she was just kind of purging things. By the way, she has 184 million followers on Instagram. Like like you. I like me. Yeah. A lot like me. Uh, I, this is nice to hear. Uh, Emma Stone, who we just played a clip from, uh, from the Critics' Choice Award, she is vying to appear on Jeopardy and not the celebrity version. Uh, the Poor Things actor revealed on a recent episode of Variety Awards Circuit Podcast uh, that the game show is her favorite show, and it's her dream to appear on it. She said, I apply every June. And she said... I don't want to be on Celebrity Jeopardy. Yeah, she doesn't apply for Celebrity Jeopardy. Usually she said, easier. I really want to earn my stripes, and I would like to go on Real Jeopardy. I had a, I had a, last week, Preston, I had one night where I rocked the categories. I thought, man, I could do I this. I got this. The next night, I was decimated. Mm. Yeah. Destroyed. That's what that show does to you. I, I can't watch Celebrity Jeopardy because the celebs uh, fart around with the time too much. 
<laughs> Thank like, you. Just to yeah, answer the goddamn question. I, I, yeah. I haven't they, they, pick your category <laughs> and then answer the question. Did a guy who's like you know works at uh, Staples in one scene on CSI uh -huh. and he's prattling on. Mm -hmm. We don't give a rat's ass. No, get right to it. Uh, Selena Gomez and Emily Blunt posed for a photo together at the AFI Awards luncheon on Friday while they both covered their mouths with their hands. Uh -huh. They were poking fun at the lip reading rumors. Uh, they said, we shall not speak. I, I, um, Kathy makes me nervous. I'm across the room and I'm saying something with her uncanny um, lip reading ability she displayed last week. She did display that and now <laughs> I'm scared as well. So, I did read both of your lips, by the way. That's right. That's why, Steve, it's like in a casino. You yeah. and I, when we talk, we cover our, <laughs> yeah. our, yeah. our, our mouths. Like, like, you know, the coach is on the sideline holding yeah. the thing. Play with yeah. Uh, so, Top Gun Maverick uh, co-writer Aaron Kruger uh, is now working on a script for another film in the franchise for Paramount. Uh, the studio is hoping that the sequels director, Joseph Kaczynski, will return for the third film as well, along with Tom Cruise, Miles Teller, and Glenn Powell. I don't have any other information other than that, but of course, um, why wouldn't you? That, Jesus Christ, it, yeah. it, it, it saved Hollywood is uh, basically what happened with that film, and, and, and it is an amazing achievement. You watch that whole sequence at the end, there are so many cut, cut, cut. I mean, the action is just going and moving, and yeah. the editing is amazing. Yeah. And they, they gave it a nice heart. They gave it hard. And, and they gave some some nods to the cheesiness of uh, of the first yeah. movie, and, and they did it right. It's, a, it's, it's a better movie than the first one. I agree. Oh, by far. 100%. Nick. In fact, but I believe, Nick, that it helps elevate my perception of the first one because now there's a context. Did you yeah. see, do you recognize, like, the, the last, I don't know, third of it is essentially the same plot as Star Wars? It is. Yeah, it's a run on the desktop. Oh, yeah, yeah. you're yeah. right. Yeah. And, and, of course, as with anything that you want to remain completely intact in times of war, you leave one little spot yeah. that if they manage to get in there, they can blow the whole thing to bits. Mm -hmm. Stay on target. <laughs> Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, one of the most buzzed about movies awards uh, movie over the last year, I'm sorry, will soon be available to stream on Peacock. Yep. Variety reports that the three-hour historical drama will be available for streaming February 16th, so roughly a month away from that. I thought it was going to sprout first. Uh, no, that'll it, that'll <laughs> it'll do reruns here. Okay. So, uh, no, some of uh, Nolan's other films, including Batman Begins, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, and Inception, will also be available for streaming on Peacock starting February first. Did you hear that story that Christopher Nolan had a, a couple weeks ago, where he was uh, he was on a uh, Oh, yeah. A Peloton session. Do we have that? Is that we a actually have the audio. Yeah, uh, it's a pretty funny press if you haven't heard it. Uh, hang on a second. What's this guy's name again? Christopher, Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan. Damn it. You might know him from the films. Uh, I hope I didn't delete it. No, it's okay. no problem. Uh, I might. Oh, no, here it is. Yeah, this is really, really so, funny. So, yeah, he's uh, doing a Peloton session and this woman is is leading the class. Okay. This song is from the soundtrack of a movie called Tenet. Anybody see this did anybody see this besides me? Because I need a manual. Someone's got to explain this. Yeah, I'm not kidding. What was going on in that movie? Do you understand? Seriously, you need to be a neuroscientist to understand. And that's two and a half hours of my life that I want back. I want it back. So she, she's the Peloton instructor con con doing the class. He's at home on his Peloton bike <laughs> watching her yeah. rip apart his movie. And he thought it was very funny. Yep. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter uh, says that Jonathan Majors has been dropped from 48 hours in Vegas wow. uh, after he was convicted of assaulting his ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari, last month. Uh, the movie centers on Dennis Rodman taking a trip to Vegas during the uh, 98 NBA Finals uh, when he played on the Bulls. And uh, Majors told Entertainment Tonight last year that he had been doing a lot of studying in preparation for the role, but he is not going to be a part of that. That's a wild story. They talk about it in The Last Dance, the uh, Bulls documentary. And uh, at one point, Dennis Rodman's in bed with Carmen Electra and Jordan... Michael Jordan has to come in and get Dennis Rodman out of the hotel. Like, Phil Jackson. Everybody oh gave Dennis Rodman permission because he was so dominant as a rebounder. Uh, but he just decided to go to Vegas for 24 hours, like, in the middle of the playoffs. And Jordan comes into the bedroom, and Carmen Electra is hiding underneath the sheets. Wow. Uh, and she's like, that's Michael Jordan. Can I get an autograph? <laughs> All right, then one last story, and uh, Steve sent this to me, and I was very delighted to see this. Northern Exposure is streaming for the first time ever. As of January, all six seasons of the series are now available on Prime Video with the majority of its original soundtrack. Uh, Northern Exposure starred Rob Morrow as a New York City physician who is forced to practice in a small town in Alaska in order to repay the state for underwriting its medical education. Over the course of six-season run, of a six-season run, 
Uh, between 1990 and 95, the series won seven Emmys, including Outstanding Drama Series in 1992. It's one of my all-time I know, you always talk about that. TV shows. Take a yeah. dip back in and watch a bit of it? Very much so. Absolutely, man. Northern Exposure has never been before available on streaming. I have tried to get it How does that years happen? ago. I tried to... I th Steve, I think it had to do with the soundtrack. Uh, it says previous DVD releases of the series excluded the original soundtrack due to licensing issues. So John Corbett's character right. plays a DJ. That's right. Plays Chris in the morning. And the rights to the music. And so they're always playing songs that throughout makes the sense. show. Yeah. And that might have been part of it. I, I, I bet you you're exactly right. I never knew it I until think about that. I saw that this morning. So... Uh, I, I just absolutely adore that show, and I, I hope it holds up. I haven't seen it in ages. Somebody actually sent me uh, some uh, digital copies of it, but I would have to watch it on my laptop. No, no. And so I watched a little bit, so I didn't dive right back into it. But this on my TV, like while I'm, you know, working out or whatever, yeah. this is going to be perfect. Uh, it also starred Janine Turner, John Corbett, Cynthia Geary, John Cullum, as well as featured recurring appearances from Anthony Edwards, Graham Greene, uh, Don McManus, Adam Arkin, and Valerie Mahaffey as well. All right, we're ready to roll some clips for you. Oh. I think we are. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. So when eight men who operate the Alaskan Research Station vanish without a trace, two detectives dig into the haunted truths that lie buried under the eternal ice. In this clip, Jodie Foster talks about bringing her acting experience to season four of True Detective. What I remember, what I learned, I suppose, about making early thrillers that I did was how important reacting is as opposed to acting. Uh, is really ta assessing your environment and um, feeling, feeling the feelings of reaction. What the f*** is this? Uh, the first episode of True Detective Night Country premiered last night oh. on Max. So, yep. That's yeah, I, gotta, I, I'm, uh, I dug all of those series. I watched, I only watched the first one and loved it. Um, With Woody Harrelson and Matthew yeah, McConaughey. Yeah, yeah, it was weird and cool, and uh, and then I heard the other ones weren't quite well, as so good. The second one, I believe, is with Vince Vaughn, and the only problem about that series is that it came after the first series. Because that first series was so good and it was so powerful um, that it, I don't think anything is going to hold up to I, I, how I feel okay. that series was. And then the the last season was with uh, Mahersha Ali. Yeah. And it, it, it's just all, they're all different. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. But they, texturally, they kind of feel similar. Okay. It's like a box of chocolates. Yeah. It's like yeah. that. You know, yeah. you know what you're going to get. Next clip. Eric and Carson Bloomquist are bringing the new slasher film Founders Day to screens this week. And in the clip, the this particular clip, the filmmaking brothers talk about their early life, early in life inspiration. Here we go. Scream. Yeah. And we got it from the library when we were probably still too young on a cold winter afternoon. And we watched it around sunset and had the remote right next to us in case we needed to pause or change the channel. And I think that just we yeah. both kind of got taken by that early. Um, and it just struck a chord. How scared. Founders Day opens uh, this Friday. By Founders the way. Day, huh? Oh. That's that's the new. They, they, they're hitting all the. Soon it's going to be. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <clears throat> well, Arbor, Arbor Day. Day. We're yeah. getting all the really <laughs> obscure days. Bagel Day, National Boxing Bagel Day, Day which yeah, is today. National Bagel Day. Yeah, so that'll be the next yeah. th uh, thriller that they release. All right, that's uh, entertainment report for today. Uh, we've got a spring trip. Uh, spring training trip to give away and we need to get you in the running for that so uh less than an hour from now we're going to have our clearwater word of the day and your opportunity to win that trip so make sure that you're with us to jot that down and then send it over to wmmr.com there's a way for you to enter it's very simple and then we head on the trip it'd be great to have you along with us we're also going to have uh speaking of sports Pat Gallon from CBS3 is going to be joining, and we're going to talk a little bit about the birds in the game tonight and all of that good stuff. We're going to take a quick break. Sun's coming up. It's a chilly day, but we're hanging out together. We'll be right back. I noticed that there was a another video that was released from Pastor Jesse Duplantis. Oh, um, our favorite, our, the, the, the jet and pastor. That is absolutely correct. And, uh, you know, he still wants his, his new private jet. 
Uh, but he wants to make it clear that he's not actually asking anybody for money. Listen, listen to the, these verbal gymnastics oh, that he's God. doing here. Um, you know, I think even he's surprised at how much this caught on because it just sort of swept across. It became a, a viral meme. And where these guys, it'd be easier to get away with this stuff maybe 10 years ago. You know, and now it was just all over the place. It was on the national news. You know, he was asking for his $54 million jet. Yeah. And we played audio of him walking down the hallway of his uh, his establishment there, his church, for uh, whatever he calls it, pointing to the oh, different okay. jets he's owned. <laughs> he, like, he has, has had three before. He needs this fourth $54 million jet uh -huh. that carries a lot of fuel so he won't have to stop as he's spreading the word of the Lord. That's it. So here's here's a couple of clips, and let's see let's see what he has to say about that. Not actually asking for money. He didn't ask for money. Here we go. I'm not asking you to pay for my plane. The Lord said, I didn't ask you to pay for it. I asked you to believe for it. I don't dupe nobody. I've always been honest. 40 years wow. I've been preaching this gospel, and I've never had a scandal. And this is not a scandal. I'm not discouraged. I'm not depressed. In fact, I am excited. Excited. I've never had this much press in my oh life. My well, that's negative. It don't make no difference. And it's negative. It don't make no it difference. It don't make no difference. So he's asking him excited <laughs> about all this negative press, painting me as a money-sucking prick. Yeah. So he wants, he said, I asked you to believe for it. Believe for not it. Not to pay for now, it. Now, if you happen, your method of believing involves your checkbook. I'm <laughs> absolutely happy with that. <laughs> he had said, I never raised money for the plane. I put it in our magazine and said, believe God with me. He said there's a vast difference between believe in God and asking for money. He's, he's a journey song, Preston. Don't stop believing. Yeah. Uh, in the earlier video, uh, <laughs> I'm just a small town preacher uh, Duplant. living in a lonely world. He could turn it around. Yeah, I could it, turn right? it around. Yeah, he used to take the train everywhere. Yeah, but I took a 54 train. million jet going <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> Without further ado, WMMR presents Boxco versus Delco. Here we go, gang. Boxco versus Delco. This is going to be the final round today. Actually, two rounds of competition, same contest, but we are going to make this whole thing happen and finish it up today, and we are going to crown a victor, and that's all there is to it. Before we get to the final event, here is a recap of the events leading up to this epic showdown. Listen, the week started off with Operation Evac, a race where the contestants were blindly dropped into enemy territory. Kathy started at Casey's Golf Course, Paxson Hollow in Delco, and Casey in Buxco at Kathy's alma mater, Pensbury. Now, without using GPS, they had to navigate their way to their home base. Just go straight. Thank you. Okay, go, straight. Peel wheel. I feel like there's probably another room. While Casey was stuck in traffic on the turnpike, that could work in our favor. Kathy was able to navigate back to Bucks County, earning her 200 points. It's a bunch of crap! For day two, both contestants needed a call for reinforcements. Kathy asked her best friend, Elisa, a.k.a. Queen Bee, and Casey brought in his big brother, Dave, a.k.a. Foz. The contestants and their partners mind melded, then competed in a thrilling match of the pyramid game. All right, this is where the U.S. Open was. Oh, that's, um, Aronimink. No. Oh, Marion. Sorry. That's the one you just said? <laughs> Marion. No, the other one. <laughs> Aronimink. <laughs> in the end, Kathy got an even bigger lead with 430 points, but Casey was right at her heels with 320 points. Day three brought us into the skies. We blindfolded Kathy and Casey, flew them in a helicopter over an unidentified spot in their respective county, and they had 30 seconds to guess what town they were hovering over. Casey had some difficulty figuring it out, earning 200 points. I guess Knowlton is in media. That's correct! Yeah! Yes, you got it! All right! But Kathy got it on her first try, bringing in an additional 300 points. I'm going to save uh, Ben Salem. That is absolutely correct. Day four was a double header. Kathy and Casey went head to head in a county spelling bee and then had to answer questions from Delco versus Buxco from five years ago. Casey must have done his homework because he was finally able to pull ahead. And so the totals going into the final day, Kathy, 1,030, Casey, 1,170. Casey is leading 
in the the uh, uh, competition so far. So I defer to Casey to decide who gets to go first. Uh, ladies first. All right, so ladies first is what we're going to do. So Kathy, taking a look at the categories, mm -hmm. which one would you like to begin with? You got geography and transportation, sports, entertainment, schools and education, shopping, landmarks, history, or food and drink. I guess I'll go shopping. Right. Shocker! I know. And how much would you care to wager in that particular category? I'm going to go 50 points. Kathy, what outdoor shopping area between New Hope and Doylestown hosts a place called Giggleberry Farm? New Hope and Doylestown. I'm going to say Peddler's Village. And that's correct for 50 oh! points. There I don't go, know Kathy. what giggles whatever is, but... Casey, it is your turn. What category do you want to go with next? Uh, let's go sports. Um, sports. And I will go sports for 60. All right, sports for 60 points. Uh, here we go, Casey, your question. In Newtown Square, a famous heir lived on a large piece of land where he hosted a wrestling camp for Olympic athletes. What is his name? DuPont. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> Well done. Okay, let's go schools and education for 50 points, Preston. All right. Schools and education for 50 points. All right. Uh, Kathy, what is the Council Rock North mascot? Oh. Council Rock North mascot. The mascot one would find <laughs> at that school. I don't know. The Rock. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you're going to go with The Rock? I'm going to go with The Rock. Uh, that's incorrect. They are the Indians. Ah. Oh, the I did not Indians. Know that. Go, Rock. Go. What year did the Springfield Mall open? Oh, Jesus. Um, I mean, why couldn't you ask me what year Target opened? Just ask it. Just ask uh, it. Kathy's very supportive. This is I the history is. of your yeah. county. Man. I know, yeah. I know. And Target opened in 2005. <laughs> 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 you know? Well, can you use that? Wanamaker's closed in '95. Hex opened after that. See, you did study. You lied to me. No, my mom quizzed me last night. <laughs> we were eating chili, and she asked me lots of trivia. <laughs> <laughs> We're eating chili. We're eating chili. Yeah. Yeah. Meet you uh, in the basement. I'm bringing a pen. I mean, the first Wawa opened in '95. Okay, yeah, let's get to I will ball. say, I will say. Uh, if you got this right. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to throw out a well, number there. I'm going to go with the year I was born, 1975. Oh, my God. No, it was 74. Oh! Dude, you were so close. You were so close. All right. You, you call no fair on that because it was before you were born? Um, no, I'm not okay. going to call no. I, I, it was just a really, that's a difficult question. This historic restaurant is located along the Delaware River in historic Bristol Borough and has hosted both kings and presidents. Yep, I've been there. Hmm. Once again, this historic restaurant located along the Delaware River in historic Bristol. My mom is going to kill me. Borough. Awesome. That's a weird name for a restaurant. <laughs> And has hosted both kings oh and Oh, my God. Presidents. What is it called? No, go to your happy place. I know where it is. Happy. I know where I sat last time I was there. Caca! <laughs> Kathy handles stress very well. <laughs> uh, she knows I love it when she yells. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Cracks me up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right, think about it. Think I about know. work from your seat backwards. It's like a little. There's like a little hill when you walk in. It's like a little railing outside, a statue. Uh, <laughs> Miss Romano is here. Welcome to. I, I don't even know if this. I'm gonna say Georgines. Georgines. Yeah. That's incorrect. <laughs> You're going to kill yourself over this one. It's King yes! George. Yes! <laughs> it is! I have a gift card in my wallet for that place! King George the what? The second. King George yeah, yeah. the second. I have not been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So have you been there? <laughs> yeah, we beautiful. should just carry on the discussion. I've been there! I like the statue. I've been there! Yeah, the statue and the railing are really nice. Oh, <laughs> man. I mean, like, I can picture it yeah. to a T. Exactly right. where I sat. My mom gave me a gift you, card. You have a gift I card. I wish my mom quizzed me last night. All right, so I have already closed out sports, and I have closed out history. 
No, you um, haven't. You haven't done any history. Well, yes, I have. All of my shopping questions were freaking history questions. <laughs> oh, my Wow. God. This Thank is you. what we've been Thank waiting you. for. Yes. <laughs> Impugning the contest itself. Yeah. You knew it was going to happen. It was good, though, right? <laughs> what year was this thing? What? Stupid yes. questions. Yes. Let's go food and drink. Maybe food and drink. Food and drink. Food and for drink. For how much? For 50. Food and drink for 50. Preston's not even picking Come on, man. That was a good joke. Look at Okay. All right. Okay. You, you, okay. you get this wrong. You get this wrong. Uh-oh. And this if you lose this whole thing, uh-huh. this is all your fault. Okay. All right. All right. Yes. You ready for this? Uh, it better be a softball. <laughs> a large Pika's pizza. Oh, my God. Cost so much. Money. Is cut into how many slices? Oh, okay. That's a really, really crap question. Um, a large Pika's pizza okay. is cut into you can how many slices? You can do a little slices. diagram, whatever you want to do. <laughs> the, okay. There's the box. Round, it's a rectangular a shape, oh. right, Case? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's drawing. Mm-hmm. All right, so that is a uh, that's a Neapol- is Neapolitan, right? Or is it Sicilian square? Mm-hmm. No, they, they, do, they just do their own version. They put All the right. sauce on top of the cheese. Twelve. Right. Casey says 12. Damn right you got there. Oh! And what did you wager on that? 50. A thousand points. Yes. <laughs> the scores are as follows. Bucks County, 1,070 points. Delaware County, 830 points. But there's ground to be made up here. And we're on to round two. Now things are going to change. All right, thank you very much, Kathy. A little later on this morning, Pat Gallen from CBS3 joining us. We're going to talk uh, birds and buccaneers. Uh, as they have the wild card game tonight. And uh, we'll just kind of see where his head is at for the whole thing. Um, I w- shared with you guys I had a wonderful weekend. Fantastic. I had, and, and we won't go into detail, but I had possibly the greatest night's sleep I've ever had in my entire life. You were That was the first thing you said when you came on the conference call last night. You were still basking in the glow of your somnambulistic journey. I want to, I, I think I'm going to start keeping a journal, and that's entry number one. Wow. In that. So I that had, was the first day of the rest of your life. The greatest night's sleep of my life. But um, we'll, we'll cover that another time. I want to hear about it. Yeah. I, uh, someone else did not have a great weekend. No. Amongst our crew here. Kyle, can you come into the, the yeah. studio? Because I, I Put would your like pants to, on and come in. Uh, put your pants on and then uh, come on in here because I want to hear the, hmm. the whole thing that you went through uh, over the course of the weekend because you were, you were taking a little road trip, right? I did. Wait, Took oh. A- Go ahead, sorry. I was taking a road trip to Maine, you know, as one does. What was the reason? Um, so I wanted to visit a band that I used to play with. Okay. You know, when I was in the Air Force, I was stationed in New Hampshire. There was a band that I was in that was right, you know, the next state over in Maine. And you, I, you got word this sort of uh, band, your band was kind of back together and a little bit of a reunion. You were going to go up and sort of surprise them or? No, no, well, the band continued without me. The, oh, okay. The band, the How band. dare they? Yeah. Yeah. The band had existed before I joined them and they continued right. after I left. Now also, listen, Maine's a big state. You can be in Maine in just a few hours, but you can also be in Maine for like 12 hours after that. So yeah. what part of Maine were we headed to? I was headed to Old Orchard Beach, okay. which is like the lower coastal okay. area of it. Right. Um, and so when you, you decide you're going to do this, you, do, you, do you do any checking or you're, you know, you're, you're just, you just, I'm going to do this. This was it an impulsive thing that you did or, or? It, it was halfway impulsive and halfway planned. I just knew that I wanted to go up. Yeah. We're talking about like an eight, 10 hour drive, something like that. Actually, I was able to pull it off in about six and a half hours. Wow. Yeah. That's, That's a hot skip like, jump. Yeah. You okay. can be in Maine in six hours. Uh, depending on where you're going. I didn't realize how close, you know, it actually was. Also, depending on what time of the day you leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Connecticut sucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've established that many times on the Yep. If there was ever a state that I felt like just didn't need to exist, (laughs) Connecticut would be that. Um, I left at 7.30 in the morning. I had a gig, actually, the night before. I didn't get home until, like, Two, three o'clock. So I got like three and a half hours of sleep, and I pushed myself awake to make my drive early. So Kyle, you, Kyle's the type; he's going to sleep when he's dead. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> he, he that's gets it. No yeah. sleep, and even then. And I right. had this rare uh, Saturday and Sunday off from my gig schedule. So like, oh, the band that I was in, who I I miss those guys a lot. I wanted to come up there and surprise them. I didn't tell them I was coming. Yes, and that was they like, might have told you something. <laughs> they might have told me the gig. What happened? The gig was canceled. <laughs> All right. Oh, great. So you, dr- you and you found that out when I found it out 
as as I was approaching the venue. <laughs> in Maine. In Maine. Six and a half hours later. <laughs> and also, uh, yeah. Maine had some weather last week. <clears throat> they did, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's why it was canceled, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> they had, Maine was basically wiped <laughs> off the face of the earth. I'm looking at, at photos from this actual town. Yeah. And like... I mean, there was there's like a house floating away and cars destroyed and like waves coming up over on. But look at that sign, Kathy says show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, show tonight. I'm not I'm not one to research as weather. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, you would I think well you would have to be I think anybody traveling over the weekend this weekend especially might have taken a quick <clears throat> glance at what was going on weather wise. That eluded you completely. You drive up there. So you show up and you can't even get anywhere near the town, right? No, 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 because there, there were road blockage signs. I'm like, how am I supposed to get <laughs> to, I'm going, to the venue? No. <laughs> Sir, I'm going to a show. I'm a singer. I don't right. mean to be Captain Hindsight here, but, like, uh, do you wish you'd called somebody before you left or, or like, on the six-and-a-half-hour drive up? Yeah. I, I just, <laughs> yeah. Just Let him through. Let done. him through. He's an entertainer. <laughs> It would have what, ruined what could, the element of surprise that I was trying sure. to. But what could you have done differently? Uh, talk to somebody. That's uh, all I, you know, uh, yeah. uh, you know, actually, my, my. You wanted to surprise them. I wanted you, to surprise them. You wanted them. to be uh, completely unaware of the weather or any of the conditions on your on your travels. My mother knew I was going, and then after I told her that the gig was canceled and the town was closed, like, yeah, I saw that there was like <laughs> bad weather and sh stuff being <laughs> shut down in Maine on oh, Twitter. I was like, why didn't you tell me? Yeah. I would have done some research myself. He yeah, had let me know. She had actually took the initiative to look it up, but did didn't you, tell me anything. Did you have, were you going to stay the night? I did. Okay, so did you have a hotel set up ahead of time? I did. It floated, okay, thank it floated God. away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was, now, it was actually a cruise ship now. No. Oh wait! So, did you go by yourself, by the way? Like, or yeah, you... I did drive by myself. Oh, so man. you had someone to talk to. <laughs> yeah. So here's what I want to throw out there: uh, longest you've ever had to drive, and then whatever you were going there for was canceled, or just you had to turn back around. Mm -hmm. One or the other. Two one five two six three WMMR. One time I went camping uh, this place called Cherry Springs State Park. It's in uh, North Central Pennsylvania. It's supposed to be the darkest skies east of the Mississippi. Oh and wow. Um, so Andrea and I drove up there and look, it's not Maine, but it's not close. Uh, it's, you know, four and a half, five hours away or whatever. And we were going in the fall. We we're going to go do some, uh, stargazing. And, um, what I didn't check was when their season ends, because by the time we got to that campground, uh, they had closed the campground the week before. Oh man. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the moose should have told you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Totally. I mean, it was Wally world. <laughs> the moose should have told you. We, um, you know, we just, we didn't Kyle, like I, I feel your pain. Cause we should, we didn't check, you know, we, we could have yeah. made reservations, but we didn't, we figured we'll go. And the campground, I mean, the, the park was open. You just couldn't camp there. So we had to find another place to go. But like, I, I don't know, man, I feel bad for you. I'm That's curious when you're, when you're checking go. into the hotel, I'm sure, which wasn't overbooked at that time, right? I mean, no, you, well, you, I, I wouldn't know. Yeah, no, yeah. So, but, but I mean, so, did did you did you make reference to as to why you were there? Did you get the side eye or no? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm just can I get my room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What this actually? I'm took, here for the disaster. Yeah, I, I actually <laughs> took a a several hour nap when I arrived, yeah. and I could that was time I could have because. So you what? still didn't know. You took the nap first. I took the nap first, and then when... I'm going to go see, oh, go see my friends. <laughs> and then when I actually... When I found I couldn't get to the venue, I checked the band's Facebook page and found that six hours earlier, they'd actually made mention that the gig was canceled. Oh, so at the man. beginning of your trip... Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, so oh I, by the time I had arrived, I was staying in Portland, Maine. And the gig was at Old Orchard Beach. By the time I had actually arrived to Portland, it had just been canceled. I was just not aware of it. <laughs> Uh, and actually what happened was the entire band had made a decision to not do the gig as well before the town actually was shut down because yeah. all the of their... hadn't washed away. Yeah, well, all of their homes had been flooded. Every single band member oh, had, had water in their basement. So yeah, they, they were going to do it anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it happens. It just sucks when it happens. But I had a great lobster lunch. I had a great lobster lunch Okay. that I had no idea how to eat. Oh, man, I had to do that in Maine myself. I, I, I got a full lobster... I've only eaten like lobster tails and lobster claws before this point, and then I, they brought out the full lobster. I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know how to eat this thing. Yeah. I had, I had two wonderful, like, great couples on either side of me of the bar. It turned into like a lobster support group, right? Because I just didn't know how. To, I never ate a whole lobster before. Right, right. Yeah. Was it's it the fried? saddest thing I've ever heard? I know. <laughs> It was, uh, I don't know if it was fried. It was just stuffed lobster. It was, was stuffed it lobster. Was, were you eating it like Daryl Hannah and Splat? <laughs> 
don't chewing think I've the, ever seen the shell. Yeah. Oh God, you should have. It was movie. just a broiled lobster. I don't. What, it wasn't stuffed. The picture that you sent didn't look. He like said it was stuffed. So. Yeah, there was there was that, there was stuffing he inside. He also drove to Maine for. Uh, I know. <laughs> you know, I can't. Trust In fact, they post outside the restaurant so good you'd take a twelve-hour round trip just to eat it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what time did you get back last night? Uh, I got back at about seven thirty. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's just about the time the lobster was repeating. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. It does I drove stuff. to Albany, uh, which was about was, oh, about four and a half hours, and uh, met with some. Actually, had some family out there uh, up there. Didn't realize that they were up there, so um, was able to have dinner with them. Uh, kind of hung out at their house for a little bit, and then uh, stayed over in a terrible hotel that looked like there was uh, a throw up that had just been cleaned up. Yeah. Uh, outside you had a room with throw up. And then uh, <laughs> the next morning, went to what was supposed to be this event that I was going to, and got there and realized it, it did happen but the whole thing was a scam and so there were hundreds of people that were there for this no event kidding. and they were they were basically ripping people off oh. and so we got back in the car and just headed home so, oh. so do you, what, what was the event so <clears throat> remember I back sort of in the so, like a well, years ago, a plushy thing. I, I actually no, I actually don't know if it still exists or not. But there was a site called Backstage, and it was basically it was like when I was going on auditions and and you know in movies and commercials and right. stuff like that. And if you went to Backstage and something was listed there, they basically vetted everything, and they right. were like, "This is legit. This is a credible, you know, director. This is a credible project. Right. You can go audition for it." What well, was on Backstage? So. All these people. I mean, there was probably three, four hundred people there. Mm -hmm. Everybody had gotten the information from backstage, driven from New York City, Philadelphia. You know, there were people from Chicago <laughs> that there, sucks. and went to Albany for this. And the dude was just ripping people off. Uh, here's a couple uh, texts coming in. This says uh, Christmas 2021, driving to Midwest, five hours in, almost to Ohio border. <laughs> when my mom called and said she had tested positive oh, for COVID, no. <laughs> drove across Pennsylvania oh and God. back in one, one day. day. Oh no! Oh my God! Here's another one. That says I drove to Tennessee one time for the world's longest flea market. Just to find out that it had been postponed to the following weekend, <laughs> I lost eleven hours there and eleven hours back. There's this is the one that you can't get time back. That's it. You burn it up, it's gone. Yep. Here's another one that says I drove all the way to Burlington, Vermont, for a one night stand. She didn't answer my text when I got there. I had to sleep on the couch of a former college friend. Drove back oh to Philly God. the next oh morning. Twelve hours of driving for nothing. Man, sex will make you get in the car and drive yes, a long time. Yes, it will. Yes, it <laughs> will. Uh, oh, my there. God, I've done that. <laughs> I have to have it in writing. Uh, let's see. I drove from South Jersey all the way to San Antonio for a wedding that ended up being canceled. We treated it more like a vacation, but the entire reason to see the sunrise, wait, the entire reason that we went there uh, was for the wedding. So, yeah, it happens, man. All right, uh, I'm going to go to... We got a bunch of them here. Yeah. I will go to, uh, let me go to Steve here. Hi, Steve, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, buddy. What's up? Uh, I, I did a HVAC repair. I quoted some repairs on a mobile office trailer. And months later, they approved the quote for repairs. So I had to drive from Maryland to Virginia, almost to North Carolina, to find out that the, the job was done and they turned the trailer in. So, so w w w w what had happened here? Five and a half hours to find the trailer was gone. To find that the trailer was gone? Yeah, it was like, it was like those mo mobile office trailers for yeah. construction. You were <laughs> going there to repair it. Oh, my God. <laughs> you jump it is gone. So was anybody True. there? No. Well, wait a second. <laughs> see, see, here's, and this is, this is, a, this is a, a teachable moment, as they say. If Kyle had placed one call uh, before you set out on this journey... Did did not the home office or you say maybe I should call ahead just to make sure they're expecting me? Nobody answered. Nobody oh, answered. Oh wow! Nobody answered. Man, so yeah, yeah. So you just went. Yeah, yeah had to go. Than, than yeah, be a no show. Uh, oh, that sucks. Eleven hour day. Of oh, God. thank you. Steve. And you didn't even have any lobster. <laughs> no. Hey, Kyle, I'm so sorry if this answer, if this question already got answered. But did you end up meeting up with any of the band? At, yeah, at all. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I had placed a, a couple of phone calls to the band members, like, and, and uh, once you got there, and you realized that everything was yeah. Good. Um, and the one guy who answered the phone, uh, his, his name's Dave. He was our keyboardist. So I was like, "Yo, you imagine my surprise? Mm -hmm. I drove all the way up here. The gig was canceled. Like, no, no, you didn't." And I was like, "Yeah, man, I'm here." I was like, and then it was it, it was like at 
10, quarter after 10 at this point. Okay. And he was like, well, come on over. We're all in our PJs, but we can hang out for a little bit. Aww. So We'll have a little tickle session. Yeah, a little tickle <laughs> session. <laughs> Did you guys sing together or anything? Uh, no, no, no. We were just hanging out talking. Okay. And, and it's great to have... You know, it's been two years since I saw any of them last. Uh, it was great just, you know, to chill and hang out. Wow, it turns out I really don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> and continue our, our friendship, our relationship right where we left off. That's you know, good. That's good. That's good. All right, at least you got that out of it. Yeah. And a lobster. Yeah. And a lobster. That you didn't know how and to eat. a lot of gas. I'm going to go to Dave. Hi, Dave. You're on the air. Good morning. Gadzooks. Gadzooks. Dave, what's Dave! up, buddy? So uh, a couple years ago, we used to go to the Lantern Fest all the time, like up at Pocono Raceway, right outside the um, right outside the racetrack. It was always a good time. Brought the kids up. One year we had gone up, and uh, the weather was kind of suspect. We knew it was going to be like hit or miss. The entire way up there, we're we're checking the weather. We're looking at their Facebook page. They're like, "We're open. We're open. Come on in. We're going to be here." No sooner did we get to the gate, like the Lantern Fest is supposed to start. They closed the gate, turned everybody around. Yeah, we're not going to go because of the weather. It was like a three-and-a-half-hour drive. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Now, that sucks. Uh, you're, you're still on on the, the boundary of viability, but, you know, when you made that trip and then you got to make it back in and, and what I assume was not very good weather, uh, that's the worst. Yeah, you got kids that are upset in the car. They wanted to do this. Yeah. They didn't yeah. try to check or try to call. It's like they were just, yeah, we're not going to do this at the last minute. And then, at the end of the day, they're like, oh, we're going to get refunds and all this stuff. No, yeah. We got no money back, no information. I think the company ended up going out of business, too, after that. So, so wow. when you have kids in the car and they're making noise, Thanks, Dave. you can smack them, right? Is that part of the deal? Is, uh, is, yeah, just nowhere visible. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, and, and, Steve, you had mentioned the time. Like, that's the – I can hear myself. Yeah. I, I would be saying, if I were him, you yeah. know, and, and it was like six hours told driving back. I'd be like, six hours. Six, six goddamn, goddamn hours. hours. Gone. And there's nothing we can do to get it back. I would just stew in that whole thing. Yeah, uh, and you have all that time to do that as you're driving and tearing yourself apart. I will go to Brian next. Hey, Brian, morning, buddy. Hey, good morning, guys. What's up, man? Hey, hey, Steve. Yes. Yoo-hoo. Yeah. That's a solid hey. one. I gave you a good so, one, man. One time uh, I went up to Ohio, and this was before COVID started. I was uh, getting certified for one of the jobs I had. It was a business trip I went on. And uh, at the end of the business class to get certified, COVID happened with the lockdowns, and I got stuck in Ohio for an additional week. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you made it there and completed the task, right? Yes, sir. You just got to vacation in lovely Ohio. Yeah, yeah. what town in Ohio was it? It was uh, Lodi, Ohio. It's right below. Oh, um, the that's the Paris Street. of Ohio. I've never heard of Lodi. I've heard of Lodi, California, but not Lodi, Ohio. <laughs> yeah, Lodi, Ohio. Uh, Ohio. <laughs> Oh, you uh, poor son of a bitch. Uh, yeah, then there's there's getting stuck in a place, of course, yeah. which is definitely pretty bad. Uh, let me go to uh, Anna. Hi, Anna. Good morning. Hi, good morning to see you. Good morning, it Anna. What's up? <laughs> um, uh, well, first of all, I want to say I'm a long time listener, first time caller. Oh, uh, hey, welcome. Uh, Happy to have you on board. Yes. Um, so my friend, when she was 16, um, she wanted to take her driver's license test on a very specific day. So they drove like five hours to this location. Um, they drove the night before, booked a hotel, stayed the night. The next morning, she went to the DMV only to realize that she forgot her glasses and they wouldn't let her take Oh, them. my God. Oh That's my God. unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, you'd think that would be something you'd absolutely grab. Yeah, uh, like it just totally, I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Anna, why did they have to drive five hours to a location to take a driving test? I don't know why her parents did that to begin with, but, you know, I don't know, man. Well, like in upstate New York, knowing this, like having relatives there, there are some areas, at the way, the days they're scheduled, yeah. you might have to drive a couple of hours. No kidding. Because everything is spread out, and they okay. all have their different schedules, and wow. maybe that was the impetus for that. Thanks, Anna. Didn't Appreciate matter. It. She didn't get it anyway. Uh, we'll go to Harry next. Uh, do we have a Harry clip, Casey? I think we, we do. Harry. Hang on one second here. Okay. Harry! There we go. Hey, Harry, good morning. <laughs> 
Harry. Okay, so way to drop the ball to the old dead, dead, dead guy nail up thing. Oh, man. Harry! It would have been better if you didn't fumble all over your words. What did he say? Uh, way to drop the ball with the dead guy in the envelope thing. Oh, yeah. oh. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> You're welcome. What's up, buddy? Um, so, I was... Um, so, uh, back in 2011, I was in my first marriage, and I was living in South Africa, I in Johannesburg. Around Christmas time, which is their summer, we my my ex wife and I would drive across country to from Johannesburg to Cape Town. This was like a day and a half plus drive, and and we would and and because she didn't have a driver's license at the time, I did all the driving. So I drove the whole way, all night, and half, we got there. We just got a vacation. We paid for a, 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 the, and we him. get there, and we get a call. Her mom, back in Johannesburg, died in a car accident. <gasps> oh, so, that's very so inconsiderate. We, had, we could get through to her. So we, so we just put all our stuff back in the car. We drove. I drove all the way back, oh my God. and we get home. Oh, she's fine. And uh, wait, 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 wait. She's fine. Yeah, she she just didn't bother to call us because she didn't want to disturb us on her vacation. So let, let me wait a second. Okay, so she she she. Okay, so she lied or ha so you fell under the impression that she had died but it was her and she'd given that information incorrectly why did she do that no her mother um wasn't we couldn't reach her they couldn't her reach phone. the mother oh okay they thought couldn't she had maybe died oh. and like we, we she wasn't answer a phone or anything like that so my ex wife she was like oh we gotta go home right now of course so like uh, so like this is like four days now me driving okay. across the country and like desert and everything in between <laughs> and I get, we get home oh she's fine daddy watching TV at home and oh like God. with a little band aid on her head it's hard to believe that was your first wife yeah, that uh, you yeah. guys got divorced yeah. over yeah that wow. seems like a blissful relationship Harry that Jesus. sucks man God yeah, Almighty yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it and wow. the roads you know you got to imagine the roads are just awesome yeah I didn't understand there at first but <laughs> <laughs> she had died no she's alive well she's we'll leave fine. now she's dead uh let's go to let's go to ben hi ben morning bud hey good morning everyone how's everyone doing good how are you sir i'm doing well i have right. to work myself all right what's up buddy so i used to work for a company and we would uh install and relocate medical equipment so we left first thing in the morning from philadelphia pa to drive to buffalo new york the company that hired us for the job they didn't fully understand i guess what we did or what we were hired to do so we show up, it's like a six hour drive, I believe it was. They already moved everything. The only thing we had to move was for the x-ray machine, the table from one room to the other room and connected. <laughs> you drove to Buffalo <laughs> to move a table from one room to the other room. <laughs> so you have six guys driving up, trucks, everything, equipment loaded up. Wow. And then the best part is we finished the job. We have a hotel for the night if we really want to stay. Yeah. Instead, I'm like, hey, we're right next to Lake Erie. We could go see like a part of Niagara Falls. I've never done it before. Ten miles away. All the guys get together. Uh, you know what? I want to go home. What? <laughs> exactly. So we drove from Philadelphia to Buffalo, moved the table, and then from Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you didn't even go check out Niagara Falls. You it's would have to. 15 minutes yeah, away. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's. Uh, oh, I no. would have. I, I would have. At that point, I would have said, guys, you don't get a choice here. Yeah. We're going to Niagara Falls for five minutes. And then we'll turn around and go home. Yeah, you come that far. Uh -huh. That's a little get, bit. Another hour won't kill us. And we got to go to the anchor bar for some wings. Yeah, right. And then good, exactly. two months later, when you're still in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I I get that. I actually drove. <laughs> this is years ago. Now I I Thanks, ben. I, I, well, I drove to was there. I had a, a comedy show at a club <laughs> right on the uh, Canadian border, mm. Pottstown, super far up in New, in New York. Obviously, you well imagine that was like nine and a half hours. Did the show, got out. Walked to my car and drove back. Damn. It's like, no way am mm -hmm. I going to wake up in friggin' Pottstown. Man, I can't. That's, oh, I, it, was, it was stupid on every level, Preston, and it really became extra stupid, my dumb decision, mm -hmm. when I got caught in a blizzard in the Adirondacks. Oh, man. Yeah. So, Did you have to pull over and sleep or anything? No, because I would have died. Because <laughs> I, where I was, I was, I told you the story before, I was just following crease in the snow from a truck that was traveling ahead of me. Yeah. And if that truck had driven off the cliff, I would have followed it right off. Man, I've had to do that before. Wow. 
Uh, well, Kyle had a uh, yeah six and a half hour adventure. Yeah. But fortunately, I thought you had to turn around and come right back. So no, 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 no. you stayed for the night. But the thing that you went there I was for, expecting to get hammered. So yeah. I was going to stay, you know, yeah. the night. And, with but the boys the, but the, up in Maine. Yeah. But the thing that you went there for, you show up and it's canceled. Right. Uh, driving that far. Just, oh, my God. Stop and think about it. Would you have planned a trip to Maine? And, you know, <laughs> just out of, you had this whole big thing planned. But you, you still got a little bit of a return. You had your first lobster. And, <laughs> yes, I did. And yeah. you, you saw your first boobies. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Don't get me in Don't trouble. Don't get him in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> no. First boobies. Those were his first. <laughs> time, no. It was magical. Those are just more boobies. Yeah. yeah. Saw. But driving is therapeutic for me. So, I mean, at least, I mean, I can relax and just. Have a drink. Yeah. I didn't drive. <laughs> Did you hit traffic going through uh, Connecticut? No, because I left early enough, no. No, okay. No. Right. There's Man. such a Lovely. concentrated level of suck to the, con <laughs> to, to the to <laughs> Connecticut <laughs> road system. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's unbelievably poorly designed. Uh -huh. uh, I, I still hold out hope that they'll get it right eventually, but it, it, it is a nightmare, and that's a conduit state, so you're you're yeah. screwed. Yep. The highways are so narrow there. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's part of it. <laughs> All right. Well, you may, you're back. Yes. You're, you're here, and uh, you're you're with us now. So you're with family and and all that. So, but uh, thank you for sharing. And yeah, sorry you had to go problem. through. That. Go to your parents. And, over and here. thank you for those uh, who shared your stories. We do appreciate it. All right. I want to take a break because we're going to try to stay uh, somewhat on time. And eight o'clock, get our uh, spring training trip, a Clearwater word of the day, a trip with phillysportstrips.com that we have to give away to join us. Uh, in mid-March for our little sojourn to Clearwater and the Phil Spring Training. So hang tight. We'll take a break. We'll come back in a second. Uh, I got some great bizarre file stories to share with you, and then we'll get that word. So we'll be back in a sec with it. Bit in this particular round, our categories are going to remain the same. In the past, you've been able to pick your own category and pick your own wager up to 100 points. This time, I thought it'd be kind of nice because you guys have been avoiding certain categories. <laughs> How about you pick your competitor's category and your competitor's wager oh, in wow. this round? Kathy's leading, and she gets to go first, and you get to pick the category that Casey will choose from and how much Casey will wager in that category. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go history. Okay, of course. For 50. All right, history for 50. All right, Casey. Delaware County was formerly a part of which other Pennsylvania County? I believe Chester County. Your answer is Chester County, and that is correct, sir. Wow! Delaware County split off in 1789. Interesting. They After were, the great uh, Battle of Chester Hill. They were originally together, and therefore Casey gets 50 points in that particular one. All right, so for Kathy, I'm going to go with, this is just, you know, this is hard. Uh, I'll go with uh, sports. Of course. Uh, for 100. Sports for 100. All right. So sweet. Kathy, here's your question. <laughs> yeah. Who was Nishamini's starting quarterback in 1990 and current Penn State head coach? I, I, I don't know. Um, huh? God, I know you're going to say it and I'm going to recognize it, but I don't know it. Okay, um, so you don't have an answer or you just say a name. throw a name out there? Say your name, say your name. Brian <clears throat> Fitzpatrick, although I think he's a representative. <laughs> uh, no, that's incorrect. <laughs> Casey, do you know who it is? It's Franklin. Yeah, James Franklin <sighs> is the correct answer. So Kathy gets docked 100 points. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this, uh, okay. but I'm going to go shopping for... <laughs> what's the difference here? You, um, you are at 970 right you're now. You're up Casey's by 90. at 880. All right, I'm going to do 50. Okay. Right. Keep in mind these questions came from residents of Delaware County, <clears throat> people who <laughs> live there. They want you to win. Yeah. These are the only questions that I had to go off of, Casey, okay. so right. no complaining, please. Well, no. I've already done all my complaining for the day. <laughs> I'm no, sure, no, no, I'm I'm sure no. there will be no you, more you complaining. Got, you've got more to go. I guess. This site recently home to the countryside market in Swarthmore, or is it Swarthmore? Uh, I say Swarthmore. Swarthmore. Uh-huh. Was a convenience store in the 1980s. The convenience store had three names before becoming the countryside market. You just have to name one of those. Uh, soups? Or like supers? Incorrect. Ooh. No. Really? It was either Eddie's, Albert's, or Evans. Okay. All right, Kathy, which former Philadelphia Eagle graduated from Pensbury High School in Fairless Hills? 
Is it Troy Vincent? That's a good answer, and it's correct. Wow. Yes. Oh, yeah. In 1850, Delaware County's county seat moved to Media. Okay, Media is considered the county seat of Delaware. Where was it originally? Chester. He's right. That's yeah. Right. Chester was originally the county seat. All right, what uh, category and what's the wager, Case? Uh, Calf, I, I just want you to do well. <laughs> right, so I'm going to give you a whole bunch of points. We're going to wager 100 points on history. History. This person was the founder of the religious school Log College and later the pastorate of Neshaminy Warwick Presbyterian Tur Church. Mr. Log. <laughs> Mr. Log. Is that a real answer? I'm curious. Yes. yes. No, it was William Tennant. William oh, Tennant. Wow. Mother, I knew it was. I, the, you know what? And yeah. somebody sent me, not that information, but somebody sent me information about uh, about Log College. That somebody did you a disservice. Yeah, they did. All right. That was William Tennant, a well-known name in Bucks County. 1,000 right, and 1,010 for Kathy, 930 for Kathy. So 80, 80 point points separate mm -hmm. the... Two contenders. Last question for Casey. Oh my God! Last question. Yeah. Can we just keep going for a little? Well. <laughs> oh wow. No, I'm just okay, so it's an 80-point difference. This is the last question. Is there a double jeopardy? There is. There's something else. Okay. All right. <sighs> you look great today. Ken. Good. <laughs> Go ahead, say the F word, Kevin. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. You want to say it so badly? <laughs> we can dump it out. <laughs> The dulcet tones of Kathy Armar. <laughs> that's, right. that's what Dennis hears around frisky time. Ah! Damn it. All right, I'm going to do... I'm going to do entertainment. Okay. Entertainment. For 10 points. Wow, okay. See, and this is where the strategy comes yep. into play. Casey? Yeah. What's the Delco Dance Club that featured a spaceship Aww. and a dancing robot wow. MC? Listen, it's only worth 10 points, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pulsations. Yeah, that's correct. Ooh. Yes, absolutely. Ooh. What's the category and what's the wager? We're going to go 70 points in history. <laughs> 70 points in history. <laughs> and i got to get to <laughs> history. Right, Nick? Yeah, man. I didn't... You play Jeopardy. Yeah, I didn't do well in my SATs, but... You even know how to wager. History. What Buxco town was named after George Washington's famous crossing of the Delaware River to take Trenton by surprise in the Revolutionary War? Washington Crossing. She got it right. That's exactly correct. Yes. I got pulsations. You get that. That's yep. fair enough. All right. So what is the score here at the end of round two? Kathy it with uh, 1,080. Casey with 940. I need the screen, please. For this, we're going to do something now. Uh, a few years ago, we had somebody uh, call up on the phone, yes. and we're going to do the same thing. This time, we are calling this, I don't know who's on the phone. <laughs> oh, okay. The category of I don't know who's on the phone is local businesses. Local businesses. So write down your wager now. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. All right. Sure. <gasps> wagers, wagers are in, and we're playing I Don't Know, Who's on the Phone, Local Business is the Category, and we have our caller on the line. Good morning. Can you hear me, sir? Good morning. I can hear you. All right. Would you please present your question for our contestants? Good morning. My name is Bill. I'm vice president of a local company. We were established in South Philadelphia in 1891. We are headquartered in Malvern, Pennsylvania, and we have 11 locations in Delaware County and seven in Bucks County. One of your show members currently endorses our company. What is the name of the company I work for? Okay. Marissa just handed me a note that says it's over. It is over. And, and that's I, not I, fair. And, and I shook my head. And I said, no, it won't be because no. more bitching is going to happen. No, it you know why it's not over? Because tonight you're going to wake up screaming <laughs> and you'll be reliving it over and over again. Okay, so do we ask for their answers first or do I ask our caller on the line what the answer is? Oh, I we, think we what you their, do is you go to the answers, answers and then, first. right. Yeah. And then and then I do the extra back. Oh, I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> okay, let's go. And then we'll, we'll have our, our caller on the line to hang on just a moment. So, uh, Kathy, you were in the lead. Mm -hmm. And that means you get to go first, I believe, is how that works. Uh, so, Kathy, what is your answer? Dunkin' Donuts. 
Dunkin' Donuts, and that is incorrect. I'm sorry. Uh, what is your wager, please? 300 points. 300 points. And Nick, what does that total bring her to? 780 points for Kathy Romano. Casey? <laughs> I really trend? I really could have done a number on myself here, but uh, I blame my brother if I get this wrong, mm-hmm. uh, because my brother's uh, philosophy is go big or go home. Okay? My answer is Horizon. Horizon. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is also incorrect. Mm-hmm. And your wager? 940 points. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let me go to our caller. Bill, can you tell these people what company you work for, please? I work for Acme Markets. Oh! The official oh! supermarket of the Preston and Steve Show. Casey Kathy wins. wins. Kathy, Kathy wins. Kathy wins. anybody's game to the very end. I actually, at the last few moments, was sure you had it, Casey. Yeah. I oh, did, God. too. I was sure. Because you're also, it looked as if you wrote a short word. I did. And you know what really stinks is he's the new president, so I don't know his name. Well, that's yeah. why we chose him, because yeah. if it was somebody that you knew by the sound of their voice, yeah. they weren't going to be able to, uh, they weren't going to be Let's able to be Let's focus on what's important. I won! <laughs> Honestly, I thought for sure they're hugging. I feel so bad for I him. If I can have a moment, I, I prepared something I want to say. Casey's uh, written a statement. You know, I, I came here this week, and I didn't know what to expect. Now, I've seen a lot of people hating me, and I didn't know what to feel about that, so I guess I didn't like you much then either. During this fight... I seen a lot of changing. <laughs> the way you felt about me and the way I felt about you. In here, there were two people killing each other. But I guess that's better than 20 million. What I'm trying to say here, if I can change and you can change, everybody can change. Yeah. I just want to say, I want to say to my kid who should be at home cleaning, don't forget to scrub the toilets. I love you. Okay, Rocky. He's a champion anyway. Not really. Here's the thing. What's great for you guys is... Because what I was thinking is if Casey won, Mm -hmm. then the whole competition would have been even out and we had to do it again. Now, I'm clearly the winner. There's no grudge. No rematch. No rematch. I win. Thank you very much. I'm so glad that I didn't disappoint my Bucks County residents and friends. You honestly, you Mom, both Dad, played you. very well. Kathy, you played very well. You did. You and and I mean, especially honestly in the trivia, you pulled some things out of the proverbial ass that I had I had no hope you would get, and you got it. Thank so you. So amazing. Much. Oh my God, oh, this was so fun. Thank you guys. <laughs> of course it was fun. This no, was it sucked. I what think a for fair everybody. contest you guys pulled off. <laughs> now watch us find out that soups is actually the. <laughs> <laughs> then I would have 100 points and I'd still lose. By the way, Kathy, you mentioned Dunkin' Donuts. Did you know that there's 33 Dunkin' Donuts locations oh, in Oh, there's Delaware 26 County? in Bucks County. Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Because you did the wall. Question uh-huh. last year. Do you know how many swim clubs there are in uh, in Bucks County? Listen, I, you know what? Um, I want to know. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do this now or not, but some of the questions that we didn't go over because there was something that I was sure okay. you guys were going to answer, and I really put a lot of time studying it. I, what was I, it? I have several other ones, and we, we don't have time to we do don't it have now. Time. But okay. maybe next week we can go yeah, through some of the questions because we'll do a question purge. I'm, I'm dying to know. So what? One of the like big things in in Bucks County, well, and specifically Levittown, was the LP. PRA pools, and I thought for mm. sure you were going to ask questions about those. Nothing came up about oh, that. Okay. Yeah, so. And because we were both lifeguards, I could have sworn there was going to be... Uh, there were a couple of things where I'm like, alright, what do Kathy and I both have in common? Dunkin' Donuts was obviously the one. <laughs> and, you know, and I thought about Acme, but I, I, I just, I wasn't sure how many Acmes there were in Bucks County. Yeah. Uh, so... I had to pick something that both counties had in common. Oh, I know. And I tried to find, I tried to see if there was maybe a famous person that was born in one county and went to school in another or lived in another, oh, and right, I couldn't right, come right. up how about this one? Okay. William Penn. William Penn um, founded two um, 
two towns on either side of Philadelphia, and they called them New Towns, okay? Oh. So it was a New Town Bucks County yeah. and a New Town Delaware County. Yeah. Same question, different answers. So New Town oh. uh, Delaware County was founded in uh, 1681, <laughs> and then you guys were like 1684 <laughs> or something like that. Listen, well, William I, Penn actually was born in Rutledge yes. and yeah, yeah, opened yeah. up the first sweet roll shop in Croydon. Yeah. So, yeah. I did so much research. Meanwhile, we both were like, no, we're not doing anything. Kathy, um, I mean, uh, Marissa, there's a a couple of pieces of paper underneath my... Uh, I-93.3 WMMR. All right, we're going to do the Bizarre File, and then we will have our clear water word of the day. Now, bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, bizarre File. Brought to you by Minnie Meld's Ice Cream is the coolest on-the-go treat. You can head to Wawa and grab a single-serve cup from the signature... Mini Melts standalone freezer and make it a Mini Melts moment. Mini Melts ice cream, but cooler. Uh, this is a terrible tragedy. Four people were killed and another is in critical condition after a hot air balloon crash in the Arizona desert yesterday. Yeah. There were 13 passengers in the balloon gondola, oh. eight of whom were skydivers, oh, wow. according to a statement from uh, Eloy Mayor Micah Powell. Powell said that uh, he was told by onlookers that after the skydivers jumped, something went wrong with the balloon. He said the fabric of which was straight up and down. So I assume that means all of the hot air went out. Right, of the right. The impact was very large, he said. Uh, Powell said three of the victims were transported to a local hospital where they died. The fourth fatal fatality occurred on scene. Uh, Eloy is about 65 miles southeast of Phoenix and is a busy spot for hot air balloon enthusiasts as it is known for its balloon festivals and related activities. That's so, a big ass balloon. If terrible. you had 13 people plus four others, I went up in yeah. one over, I think it was the Napa Valley, and there were eight people in that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you don't think about that many people squeezing into those. Right, things, but right. 13 people, that's pretty large, yeah. Ryan Rollins, the guard who was released by the Washington Wizards uh, last Monday, has been accused of stealing from a Target store on multiple occasions. This is a professional NBA player. And he's a wizard. He should have magical capabilities. The 21-year-old is accused of seven counts of petty larceny. That's weird. Uh, It's alleged Rollins, whose $1.7 million salary for the season was fully guaranteed by the Wizards, stole household items such as grocery, body wash, and candles that were valued at less than $1,000. Rollins allegedly committed the crimes between September 9th and November 9th of last year when he was still on the Wizards roster and stole from the same Target store each time. Kathy, that's a, that's a personal affront to you. Well, I, I, have a, I have a couple of questions here. Does it say, like, is he, like, shoving stuff under his shirt? Is he just walking out with it in his cart? Is... You know what? They didn't say his method, Kathy, so I'm not really sure. I'm just sure. interested because he, he would I... stuff it under his shoulder pads. I know someone who has... Uh, it, it, it's like a, a friend of a friend, so I don't know this person directly, but um, he, he's got some money, and he will just, like, if something's under the cart and target, just leave it there and walk out with it. That's, okay. that's a thing. That's like uh, a, like a yeah. psychological Weird. thing. You know, we, yeah. we said this before. Winona Ryder was a kleptomaniac, would do this shoplifting all the time. A court hearing has been scheduled for early next month with Rollins yet to enter a plea. Rollins previously of the Golden State Warriors uh, featured in 10 regular season games for the Wizards before being released, uh, as well as receiving $1.7 million guaranteed for this season. Rollins was also due to receive 600000 guaranteed for next year, too, but he's stealing from Target. A Texas man is suing Walmart, and he is seeking $100 million in damages or unlimited free lifetime shopping at any location. Oh, That's a hell of a deal. That's great. Roderick mm-hmm. Jackson of uh, Wascombe, Texas, filed two handwritten complaints on Monday in Arkansas. Uh, Walmart's headquarters are in Bentonville, Arkansas. Uh, the complaints do not go into detail about why Jackson is suing. The complaints allege that an incident occurred in March 2021 at a store in Omaha, Nebraska. It involved false pretense of shoplifting and the violation of Jackson's civil rights based on race and color. Now, Jackson is also asking that Walmart pay all of his court fees. He filed the complaints without an attorney and couldn't be reached by phone. A spokesperson for Walmart said Thursday uh, that it does not tolerate discrimination of any kind. In 2021, uh, Jackson sued Walmart over the same alleged incidents. This is his second time trying right. to sue Walmart He's for this. Right, got a mission here. 
He wrote in that complaint that he was racially profiled and falsely accused of a crime, which led to his being arrested. He initially sought $100 million and a, quote, huge credit for future shopping, <laughs> but later amended the complaint to ask for $175 million in damages. And, of course, unlimited sho- or unlimited shopping at any location. Your Honor, anytime. I think we're all reasonable men. I will I'll accept a trillion dollars and lifetime free shopping. Uh, the case was dismissed. That, all right, $2 trillion. That year because he failed to uh, properly serve uh, Walmart. So uh, It's odd that he didn't have a lawyer, I that know. no lawyer yeah. Would, yeah. would bite at that. All right, here's a follow-up story. Forensics experts have debunked claims that two doll-like <laughs> figures and an alleged three-fingered hand found in Peru in 2017 are the remains of extraterrestrials. So this news stunned me. It's been debunked. Peruvian oh. archaeologist Flavio Estrada presented the two objects at a news conference in Lima on Friday, rejecting the existence of extraterrestrial mummies or remains of mummies. <laughs> uh, the Legal Medicine and Forensic Sciences Institute member who led the analysis said that the theory uh, that the figures originated from an alien cen- uh, center or come from an alien another planet are totally false. The conclusion is simply said they are dolls assembled with bones of animals from this planet with modern synthetic glues Therefore, they were not assembled during pre-Hispanic times. They are not extraterrestrials. <laughs> they are not aliens. What the, a letdown, because yeah. it was so convincing. The prosecutor's office has yet has not yet determined who the owners of the objects are, but Peru officials uh, those said are mine. a Mexican <laughs> citizen... <laughs> My kids play with them on the spaceship. ...was the intended recipient before custom agents uh, seized them in October. Uh, in September, UFO researcher Jamie Mousen made global headlines when he claimed in front of Mexico lawmakers that the objects were non-human alien corpses that radiocarbon dated, uh, dating revealed to be up to over 1,800 years old. He made the claims without third-party evidence in a September uh, 2023 congressional hearing in Mexico about UFOs. Uh, but Mousen has a history of making claims that have later been debunked. I'll retract my claims if I get lifetime free shopping at Walmart. The self-proclaimed UFO expert who regularly presents his uh, purported findings to <laughs> Mexican media unveiled the existence of an alleged alien body unearthed in Nazca, Peru in 2015. That alien discovery was later shown to be that of a human child with a head deformity. I'm seeing these as uh, dense in his credibility. I think so. And that is the last story that I have in the Bizarre File. All right, it's a little bit after 8, so we can do this. 93.3 WMMR presents Preston and Steve's Clearwater Word of the Day. And that word would be mound, M-O-U-N-D. So here's what you do. You take that word mound, you head over to WMMR.com and enter it, and it will be your chance to win a spring training trip for two from phillysportstrips.com. That includes, by the way, airfare, three nights at the Hilton at Clearwater Beach Resort, tailgate parties and post-show happy hour with us at Coco's on uh, Friday. We're doing a live broadcast Friday, March 15th from Coco's, and you'll be able to hang out with us afterwards. Uh, the contest ends this Friday, by the way, and you have to be at least 21 years of age. Contest rules and complete details at WMMR.com. Now, if you don't want to take a risk at winning and you actually want to buy a trip, there are a limited amount of them available. Go to phillysportstrips.com to reserve your spot and travel with the pros. You know what's kind of cool is that the uh, crew from Philly Sports Trips are down there right now. They're going to the Eagles game tonight. Oh, so yeah. you, you can buy these things year-round, and they are scouting out some stuff for uh, us to do when we come down in, oh, in March. So Excellent. Yeah, they're, the Vince and the entire crew are down there now. And they're such nice guys. They're really, really excited that we're going to bring a whole lot of listeners. The party at Coco's on Friday is going to be awesome. So nice. uh, they're doing some early scouting already for our trip in March. Wonderful. All right, the word is mound. So enter that now, WMMR.com. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back in just a moment. So stay with us on this Monday morning. So much research on, um, and, and it didn't need to be, because I knew you weren't going to stick to Levittown, even though that's where I grew up. Yeah. But, you know, there's all of those sections. All of the sections have different street name or have the street names with the same letter of the section. So I memorized three street names for each section. Oh, Jesus you Christ. asked me the same question. Well, but then both of you were full of crap that you oh, weren't studying. Oh, 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 so, dude, listen, and it wasn't until... Look, look at his study sheets. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't until last night. It looks night. like his tax returns. Steve, I did it last night laying in bed. My cousin, Katie, texted me and she goes, 
if you're not studying, I'm going to be so angry. And I was like, oh, no, yeah. I'm studying, I promise. Yeah, Jesus. so, like, shopping, I'm surprised you guys didn't ask me about the bazaar. You know, the, I, I, remem- I remembered, like, because uh, the bar- bazaar's not there anymore, but I remember. Casey, there was a question about the bazaar that was, what is the name of the store that used to sell rock t- T-shirts at uh, at the bazaar? That might have been Comic Universe. I don't no, know No, it was sure. Rock Tees. Rock Tees, yeah. So you hey, wouldn't have gotten that one right. Mm-mm. And I want to thank uh, Levittown now, um, because they did an article on, or they wrote, didn't interview with me um, a while back, but he sent over like a fact sheet on uh, Bucks County. Really? <laughs> What's the, Do you know what the population is in your county? I, you know what? I didn't go there because I thought <laughs> he, we kind of covered that yesterday. Yeah. What so, is it in Delaware County? 562,960. <laughs> I know there's 17,311 homes in Levittown. Oh, my God. Really, really Creek State Park is 2,600 uh, acres. Uh, the 191 square miles in all of Delaware County, 800, or 184, which is land. Driftwood Adve- uh, Water Adventures uh, operates out of Tyler State Park and uh, Falls Park. Okay. Yeah. Uh, nice. Strathaven High School is actually named after Thomas Leaper's uh, hometown in Scotland. And by the way, I'm going to start I'm going to start a petition now because the Strathaven mascot is the Panthers, and because it's named after a town in Scotland, I feel like their mascot should be the Griffins. Okay, the Griffins. fair All enough. Right. Start yeah. that, uh, Nick, start that uh, uh, petition. Nick Murphy, also uh, from Bucks County, did you know that there was an East and West Levittown? I did not know that, and it is split by Edgeley Road. Yes. <laughs> wow. What's the oldest library in Bucks County? Oh, you know what? Uh, I think it's, is it gone? It's yeah. gone, because the library that's there now is... Is, uh, new. Do, do you realize you're providing questions for when we do this again in of course, 30 no, years? No, we're not doing Absolutely. it again. I the win. First, uh, the first library, or the yeah, I think the oldest library in the country is in Delaware County, Casey. If it is, then it's Darby Library because that's the oldest in the county. Hmm. And then the longest tenured mayor <laughs> in Delaware County, he's been mayor for 44 years, Frank Kelly in Collingdale. Okay. Shout out. What, Bob what? Casey, <laughs> Pat Toomey. Yeah. Well, Bob Casey's for Ryan both of us. Uh, do you know who your city councilman, uh, chairman is? No, I didn't count? do councilman. Uh, I just did uh, the McElaine. Senate House. <laughs> Bob Brady. That's our, uh, what else do I have? The seventh oh, congressional well. district is vacant right now. <laughs> Tw- Levittown's twenty-two square miles. Felicity alum. Felicity. Felicity. Tonight is a powerful Felicity. <laughs> Felicity shows up late for a chemistry class. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's I thought it was an eight. <laughs> To go to detention. Go to detention. Uh, Carrie Russell. Carrie Russell. She uh, formerly of the Long Locks who killed her career by cutting her hair, but has now grown her hair back and is doing great things with the Americans. Uh, So Carrie Russell was foolishly. Sound like a. uh, It's it's Carrie Russell's history. (laughs) Presented by Rita that she grew her hair back and it was wonderful. She plays a she plays a commie bitch (laughs) who pretends she's one of us. Those commies. In what? In the Americans. The Americans. Oh, the Americans. Okay. You don't She's watch that? No, She's no. a spy. I don't watch that. It's like that John Travolta, Kelly Preston movie. Press. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. uh, the experts. The experts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, but she may join J.J. Abrams and Star Wars Episode Nine. We, we forget that it was J.J. Uh, Abrams who created and wrote a number of the Felicity episodes. I did forget that, yeah. Yeah. No word yet on whether she'll tackle a hero or a villain in the epic franchise. Uh, the movie begins shooting in London this month, by the way. Unless we forget also that Carrie Russell won Mr. Skin's Best Butt Shot, I believe, in the Anatomy Awards. Get a nice pooper. No yeah. kidding. Uh, Casey says she's got, she's got a got hell a nice... of a pooper. Kind of, kind of butt you want to spend a weekend spelunking at if you don't. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we are we are back from vacation. <laughs> yeah, we are. Uh, so the oh yeah, this is nice. <laughs> is good stuff. Look, there's some soccer players in there from Thailand. <laughs> some kids. I'm gonna help you out. You guys all right? Wait, uh, I see light from the badge. Oh god. <laughs> we can do this. Wow. It's a new survival story unlike any other. Look this way, kids. <laughs> we go. Is it a stalactite or a stalactite? 
<laughs> the, the the tight or from the ceiling stalactite hang on top, and the wow. mics are. You know that? Yeah, that's yeah. the old stalactite. It, it's tight. Hangs it hangs tight. on, and stalagmite might make it to the ceiling if it keeps growing. So. And all wow. this is taking place in Felicity's <laughs> <In Felicity's laughs> butt. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Tex says, driving my kids to daycare. My two-year-old is <laughs> calling my one-year-old a commie bitch. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> 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 Sorry about oh, that. Well, yeah. Sorry. Right. Well, they're learning about a time in our history that was very important. Yeah. Hey, uh, I noticed a few things. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. I did. Yeah. I absolutely, positively. He's back. Yeah. You know what he does. He notices things so you don't have to. Yeah. You're too busy sleeping three hours a day on your job. Yes, it's He's true. He's out there noticing. Hey, you know what I noticed? I noticed that... Uh, my penis looks a little bit bigger in the summertime. Is that right? Yeah. And I think I know that's why, why, why is that. You tend to be trimmer in the summer, don't you? No. The, actually, this is uh, something that was on Reddit, and I just used me as an example. Not This is not true. But the, apparently, there's something called a summer penis. And the living is easy? Um, or a summer penis makes, makes me feel fine. Mm. Uh, so on Reddit, one user asked if others experienced a, quote, bigger D in the summertime <laughs> and smaller in winter. Bigger D. Uh, I'm paraphrasing. Winter's coming. Uh, (laughs) Winter's coming. Um, Smaller T's for everyone. Men said (laughs) soaring temperatures cause their junk to appear larger. And when uh, when they're happy, so to speak, when they're at attention, clap your nuts. Apparently, it's better. (laughs) When you're happy and you know it, clap your nuts. Squish, squish. Ow. Uh, Dr. Dudley Danoff. Dr. Dudley Danoff does not exist. Author of The Ultimate Guide to Male Sexual Health says yeah. that hot temperatures <laughs> cause blood vessels to widen. Yeah. And you may uh, you may swell a oh, little bit. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'm swelling right now. Uh, urologist well, Dr. Jamin Brambot. Stop it. Uh, this is fake. <laughs> There's not even, yeah. There's, this Dudley is Jamin. Uh, Dudley Danoff. And, and his nurse, and Katrina Thunderrod. <laughs> <laughs> this is urologist, doctor. Uh, now, I'm probably pronouncing this. It, it's probably Yamin, J A M I N. I just Yaman. Said Jamin. Like Jamin. You got Better. yourself a big penis, Derman. Uh, Brambot, which well, is B R A H M B H A T T. Maybe it's Jamin, and his real name is like Benjamin, but. Uh, he changes Instead of going by Ben, he goes Jamin. Uh, it's quite possible. Well, well, Yamin Brahmabat uh, says <laughs> that men's penises always remain the same size, but adds that blood vessels near the surface may contract uh, to maintain heat and that hot weather may cause those blood vessels to fill to the max. We're not talking about, obviously, we're not talking about a foot and a half increase. We're no. talking perhaps just a general. Now, just however, general though, fullness. when you lose weight, uh, it uh, it does appear to be larger. Correct. I would think yeah, so. Stand to, stand to reason. I would guess so. Yeah. So yeah, that's. Uh, but I mean, um, yes, in the in the engorging process, perhaps. But also, uh, don't Bill you, loves all these words. By the way, don't you feel like uh, your fruit hangs a little bit lower during the summer just because it's, it's sad? <laughs> not necessarily that, but it's just it's it's warmer. So I think so. Things right? are for, for looser. looser for yeah. proper child production. Yeah. The um, the baby batter must be cooler, right? You, you, oh, you're te- you're te- that's why your testicles are are. The way they are in the body's configuration, they, they always say to you, loose and uh, loose and cooler. Well, is is the uh, you guys have kids? I don't know. I didn't really? look that much into it. <laughs> you didn't you but, didn't chill them up before you met, you uh, got it on. But it is sophisticated. Spray them with some CO two. It is sophisticated equipment that is meant for the purposes of child re- right. of reproduction. Yes, and therefore it it maintains a temp to a certain temperature so that your your uh, equipment your works DLT. properly, and yeah. yeah, you're cool on the cool side and hot on the hot. Anyway, we'll move on to something else. I just liked it because the headline was "Heat Waves Lead to Summer Penis." Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, uh, I'm the yes, thank you. <laughs> Makes me feel fine. <laughs> Blowing into jasmine, cross my sack. Love that song. Can't help it. Uh, I did notice something else. More I... from the noticer. Mm-hmm. He notices so you don't have to. I noticed. Across an empty field. Down I, the dark alley. I did. I do <laughs> notice that I will use um, digital assistants from time to time. The two that I use are. Your fingers? A uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and your toes. Not those digital Oh, assistants. I'm sorry. <laughs> Meaning Siri and Alexa. Those are the two that I use from yes. time to time. Now, okay. Alexa, I mainly use for like a, 
a timer when I'm cooking or um, music to listen to real quick or something so like that. In your kitchen, uh, do you have the uh, the show, the Alexa show? Yeah, which has go. the screen on it? Oh no, no, huh? it's actually very cool, especially yeah. if you're doing recipes or things of that nature. Right. Yeah. Uh, so anyhow, there was a uh, a new study that finds uh, which is the smartest of them all, and in what order. Uh, this is uh, Loop Ventures. They did a study that had researchers ask the four digital, digital assistants 800 questions, and they found all assistants were great at understanding the questions. Um, and uh, uh, they they have uh, determined who actually answered uh, the most questions. I, I I have them all, or have had them all. This sounds like I'm bragging about sexual mm-hmm. conquest, but uh, uh, yeah. So go through this. I'm curious to see if it lines up with what I experienced. So they found that the smartest of them all is Google Assistant. Okay, so that's that's what I learned is that the ability to answer questions and questions contextually yeah. went to Google. I okay. can't stand when I ask Siri a question and she just gives me a bunch of websites to go to. I'm like, I do, just give me do give not me like answer. that. However, yeah. though, Google Assistant will mo- most often default to Wikipedia. There are obviously silly, ridiculous things that you don't need it for, but you use it for anyway. I still do, yeah. What What do you think for you yeah. is the most practical purpose for using any of these? Uh, well, f- honestly, for the uh, the, the uh, when I when I'm sitting, for example, if I'm sitting and I'm I'm um, I'm setting up something for for the the media. You know, I'm I'm watching TV or whatever, and I'm I'm, I'm looking down at something, or I need the lights on, or I'm you know, I, it, turning lights on and off. Okay. Playing and also playing music, playing music, playing I think the, that's the radio, what I would use it for. playing yeah. playing. Um, I walk into a room. I I constantly use it for weather. I constantly use it. Uh, I'll I'll get a quick news update. Yep. So I'm interfacing it with that. And if you look at your, if you find out on your app on your phone. Uh, it'll tell you your last 70 requests. And mine are always sort of the same thing. Okay. You know? I mean, it, it will, it records everything. So you, you know, you can find out every single request that you've asked. Uh, and that, I, and yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. I am using. 933 WMMR. Thanks, Kath. Uh, we're going to talk birds a little bit later on. Pat Gallon, CBS3 is going to be stopping by this morning. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about your butt. Hmm. Yes, we have to. And we're going to, we're going to make sure that it stays nice and healthy. Little Heine Health, if you will. Is this your new character, the Ass Master? The Ass Master. (laughs) (laughs) No, it is not. What? You have a a song? I got a song song for you, bro. Uh, Nice. (laughs) Okay. Time for the Ass Master. This is is one of uh, Rochelle and I's jams. Doing the Casey's doing the butt as we speak. Oh, man. But till it made me sore. Seventh and eighth grade dances <laughs> at a Catholic school doing the butt. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to do the butt right now. <laughs> Look uh, at that. And the birth of a new legend. Yeah. A, a colon surgeon has revealed why you should never use wet wipes in lieu of toilet paper. This uh, caught my eye immediately because I know a number of people yeah, who subscribe right a, in the studio. A few in this room. Uh, to the wet wipe method of uh, butt cleaning. Yeah, but I do, I go dry then wet. So you do one toilet paper, one, you know, spigot. One drink, drink yeah. one wipe. One, one, one drink, water. one wipe. Yeah. Uh, I also use the sensitive ones because it doesn't have alcohol in it. The ones uh. that are more prone to cry. Uh, okay. No, 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 no. Because I was, you know, I had heard that, like, uh, the, the wet wipes that have alcohol in it are... Are not good for your anus. Okay. What uh, brand do you use? I don't really care which brand. I think right now I have Signature brand. Okay, I use Can Do. Yeah. Uh, and they are delightful. Yeah, I go Signature Care because they're Soothing? least expensive. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah but Fragrance do, free. But Can Do's good though. I do dry and then wet as well. Case. What do you use, Nick? It's called Can Do. It's K A N D O O, and it, they're baby wipes. You okay. know, but you can get them in a grocery store. Do is th- is the reason you go dry first and then wet to get most of the matter out of there first, and then use this wet as a nice little cooling agent, and then you can throw it in the trash can instead of flushing it? Well, um, almost. Uh, you got it almost all right. The it's not a cooling agent. It's just the, the extra cleanliness. Yeah. So I feel like you don't get quite as clean with the regular toilet paper, and then you you finish up with a can do, and then you're good to go. Yeah, but do you then throw it in the trash? I do. Yeah. Good yeah. Idea. By, the, by the way, are we assuming that can as in can referring to the butt? Oh, well, maybe. it's a kangaroo, can. is it not? 
It's is a frog. It, is it a frog? <laughs> yeah. And they're known for wiping their asses. It's spelled with a K. Yeah, K A N D O O. Okay. Oh, maybe Why like yeah, you know it's kind of a the butt term can is an antiquated term and I yeah. could see them using that maybe, right, but, right. yeah. But Nick, I I just go where if I'm at a CVS or at Acme or whatever, I just go the the house brand because sure. it's cheaper and I Have you ever to, tried them out in box. CVS just to make sure that they feel yeah, comfortable? Yeah, you have to do it. You got to take it out for a test drive while in the store. Hey, yeah. I'm trying this. Speaking of of uh, antiquated terms like like can, can yeah. I I was uh Caroline was singing, we were listening to some Billy Joel. And um, Piano Man is on, and, you know, he has a line, and they sit at the bar and put bread in my jar and say, ma'am, what are you doing here? Uh, and I go, do you know, because she was singing along with it, yeah, I go, yeah. do you know what he means when he uses the term bread? Mm. And she just looks at me and goes, no. Ah. Yeah. And I go, oh, it's a money. It's an old term for money. And she goes, oh, like dough. Yes. Yeah. And I go, yeah, yeah exactly. Smart one. So never knew it. Yeah. I also saw a really funny thing on Instagram, and I'll never look at uh, Piano Man the same, but... There's a chance that, uh, just ju judging by the lyrics alone, that Billy was playing piano at a gay bar. And uh, you have no idea. But when you take a Show look me at your dong on the piano, man? <laughs> no, but there are a few lyrics in there. Okay. Um, you know, Davey, who's still in the Navy. And, Probably like, with your life, yeah. And there's another guy who, who's never Paul's married. a real estate novelist, never had time, time for, for a wife. wife. Yeah. yeah. Talking about Davey, who's name, still in the Navy, probably will be your life. John, John, at the, at the it's all the, guys. Got, uh, he gets Lonnie's me my drinks for free. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I never heard that. But it, 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 when you dissect it that way, possibly. The waitresses slowly get stoned, so there's some females in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. All right, anyhow. Anyway, enough for another time. Let's talk about doctors. Another time. We're talking about your butt. Uh, Dr. Karen Zagian, uh, who is based in Beverly Hills, said that she would never use a disposable cloth uh, for wiping because it could cause... Uh, perianal der uh, dermatitis. So, perianal dermatitis. Wasn't he a TV lawyer? No, that was Perry, Perry Mason. Mason. Oh! Uh, an infection which leaves a bright red rash around the anus and rectum. Uh, uh, would look lovely. Taking to her TikTok page, she advised her followers to instead use a bidet. Which, which I a, do! A much more sanitary option compared to wet wipes and tissue paper. One mild regret when I purchased my bidet, I could have gotten one that would warm the water. Uh, now they have one, Steve. I saw the uh, Consumer Electronics show yeah. uh, that they have hooked up to uh, Alexa. Uh, and so you can... Uh, Alexa, clean my ass. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yep, you, you, you control it like that. I will tell you this, Preston, I, I do it rather frequently. And, and Nick, for the what you just said, that extra feeling of cleanliness, Lord knows we all need it in these, in these, uh, times. these trying times. These troubled times. <laughs> we all need a clean anus. Uh, the doctor went on to share other useful health tips, including the exact amount of time you should spend on the toilet so as not to aggravate your hemorrhoids. Do you bring, um, a, a la Paul Rudd and uh, This is 40, do you have an electric device with you, your phone or an I have iPad? my phone, but I don't spend extra time. I, I get When my business is done, my business is done. I get up and go, and I and whatever I'm in the middle of, I stop playing or reading or whatever it is. Yeah. I pause because I, I will use that time to paint my Civil War figurines. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I got a phone call when I was on the toilet the other day, and it was a, uh, a phone call I had to take. It was one that I've been trying, <laughs> waiting oh, for no. for a long time. And and uh, it was an important call, but like, there's just nothing you can do. No. You're just stuck. Like, you can't put the You're phone stuck. down to wipe. You yep. can't. You, you can't bust out the wipe. Hey, you know? Nick, can we go Facetime? <laughs> the can. No. no. Yeah, and it's just one of these things where you're like, all right, well now I got to sit here forever and finish up this call, and then uh, my legs completely fell asleep. Uh, oh. Have you ever had the situation where this happens, and it is one of these critical calls, and you don't want to betray the fact that you're taking a dump, and now you you're you're trying to stop all sorts of. Bathroom ambiance. Oh, like and, the, and echo. the echo. There's an echo. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely and, and an you're echo. trying to muffle it. Yeah. It's like looking for a silencer or for a gun. And that's why I didn't want to put it on speaker and, yeah. you know, wipe and flush and wa wash my hands. So you just sit there and deal with it. You didn't tell. It wasn't somebody you could say, hey, no. can you hold on for just a second? No, it was a business. <laughs> no, I'm in the I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to make a little snack. Uh, so she said, yeah, if you, if you spend too much time on the, on the toilet, it can, sitting there, it can aggravate your hemorrhoids. I've heard that. Years ago, they, now they, they had this thing which everyone was buying. It was all the rage. All the kids love the squatty potty. Uh -huh. Yeah. I bought it. Um, I, my, my bathroom habits are very good. So, you know, uh, but I figured why not if this is a way to help with your, you know, uh, excretory experience. 
I found it annoying to okay. sit that way. I felt, yeah, like, I felt like a your, bird of prey. Your knees are up higher, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Was, I, to me, it was no, weird. Yeah, I, I, I was going to pass on that. Yeah, one, yeah. Yeah, I, I was intrigued at first. Wait, an easier way to poop? Wow. Well, I thought they had that, that down, yeah. yeah. Uh, so she also says she would never get colonics. She said people are always looking for a cleanse to cleanse their colon. The best way to cleanse your colon is to eat high-fiber diet and get a variety of fiber in that diet. This will amplify your gut microbe and make it healthy to optimize gut health. You don't need to flush out your colon with colonics. There is no benefit to it. If you are constipated, there's all sorts of over-the-counter remedies. If you have severe constipation, see a gastroenterologist. Uh, she summed up her advice by revealing that uh, colonic cleanses only provide temporary relief while warning that she witnessed bad things happen to people following a colonic. Mm. Uh, next up, she uh, explained why it was compulsory to never spend more than five minutes sitting on the toilet and <laughs> aimed her advice at phone scrolling. Sometimes I go longer, uh, but, you know, because I, I get distracted, as I said, with my Civil War figures. But yeah. the truth of the matter is, is that it has been a long time since I've had the pins and needles thing, where right. you, you sit there for for too long, usually if, if you're sick or whatever. But I use, I, I take fiber pills and, yeah. and everything is good. I know people, though, who have sworn by the notion, Preston, that doing enemas is sort of a, um, they do it like regularly as a medicinal mm. step to ward off sickness. And that to me seems like that's a little bit of an overkill. Yeah, so you're saying that it's not necessary yeah. at all. Yeah. Uh, but she said that uh, sitting, especially if you're finished having a bowel movement or you're waiting to have a bowel movement and you're just sitting there and scrolling the internet, looking at social media is really bad for your hemorrhoids. Uh, there is a, she said there's a vacuum effect on the toilet that pulls on the hemorrhoidal veins. Ooh. Ooh. Don't like that. And aggravates them. Sounds like some sort of harp from hell. Hemorrhoidal veins. Yeah. That's uh, a good band name, though. It is. <laughs> Hemorrhoidal veins. She said, if you have not finished or began your bowel movement in five minutes, get up, come back another time when you have the urge to go again, but do not sit there for a long time. Okay, if you're looking to, if you've got a, like a work stoppage there and you're looking to get things moving, what do you go to dietarily to get? I really don't. Are um, you you're good that way? I no, I'm not good that way. I mean, there are times where it's just it, it's not happening. But I but I don't have any. Uh, I I don't gra grab food that I go to that I think will loosen things up. I just never really have done that. What would you use? Well, uh, eggs, eggs would do it. Black coffee. Yeah, uh, see, it, eggs you know, are not a. Yeah. It's not a, a um, mover for me. Uh, that, that, something uh, something that shocks the system. I tell you what used to, what? W without fail, uh, and I haven't done it in over 20 years, is um, smoke a cigarette. Oh, I've heard that. You're missing out, man. Yep. I've heard that. Why Why do you think that I happens? Don't know, I don't like cigarettes. I've heard, I, I I've just heard people say that. in general, I yeah. think, um, you know, because you didn't consume nicotine any other way but through cigarettes, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I smoke cigars, but I, I, I assume there's nicotine in that. Have you ever in, inserted yeah. chew rectally to see if it would have Not the same effect? Not done that or snus or anything like that up my butt. No, snass. I've tried it. <laughs> Some snass. <laughs> have you tried snass yet? It really gets you moving. Yeah. I love snass. But the first cigarette of the day was easily the bowel mover, man. Like like the second you smoke. Because I think it has a, a calming, a relaxing the, the nicotine, as Casey was saying, it it somehow or another um, brings you. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I think that's whatever. true because when you get nervous or you're tense, you. I mean, I do feel a general tightness in that area. I think there's something to be said for the relaxation yeah. that allows everything. I mean, you think about Elvis when he passed, right? They he apparently had like a oh he was impacted up. fecal like, matter. Incredible, yeah, yeah. Just hor I was, there was a while back, Nick, a couple of months ago. Do you remember? I told you, like, I went off. I'm like, I'm going to go to the. Take my first dump in almost two weeks. Yeah, I thought that was shocking, and yeah. it's not two good. Weeks? Not good yeah. for you. Yeah. Wow. That's a, that's a long time to not go. Yeah, it's weird. You sure? It was... And I was eating healthy. I was eating, yeah. you know, salad and, and lots yeah. of uh, getting plenty of roughage, and well, then maybe wasn't moving. Maybe you were. It's still kind of weird for two weeks, but yeah. if you're if you're maximizing, your body is drawing everything off what you're putting into it. That's you're still what I thought. Maybe generate because I was exercising yeah. right, and, right. and doing all the things I need to do, and I thought, well, my body's using what I, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Were you, were you perhaps crapping cotton candy and not noticing? And not even because it's so light and airy, possibly. But I know somebody who, um, whenever they go away, they can't poop. Like so, if they're on vacation, it's like. 
Really? Yeah, yeah. They have a really, really, really tough time. That's why Kyle ate the lobster in Maine to get his system moving because <laughs> it's the only way you can do it. I, I'll tell you this. Uh, well, I've known people, you know, a person who used to work here used to have to go, go home, home into Lush. Center City. Lush, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. to go to the bathroom? Yeah, yeah. Really? Th th those things are, are all. Yeah, I can go anywhere. I I went in Target the other day. Do it right now. Yeah. Oh, you did. You did a a, yeah. a Dookie in uh, Target. The yeah. Other day? yeah. I, yeah. I, I I didn't even make it to yeah, the, the lingerie section. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to. I I uh, <laughs> I was at the checkout line and um, it was like ah this isn't gonna this isn't gonna make it all the way home. Doesn't it amaze mm -hmm. you? Like I used to be so pee shy and 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 to toilet shy. It's like. No. They're, 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 and usually it comes in the form of some sort of, of fecal or urine disaster that finally puts you over the edge. You're like, um, I'm, I'm going to have to do this now. You know what's funny is I actually I came to the realization that this was going to have to happen uh, at the store while I was in the checkout line. And they had uh, uh, travel wet wipes. <laughs> and I was like, this is great. So I even bought <laughs> I'm going to use, hey, yeah, can they have that intercom? I'm going to use these right now on my ass. I'm such a wet wipe guy that if I don't have that opportunity, uh, I'm like, ah. Really? It, yeah, it feels So you, you've got to have the wet wipes. Oh, yeah. Huh. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. So, yes, this doctor recommends that you don't do that, but whatever, man. Uh -huh. uh, other tips that made her top ten list include uh, warning cancer patients to opt for mainstream medicine over alternative treatments, uh, to never use herbal remedies to treat constipation, and for women to avoid vaginal births after having a cesarean section. These are just things that she suggests. So, uh, maybe I'm, uh, I'm, I'm misinformed about a lot, but I thought once you have... A cesarean? Cesarean. That you always have one? Yeah. No, you can't. It's yeah. called a VBAC. You can uh, try to deliver vaginally. They don't recommend it. I've known, I know a couple people that have done it. I thought there it. were no vaccines. One, one went terribly wrong. Like what they say could go wrong went wrong. Oh and they God. had to rush her and she had to have all kinds of blood transfusions. Oh, really? And, it was dangerous yeah, to her? Dangerous yeah. to her, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. so it, it can happen. But I mean, I have a friend who um, gave birth a couple years ago and uh, her first was a C-section and the second she wanted to try and she was okay. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Uh, here's a text going back to the uh, cigarettes. It says, I am a di an addiction counselor, the text says. Nicotine is a stimulant. That is why the first cigarette makes you need to poop because nicotine stimulating your whole system. So there you go. Huh. Along those lines, yeah. mm. Now, along the uh, the lines of this particular story... Oh, Jesus, no. I'm the Nasta. Okay, this does involve your butt, but I'm, I'm not doing all oh. ass stories. No, no. We're a top flight radio show here. <laughs> during this segment. Uh, a woman who will suffer diarrhea for the rest of her life. The I'm ass master. <laughs> Hit it, boys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a woman who will suffer diarrhea for the rest of her life after using Ozempic is among, is among dozens of patients who are suing the maker of the blockbuster weight loss during uh, drug over claims that it left them with crippling stomach paralysis. Now, I expect any time that a fairly new drug comes onto the market, once you get it in the hands of millions of people... You're going to have your outliers. You're going to have some uh, adverse reactions, yeah. and, and hence the dis big disclaimers over the side effects. May cause your ass to explode. Yeah, but uh, Novo Nordisk, the maker of Ozempic and Wagovi is facing some lawsuits from patients across America who say they experienced extreme side effects which they alleged were which they were alleged and not warned about. Thousands more patients have also come forward to claim that they suffered adverse reactions to the drugs and attorneys say many more could jo join the growing legal campaign. So I mean they weren't warned about but the warnings are right there on the label. So yeah. are they claiming that those particular warnings now I, don't know. I have not seen the 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 labeling for Ozempic and whether it does include does what, it say what, lifelong diarrhea? Yeah, lifelong I diarrhea. Yeah. Uh well I don't I don't know what it says, but I, I Put also books in your bathroom. I don't like who I who I don't read any of the uh side effect warnings on any of the things that I take. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of them are similar, and they may turn you off from it, maybe. Well, you that's know. why, like, the commercials reel off, so this yeah. may cause this, may cause it. Now, they'll have those, but there's still about, usually about four or five others that they don't mention in the in the commercials. But, you know, they if you, uh, what is it? I'm trying to think of the last common, well, maybe my, the thyroid medication, if you take the little 
<clears throat> thing that comes with it, Preston, that both of you and I are on, there's like a 20-page, oh, you know, sure. little... Mm. Yeah. <coughs> Think about it. Most of the patients claim they suffered from uh, gastroparesis, which is the medical name for paralysis of the stomach. Oh, yeah. Oh. I know a couple people who that happened to. And what did they, what happened to them? What uh, do they I feel mean, like? Do you know? One is like going through it now and he is like miserable, wishes he had never even tried it. And like yeah, they're telling him that it could, it may not go away. From <laughs> using these drugs? From using Ozempic. Yeah. So it is, um, it's being used so widely, as you said, Preston, the amount of, of data that's coming in about it is pretty amazing. Now, I heard from the beginning um, that that people who were on it, some would experience a little bit of... Um, Hair loss? Uh, well, yeah, more indigestion. Like, oh, okay. like, like a, well, little bit, a little sour stomach, but that's the worst I heard. I mean, here's the ding. Uh, the ding? <laughs> Uh, that was dealing thing at the same time. So ding, here's, ding. The, here's the ding. Dings. I'm an expert on Ozempic, and here's the ding. <laughs> I have been on Ozempic, and uh, and um, it kind of sucks because like like I, I've lost a, you know, quite a bit of weight, so I'm down like uh, close to seventy pounds. What sucks, wow! What sucks You're, is you weigh seventy pounds right now. I do, I do. It's no, pretty no, no, crazy. No. It's oh, oh, sorry. Seventy pounds um, of weight. <laughs> but I didn't lose seventy pounds from Ozempic. I think half was on my own, and half was uh, was Ozempic. I, it it sucks because, I, you know, the, I know that when people hear that, like, oh, like it's cheating. You know, I, I still go to the gym every single day. I hey, do an hour of weight training every single day. You know what I, I mean? I have a friend like, yeah. who's using it and is not eating the way they should be eating, and mm -hmm. they're not losing any weight. Okay. You still have to put in some effort yeah. for this to do it. It doesn't work all by itself. There are, there are guidelines, like when people get... Uh, gastric uh, surgery Sleeves, yeah. done, mm -hmm. there are rules that you have to follow or it's going to come right back on. I mean, you, you exactly can right. on you, you know? Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. so I got, I, I'm trying to think of, like, when I went on it and how much I'm at now. I think I've lost, like, 30 pounds on Ozempic and 40 without it. Quick question. Yeah. In your initial uh, times using it, did yeah. you have any sort of these kind of issues? Well, so what I suffered, as far as side effects are concerned, uh, is uh, some nausea, right? But, like, the nausea pang will come and go in, I don't think they last any longer than, for me, 10 minutes. Was there tenderness around your vulva? Now, I also <laughs> uh, don't have a vulva, but I did have tenderness. I also don't have one. I grew okay, a vulva. Right. Uh, but I did suffer uh, constipation, so it's the exact opposite of what this person had yeah, yeah. With, with the yeah. diarrhea. Now, I don't know if the constipation came from the fiber that I take or, or, or what, but it also caused some issues where I actually developed a, a fistula uh, in the summer, Kathy, I'm, I, when I say cool. this, like, I don't want you to hate me any more than you already do, but, like, uh, I, you know, you just but I had to have it taken you? care of. Sure. I have no, a question. Yeah. When you were sliding into first, did you feel something burst? burst? Diarrhea. Okay. That's yeah. eruption. Yeah. 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 Hey, well, why you're lying in grass and your balls hit your ass. Uh, Casey, why Ozempic and not Wagovi or Manjaro? Um, because at that time, the, uh, my insurance was covering it. Okay. And so now, because so many people are on it, insurance is like, oh, we're not going to do that anymore. But do you think, uh, uh, did, yeah. did you do any research into uh, whether or not some of the side effects from those other two might be different than Ozempic? I think they're all very similar. Okay. I know I know people who are on, who were, were on Wagovi and Manjaro. I think I have a friend now who's, he's on Manjaro. So okay. uh, case, uh, a, yeah. a friend of the show had exactly that. I, I was, uh, I brought up this exact topic, had an Ozempic <laughs> issue moved on to one of the others and found it was less. Yeah. So and, yeah. That was uh, the, they did also report that the um, effects or the effectiveness of it was a bit less as well. Yeah. So so what happened for me is I had um, taken all this weight off. I was exercising a lot. I was on my bike. And then I just couldn't stop eating. I, I, maybe mm. it was because I was exercising so much. And I was like, but I, but I wasn't losing weight. And then I actually was like gaining it more. And I so I called my doctor and I said, Dude, I, I need some help because I can't stop eating, and I don't, you know, and and that's when, what's being reported here. Mm -hmm. Like people, people are finding, and, and in this story and other stories that are coming out. Obviously, the the thing is, and as they would talk about it, it for for uh, you know diabetes and for that that sort of control, and it, and the, and a positive side effect they used to say in the commercials was you might even lose some some weight. Right. But the goal was lowering your blood sugar. Right. And so my A one C is actually in check now. So the insurance yeah. company's like, now nah, we're not going to cover this anymore. So, uh, I had mentioned uh, hair loss. There was a, uh, <clears throat> a story that I read 
a week or two ago, and it was uh, I found it on this website that I used to get a lot of great stories, a news aggregator called FARC, and the people that are members of FARC, they they enter these, uh, <clears throat> they, they post these links, and they, they have headlines or, or, or uh, uh, subject lines that they put in, and this one said about the fact that there was hair loss. Yeah, yeah. The subject line said, do you want to be fat or bald? <laughs> <laughs> It's a good question. I don't Take know. Your pick. Take your I pick. I think I'd rather be bald. Uh, Thank I, you. Yeah, I have I been fat, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, for me, it had gotten to a point where, like, I had to, like, take a deep breath when I went to put my socks on and stuff like that. So I, I, I go to Dr. Avi Donapel now, uh, yeah. Iron Mountain Men's Health, and so I, I'm back on the Ozempic from, uh, from him, and I'm just going to be on it until I think I, I've got, like, another 15 pounds, and then I'm going to... Then gonna, you feel good, yeah. I'm going to stop it at that point, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, I keep seeing this commercial and I love it for, and I, I don't know what the drug is. You guys have seen it. If you watch any like football, um, there's a woman dancing and she goes, da, na, 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 da, yeah. Da, yeah. Da, da. I'm trying to lower my A1C. <laughs> I love that she's commercial. kind of a, um, she's, she's cute. Just a, totally cute. Yeah. And she's dancing around doing the, the, the most horrible dance. She's dancing on a, but on every a, time the commercial fountain. comes on, you, like, not you, seen can't, it. you can't, you can't help but be going, yeah, yes! shake it, baby. I'm trying to lower my A1C. See ya, girl. What's, what's your A1C? Uh, it is something that should be low in your blood. <laughs> Answer. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, Jardin Jardins? Yeah. Yeah. You've never seen this commercial? No. Oh, we have to play the uh, it's a great song. It's a total banger. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot like Drake. Yeah. Uh Nick is looking up A1C for you by the way. It's, He's gonna... uh, hemoglobin and it has to do with uh diabetes and diabetics. Okay. All right. So this is, has a diabetic drug. And she's a slightly overweight gal and uh <laughs> so maybe it's yeah. Okay. It uh, yeah, into diabetes. Okay. And the man man walks by and goes, "Bitch, why are you dancing?" <laughs> <laughs> I've not I've not seen it. So uh, by the way, in one case uh, about this, we talked about, um, you know, Ozempic uh, and uh, paralysis of the stomach. I mentioned some people have gotten that. That condition can be life-threatening, causes a buildup of food in the gut, and symptoms include nausea, vomiting, and severe pain. In one case, a woman who used Ozempic and Monjaro claims that uh, she was diagnosed with uh, gastri uh, uh, gastroparesis, uh, which caused her to vomit so much that some of her teeth fell out. Oh, oh my God! God. She was puking this so hard, she great. puked out her teeth. Now, we, we've had some screamers. I know yep. you've had as well, but yep. the teeth stayed in. Never lost a tooth. Yeah. This and is what makes me so nervous about these drugs, though, because now we're starting to see what the longer-term effects are. Well, Kathy, would you buy, because they, they're releasing Ozempic Plus, and that plus is they include teeth. Uh, <laughs> in another story, a woman was diagnosed with a life-threatening bowel injury after using Ozempic and underwent surgery, which lasts nearly nine hours. Doctor said that she would be in pain for the rest of her life and will never have a solid bowel movement again. Oof. Now the bad news. Uh, a third case brought by a woman who used Wagovi claims that she was diagnosed with severe uh, gastroparesis and was hospitalized with symptoms including going a week without a bowel movement. So you, you, got, well, a you got a beat two yeah. weeks. The champ, the goat. Uh, more than 40 cases have been filed in federal courts across America and attorneys are revving, uh, reviewing thousands more. Uh, the cases are expected to be grouped together later this month into a multi-district litigation, which will centralize them before a single judge. Do you think they'll use the FARC categorization, either fat or bald? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Hang on, let me go to uh, Sean. Hi, Sean. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey. Uh, just wanted to comment on the A1C. The A1C is a three-month average of your blood sugar. Okay. Perfect. All right, that makes total sense. Okay. Yeah. A1C, three-month average of your blood sugar. Awesome. Are yep. you diabetic, Sean? Is that how you know this? I, I am. Yep, I am. I am type uh, 2. I'm type 2. I don't take insulin, but um, I'm about there. But, yeah. All right. So that's... I, I saw a breakthrough that they're they're working on now. They haven't gone to human trials yet of a uh, something that can allow the body uh, to create its own insulin. Yes, uh, and to yeah. and like this is apparently going to be a game changer. That's did the dream. See, did you see this, Sean? I did not. I did not. What is it called? Do you know, guys? I, I don't remember. I saw the article last week, but it's going to be another fifteen twenty years before yeah. it gets into to the public. But apparently, they've. Uh, made some uh, pretty big steps forward for that, which would be huge be great. For, yeah. uh, for diabetics. Absolutely. All right, thanks, Sean. All right, thank you, guys. Appreciate Take it, it easy, man. man. All right, let's check our A1C. I have type 2 diabetes, but I manage it well. It's a little pill with a big story to tell. I take God. one daily job.
guys are dancing like Oompa wow. Loompas. Well, that's there. how she's doing it. <laughs> What's her bizarre? What, what is that? What is the uh, Z- Zizza Rizza Kabizza? The, oh, uh, 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 Rizza Man, Chris, I don't know. What is that? Uh, God. Sky Reezy? Sky Reezy, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Rizm Kizm El Rizab. Yeah. Oh, my Something God. Like they bombard in the 7 o'clock hour between Jeopardy and, and uh, Wheel of Fortune, which I assume they assume is being watched by older people with yeah. these conditions. Uh, they they pound this commercial. Anything. To, and it always ends with, ask your doctor. Yeah. I don't know if I love that commercial because of the song or because I think that the woman is really cute. She's just very energetic and yeah. having a goddamn good time. Yeah. I hate that commercial. I'm going to dance my diabetes away. I hate that commercial so much, Casey. I'm glad that you love it and find enjoyment of it because I find it so damn annoying. It's just terrible. I'm just having a great time. And she's do actually she's actually they break the fourth wall. They do. She's shooting a commercial. And you see the uh, camera see the and the director. And then she goes to a wardrobe God. change. I wanna punch it. I wanna Dude, punch the I didn't even commercial. Didn't even realize the wardrobe change. You did you do that? Yes. Uh, no. Oh, oh you no, gotta watch yeah. that. See, I have the, at the end. I have the director's cut. Oh wow. There was a commercial a while back and it was for a drug, and I forgot it was for what it was for, but uh, the woman uh, they they had her. She was a uh, you know she's a rock singer. Yeah, in a band. Oh, there you and, go. And they showed her. I know which one. You totally know that she's not a singer at all and just an actress because in right. every shot of her, mm-hmm. her mouth is open like this, <laughs> <laughs> as if she's on the microphone yeah. going ah. <laughs> Rock. Like every time, like singing no words yeah. at all. Every time it's just <laughs> ah, and they showed her like six or seven times during the commercial. I think I think that might be a psoriasis commercial. Press. I think it might be too. Case. Yeah, yeah. I think. Oh, exactly there's the one where talking the, about. The she's one... really hot, really hot. Yes. Yeah. Like, there's one where yeah. the girl is giving the TED talk too, and she's she has her um, psoriasis, but it's cleared up, and she turns and winks to the camera, and so they're either giving a presentation or yeah. putting on. A like show. A Shakespeare in the Park. Yeah. Or there's like a banjo or like a bluegrass group. It's always the same sort of thing. Stuff that really old people would love. Hold on. I'm going to go to Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Oh, okay. Hi. Good morning, Gadzooks. Gadzooks. What's up, Stephanie? <laughs> Nothing. I just want to say, Casey, yeah. I completely agree with you. That <laughs> Guardians commercial, a bop. I bop. wonder, would you buy it as, would you buy the song itself just to have in the car? <laughs> As a ringtone, probably. Oh, hey, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, here's... I'm not kidding. I hear that song like, unfortunately, Casey, that's going to be in my head all three <laughs> <right> now. <laughs> and my coworkers absolutely hate it because sometimes it just pops in my head randomly. I'll just walk down the hallway with a big stool. I have type 2 diabetes, but I manage it well. It's a little pill with a big story to tell. Thank you, Stephanie. Kill me. Uh, and by the way, we so we found the commercial Humira. This is it. And, yeah. And yes, did you see them? The uh-huh. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 well, she is hot though. Yeah. And she's smoking hot. She looks a little bit like uh, Olivia Rodrigo. A little bit. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! That's the worst song... goddamn show I ever saw. Yeah, this next song is called. Ah! <laughs> Hang on, I have Glenn. Hi, Glenn. You're on the air. Good morning. Gadzooks. Gadzooks, buddy. What's up? I don't appreciate you playing that song because <laughs> all I'm doing is dancing around in my uh, I have type 2 diabetes, oh! but I manage it well. It's a little pill with a big story to tell. Yeah. Dance around the shop, yeah, huh, Glenn? That's it, brother. Dancing right. around the shop. All right, thanks, man. <laughs> I'm gonna make an edit here so we can get we don't we don't need the intro. No, of the song. We, Case, it's very Broadway esque. That's why that's why we like it. That's Probably why. why. Right, yeah. Is this when it gets to yeah. the meet? But it's very meta because you think you're watching an actual musical number where that's her life, and then the camera pulls back and you see there's the whole crew there. So you're it's it was a it's, lie. It's a melon twister. I change the goddamn channel and throw the remote of the TV every time it comes on. This is why my friend's father-in-law, even at his own house, will take the remote control, <laughs> and every time the TV goes to commercial, he mutes it. Am I the only one in this room who, who mutes commercials? I, I um, yeah. yeah, Nick. I'll tell I, you what I do. One one that I will jump on uh, whenever the uh, ASPCA or the you know, some Chihuahua with rickets, yeah. and I'm like, 
no, no. I, I do enough animal work. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a pass on this one. You know, right. and I, I, I can't take it. I just do it with every commercial, and uh, I watch a lot of sports on the NBC Sports app, and they will air these same commercials every break. So there's that Monopoly one where the lady's going, um, you know, she ends up in the house at the end of the commercial, yeah. and uh, and there's. Um, I hear Will Arnett's voice every time because he does, he voices the GMT trucks commercials. Yeah. Nick, this might change your mind and you might uh, might not mute anymore. But I don't mute the commercials because commercials are what pay for my TV. Oh, that's what pay for that house. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I listen to the radio commercials. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're terrific. Honestly, they're the best. I, I mean, honestly, it's not yeah. even in the same yeah, ballpark. That's some real entertainment. Creative. You should listen to all of them, especially and the way we do them. Probably. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to read some of the text coming in in order of uh, of the, the comments on this particular commercial. Uh, this says, uh, let's see, my wife uh, dances to that song in the car. Uh, <laughs> worst commercial on television. Um, I agree with Nick. It's annoying as hell. Uh, I love that commercial. She has done other work on TV. Oh, I have to get her other commercials. Uh, let's see. Someone should tell that. Oh, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> what? Wait, what oh, say? What it's so say? mean. Someone should tell that fat bitch on the commercial to drop 70 pounds and she won't have diabetes. <laughs> wow. I didn't want to read that. Signed, yeah. Dr. Johannes. By yeah. the way, is why I was very reluctant on saying why I'm on Ozempic because people are like They're that. They're so sweet. Oh, screw mm-hmm. those people. So yeah. nice. People suck. <laughs> Uh, the chick on the Jardins commercial was on American Idol or one of those shows. Oh, huh. get out. How do you wow. say that? Jardins? Jardins. Jardins. I'm sorry. Uh, this says, I love the Broadway show type commercials. Uh, there's none of the lady on the Jardins commercial is on TikTok. Her name is uh, Deanna Bomchika, Casey. Okay. Bomchika. Chica Bomb. D E A N N A and then Bomb, B O M B. Chica. Bomb Chica. Uh, this one says Casey's dead wrong, but it's awful. Worst commercial ever. <laughs> Nick, it's awful. They look like uh, bouncing uh, bouncing beach balls. Uh, bring back the Education Connection song. I don't know. Ooh, what's that? Uh, this one says, I hate you guys. <laughs> uh, uh, this says, I'm with you, Nick. I hate it. Hate every commercial with dancing in it. Wait, look at this. <laughs> look at look at her inspirational Instagram. It says, I need a room full of mirrors so I can be surrounded by winners. Nice. Me, fat, I'm a ribeye with a good marbling, multi-hyphenated talent. Okay. I do like ribeye. I do, too. Yeah. You're in uh, now on the commercial? <laughs> yeah. Hey! She wrote me back to you. Watch. <laughs> Nick, Nick will be dancing by the end of the break. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's not get carried away, Steve. Uh, My name is Nick, and I'm happy to say I'm going to have a ribeye steak today. <laughs> When it's marbled, it tastes so, so good. Uh, a lot of people, it's, it's back and forth. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. You, there, there is no in-between here. It's no, either right. you love it or right. you hate it. Nations have fallen over. Uh-huh. I don't know it well enough to love it or hate it yet, so... Yeah. Do you, you, you... It's very Rush-like. <laughs> the Holy Triumvirate? No, yeah, 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 I'm hearing it. Yeah, I'm hearing Livia Strangiato <laughs> in there somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so people are back and forth on this. But that's the beauty of life. Yeah. Well, so it makes things interesting. But it's a it's a diabetes drug. Yeah. I have no idea if it has the, the weight loss uh capabilities that uh, Ozempic and Wagovi and by Do the they, way, if I were to use one of these, I would lo- I would want to use Manjaro. Just yeah. to say so you can just say so that. Just so I can say that. It sounds like Marron Glage. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Marron like, Glace. You're at a fine Italian restaurant. How's your Manjaro? <laughs> Manjaro. What was that? It was not that, it was this. Oh. Manjaro. <laughs> He's on the high end weight loss drug. Yeah. Yes. Yes. If I'm going to be on a weight Comes loss drug. Comes out like an 11 case. I want it to have some Yo, class. Yo, Manjaro? Oh, I would never take a sample. Uh, on Manjaro. Should I expect anything? Oh, yes. Your a bunghole will fall out of your ass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, anyhow, uh, just uh, some interesting things about your ass. What was I, the ass master? The ass, oh, yeah. yeah. The ass master. Yeah. Yeah. Preston Elliott, ass master. Now that I have a new category, I will look for more subject. I will look for more <laughs> stories to fit into the category. Sales. To find a, a colorectal doctor. Who we will just sponsor had it. a conversation the other day about Absolutely. looking for new advertisers, and there you go. I personally, it's distracting when I walk in in the morning. Have to have to negotiate to other colorectal doctors who are looking for advertising. Mm. I guess Dr. Mike would be my ass man. Yeah, he's the only one that goes up in there. Yeah, all up yeah. in that. All up in that stuff. I told him he needed to lighten up on the dismount next time. <laughs> <laughs> was it too much? Was there, no, was there an audible pop? Uh, yes. 
Like, did your cheeks on suck the in? Dismount. I mean, he came right out. I was oh. like, yeah, just a little bit slower. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this: you guys have been seeing each other long enough where I think he feels entitled. <laughs> Worst rectal exam I ever had was from a female doctor, dude. I think she was. I think it was spiteful. There was a lot of anger. I, I think. I think oh. somebody she tricked was, her into something one day, and she didn't like it, and she took it out on me. <laughs> Yeah, she, uh, you pissed her off. She had a, I, th I think she was wearing a Super Bowl ring while she was doing it. To yeah. be honest, that's what I thought. You know what she was thinking about? She was thinking about her going wrong hole. I went to a gynecologist once, and I walked in, and she—it was the first time I was seeing her. And she shook my hand. It was like a man handshake, and she had man hands. And I was like, I went to her one time, and I, she was very nice and very sweet. But I was like, I can, I can't wow. go back. Not tender I'm sorry. Enough. No, yeah. no, it was like, yeah. It was rough. I got you. All right, well, anyhow. Uh, Your knuckles look like lug nuts. We got to take a break. <laughs> I ran out uh, crying. We are going to come back in a moment or two. And, uh, yeah, we're going to talk birds, games tonight, yes. do or die. Pat Gallon, CBS3, is going to be in here this morning to give his take on the whole thing. We need an expert, of course. So we'll come back in a moment with Pat and more. Stay with us the time throughout the day but you oh. know what like you're busy steve i you know i know somebody nick who can probably come over to your place uh who i think is in between gigs right now gary <laughs> La gary lauer uh is not doing anything right now his house cool. is closed. you know what honestly you yeah. don't even need you don't even need uh the echo just have gary hands so yeah. <laughs> it's pretty hot out there <laughs> just have your own gary. Hey, i'll turn it on for you like lights on <laughs> all right hey gary lights on <laughs> all right one second <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Gary, should I wear a sweater outside? I'll be right back. <laughs> it's pretty chilly. Lauer. Lauer. Hey, yeah, Lauer. That's what Lauer. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Lauer. Yeah, hey, Lauer. Because yeah. uh, yeah. Gary would be too common. Hey, yeah. hey Lauer, play yeah. Allman Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Lauer, switch to Skinner. Hey, Lauer. Uh, yes? yes. <laughs> switch to uh, Killers. Somebody told me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, Lauer, play MMR. Well, don't you have to kind of have like a, a like a bing bong prompt? Yeah. You know. <laughs> hey, Lauer. That's working. Play Summer Breeze by Seals and Croft. Summer Breeze. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, Lantern Entertainment and the Weinstein Company have come to terms on two major sticking points in their deal, a price and a close date. So, they agreed on a final purchase of $21 million and expect to close on July 13th. A bankruptcy court hearing is scheduled for July 11th, and Lantern also agreed to make numerous payments to creditors to avoid a lengthy court battle. All right, so and they're deadline. obviously going to not use the name Weinstein, right? Oh, no, yeah, they're not. I don't think they're going to do that. Charles uh, Manson Productions. <laughs> so they're going to... They figure it has a better reputation. Uh, hell yes. <laughs> uh, so they're, they're getting closer to... Uh, and then you can have Manson instead of the MGM Lion. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it's just his face in that circle logo. Right. I love it. This is one of these... Meetings in with the town where people can get up and speak their mind. And this uh, young man got up and he had a take on legalizing prostitution. So I propose this. The city allows for licensed masseurs to give genital massages if the masseur and the client both agree to it. We let someone get naked and have every other part of their body touched and rubbed by a massage therapist. Hell, we let proctologists spend their day f men and sticking things so if someone wants to yank a guy's crank, I say let him. <laughs> oh, my God. That really is as inspiring as FDR's <sighs> speech on uh, December 8th, 1941. I love the last part of that. Hang on. <laughs> so if someone wants to yank a guy's crank, I say let him. I say, I say, I say let him. If someone wants to <laughs> yank a man's crank, I say let them do it. Oh, okay. Um, uh, and so by this, this time... Legit? <laughs> well, yeah. le it, maybe. I, you know what? I don't care. But it, he yeah. was definitely in front of this group. He was prepared. 
great he seemed. And then he goes on. He, you know, it's not just enough to state that's your intent or what you'd like to see happen. Yeah. You have to provide. You got to back uh, it up. Uh, yeah. Was, uh, examples. Yeah. Some context. Some context to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here's clip two. Picture this. A big old sweaty fat guy <laughs> would oh, get with your hand actually be that much worse than giving him a full body massage, getting up in there under the folds of fat, or being the proctologist sticking your finger. Holy hell. If a grown adult wants a, a job, another grown adult, and another grown adult is willing to give one for money, then let them. That would truly be a happy ending for everyone. Yeah. Okay. This- oh, oh, my God. The crowd loved it. There is, I think, legitimacy to his claim, by the way. Uh, are we going there or are we not going there? I just, uh, I want to hear. What do you think? I like the way you ca- <laughs> Casey started doing a like, left- a, a, like a, a velociraptor. All the- his, his head was all going right, left- right oh, there. Oh, oh. Are we going here? Well, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. dude, why is that illegal? <laughs> Rubbing tugs? Yeah. Um... There is that. This is an age-old question about the uh, the. In fact, right before the uh, Magna Carta was uh, came into being, Carter. there was the rub and tug. I mean, there is a separation of church and state, right? So, is morality a church thing? Wow, this got a lot deeper. Yeah, than yeah, I thought, uh, I really we were simply playing a goofball, yeah, Lisa, but yeah. uh, you want to work out whether prostitution or the sex trade should be legitimized. Well, maybe we should put them in malls. And Let's talk about everybody. abortion. Yeah. Let's light things up a bit. <laughs> How do we want to proceed into the next thing that we're going to well, do? Well, um, I think um, we should. Where did Bill go? Oh, Bill, could He's I right trouble there. you to come over here? I got to ask your opinion on the air about something. Uh, if you <laughs> Bill Weston, man, about that. Oh, yeah, 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 he just go. goes, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, yes, well, um, the real reason we have rused you into this studio is to um, offer you our thanks and congratulations. And allow me to read the words of Kevin Gunn, if I may uh, so uh, attempt. You certainly may, sir. So, we call him the man about town. We kid him about his kitchen cleaning, dashing wardrobe, and how he presides over meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. (laughs) He's always open to ideas, but he often reminds us that, quote, this is not a democracy. <laughs> Probably a good thing, too. Can you imagine if the Preston and Steve show, me, Jackie Bam Bam, Jackson, Brent, and the rest of the MMR staff were left unchecked to their own devices? Or if there was no one to say, let's think this through. Or have you considered what might happen if? Or <laughs> the building might not go for that. <laughs> <laughs> or... Are you out of your freaking minds? <laughs> you want to do what? <clears throat> but there it is. Bill Weston, the adult in the room. He is our leader through a business that is open 24-7, 365 days a year. He has to deal with the creative types, the executives, the sales staff, the accountants, the consultants, the concert promoters, the bands, their managers, countless live events, listener comments, office demolition and construction, and it is quite a job. He does all of this with a measured demeanor, self-effacing sense of humor, and a wealth of experience and wisdom. This year, he has also taken up the additional task of overseeing MMR's 50th anniversary celebration and has done so, might I say, with limitless energy and incredible savvy. So, in addition to being the man about town, Bill Weston is also the man about music, the man about programming, the man about administration, the man about meetings, the man about sometimes saying no. In short, the man who's all about this radio station. And that is why, and probably to his chagrin, we, his staff, award him the well-earned and long-overdue recognition as the Rock of MMR. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's um, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> and uh, yes to my chagrin. <laughs> because this was something that we came up with to 
um, award to or recognize people that don't get recognition. The unsung. Yeah, this happens yes. just a couple of times a year this award is handed out. Right. Mm. So, it is a giant rock on a platform, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's got the MMR logo, and, and then it's got little spaces for uh, whoever might be the rock uh, at any given time. Yeah, like the Stanley Cup, the names are added to the rock. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, and now we, we add Bill's name to yeah. that. That's... Uh... I'm touched, <laughs> and I uh, I really appreciate uh, the sentiments expressed in your uh, in your uh, missive. Did, who wrote that? Kevin, Kevin wrote yes, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My yeah. presentation, but entirely Kevin, who is uh, a genius and brilliant and one of our great ones. Mm-hmm. He wrote the words. Yes, my my reward it. is I get to work with really talented people who are in much better positions to act. Um, <laughs> stupid. Freely. And, uh, <laughs> freely. <laughs> well, the idea, the, the, the words that Kevin put in there, you want to do what? And which yeah. mostly applies to you guys. Yes. You want to light a refrigerator on fire in the right. parking lot and then <laughs> add seven cars to the mix and see if we can cause a giant uh, mechanical explosion? Uh, yes. Yeah. That's I mean, consider too. what we have done in the last 15 years. Uh, to just imagine what he has said no to. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, and then but I mean then tolerating a, a you know a pony coming in. Yes. Uh, well, Gabby. he didn't know about that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never. <laughs> Some things you beg to yeah. You yeah. just don't. You don't apprise him up. Okay. I uh, I thank you uh, very very much. That's. Um, like I said, my reward, I, I was just uh, came back from a long motorcycle trip out in California. I right. actually went through Penaluma Pier. And uh, I was telling these guys that I was hanging with, just regular guys, you know, retired cops and plumbers and whatever. I said, you know, I still love my job. You know, I am blessed to be able to work at WMMR with people yeah. who, who care. And actually, their, their first response to something that needs to be done isn't, uh, is, that's not my job. It's to, how can I help? Right. You know, and it's that kind of atmosphere that we have and we involve our listener because they're an integral part of that radio station. It's like it's a great thing. So this is uh, this is very cool. I, uh, I appreciate uh, whoever took the initiative. A complete surprise, on, would you yeah. say? Yeah. 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 No, I had no idea. I was yeah. over in engineering looking at floor plans. And like, <laughs> Chuck says, we need you in the studio. I said, oh, they need more time off. What are they going to ask for more vacation time? <laughs> Preston's complaining about too many live reads. I'm like, oh, my God, what is it? <laughs> but the thing is, every one of us has worked for insane program directors at various times and and you know and I, i think the nature of the job drives people over the edge and for some reason it has not done so with you. You've retained this balance uh, that even if you're pissed at us, you can you can you you present it in in a, a nice way, and you don't call someone while they're on the air and say you should never have done that. You you wait until they're off, and then you take them in and have them strapped down. And um, but um, you, you you truly you you have this balance and this this calmness that is in a frantic group of madmen and women that we are you really are a father figure that uh, that you know doles out a lollipop when needed and uh, sends you to your room when needed but <laughs> but does so in this balanced calm yep. and reasonable and nice fashion thank you for saying um, that Pierre. there's like, really something extraordinary about it they, they say in teacher you know you sometimes you teach what you cannot do right you guys do something that i wish i could do i started out as a disc jockey and was pretty mediocre at it you know so i respect uh, and appreciate what everybody does and the talents in this room on air and also in our programming and promotions department i really I appreciate that, and uh, you get a parking spot now too. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. It comes with a parking well, spot. Wow. And one other thing, he's worked <laughs> so hard on this 50th anniversary. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. you know he's pulled out. He's found archive selections I didn't even know we had, and I've been here for a long time. I mean, he found America singing a horse with no name. You know, he found. We had to steal that back from the guy who stole the tapes from us. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, he's found so many cool things, and and you know, gotten you know really worked the the Foo Fighters thing and the Bon Jovi thing for these special 50th parties that we've had and you too and all these other things and he's just on this 50th alone he's really and the, the fact that so he much. forged on even after learning that it's the 49th right year. Yeah. right yeah uh, counter that. yeah I mean almost single-handedly ruined the uh, Bon Jovi concert I mean I don't know anybody else that could do that that yep. gave us a great story, though, for on air. Mm-hmm. If you That's hadn't great, yeah. heard, um, we did a group photo uh, right before the band took the stage, and they all have in-ear monitors and these little what look like um, Walkman kind of thing uh, attached pack. to them, power pack. I was and wearing this jacket, by the way, and it, it got hooked on the button on my coat, and it yanked it out of his ears, and he gave me the dirtiest look.
They are I, seconds. <laughs> I mean, he's in. What he's Bill's in, fault? No. no, it was nobody's fault. <laughs> But they were like second, they were running on the stage and they stopped to do a group photo. And then in one of those bizarre spinal tap, truly moments, yeah. uh, John's wire that goes from his ear to this little backpack that uh, they all have in their pockets caught on Bill's coat. Well, that's what you button. get for wearing a blazer to a rock concert. I know. <laughs> it really wasn't my fault. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Thank you all. I really uh, appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, Pierre. The Weston. The rock of MMR yes. and Man About Town. He is the S. Yep. MMR. Thank you very much, Kath. It's do or die time tonight. Birds, man, that's it. Yeah. This is yeah. Uh, this decides the fate right here of the season. And uh, so we figured we better get somebody who knows what they're talking about here in our studio. And we had to have somebody who is, you know, a champion or close to a champion at heart. At least a third place champion, finish. Champion adjacent. Yeah. yeah. Mini Hoops Madness at the Camp Out for Hunger this year. Please welcome from CBS3, Mr. Pat Gallatin. Yeah. Yeah. Today. So, oh, wait a minute. Case, yeah, I didn't know you hit the button. Fault. That's my fault. Whatever. All right. We're well, good. we were going to play this great Eagles song, but I'm surprised you guys invited me back after yeah. that performance. <laughs> How about honest. that? That was terrible. Yeah. I still, I'm not gonna lie. I think about that often. And we have, a, we have a, actually have a. Can I call it a Papa shot in here? Uh, here you can. Here yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We have yeah. a. We have like an actual Papa shot in our office. Yeah. That has the small basketballs, not the full size ones that we used. Right. At the camp out for hunger, and so that's my excuse. I'm well, just gonna. Was, I'm gonna. Go you were that. trained a different way. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It, it's it's like uh, you know that if you look cross, it depends on which way you play. And well, I yeah. embarrassed myself in front of my parents too oh, that's right and you didn't my mom nice will not let me live that down <laughs> You're not, really oh, You're not she's listening fan. right now she's a huge fan yeah she actually this is how weird our family is she asked if i could do a shout out for her yes! oh, so diana gallon here's a shout out for you all right <laughs> so, let me see if hang on we, we got it, it. sorry i know i'm putting you on the spot nah, there. Nah, nah, here we go that's, there you go that's to my mom. mother yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, Pat and I were chatting yesterday about him coming in today and, you know, going over some of the Eagles stuff and the Cowboys game and whatever. And, Pat, what was the thing that said Preston, the first thing Preston's going to say to you when you get here is? Yeah. Pop a shot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was ready for it. Well, I was ready to talk about it. You need to get rid of those demons. Yeah, but well, this, as in sports, is, is always room for a great comeback story. Mm -hmm. And this could next next year, depending on how everything's go. Uh, are, are we looking at a comeback story? Counting here? down the days. Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> I need to. I need to. Well, it was a turbulent weekend in the NFL. A lot of interesting yeah. things happened yesterday. And, uh, you know, here we go with uh, this evening coming upon us. Yeah, Eagles tonight. Uh, I know of a lot of people, if whatever happens with the Eagles, at least the Cowboys got blown out last night. Dude, so yes. everyone's excited about that. I, and I, I said I, it almost doesn't even make what <laughs> happens tonight matter, like it, watching that sure. happen yesterday, I, which is not true. I obviously don't right. want the Eagles to win. But um, but if I could have two teams eliminated from the playoffs just to kind of ease my my uh, my heavy heart, it would. <laughs> the Cowboys are already gone, and I need to see the 49ers go. And I hate the 49ers so much because they lost with such – um, indignity last yeah. year. Uh, sore losers, for sure. Sore, sore losers. And still, like, to, to this day, they keep talking and talking and talking smack, so I'd love to see them go down. And that kid from Green Bay last night looked amazing. Jordan Love, mm -hmm. man, he looks good. And it was... We, there were a lot of cheers happening in the CBS3 newsroom <laughs> last night. CBS Philadelphia newsroom. Yeah. Well, Pat, I want to ask you about, you know, sort of the vibe going into this Eagles game because it's just so odd, right? Like, yeah. you know, the first 11 weeks of the season are 10-1, and 1, and um, it, it, it just felt like an entirely different atmosphere in Philadelphia. And then tonight, I, you know, I know people are going to watch, but nobody that I've spoken to even seems remotely excited about mm -hmm. it. You know, like it's it's definitely almost, tempered expectations. Yeah, right now. way tempered and just like not not hyped up, not ready to rock, you know, not going to have parties tonight or anything. And they're like, all right, it's on. If they win, cool. But if not, well, I expected a loss anyway. Is that the vibe you're picking up on? Absolutely, yeah. And, and I said this like right after the game that I thought it was a good idea that they ended up on the road because of the way they finished the year. And if things had gone a little bit better at the end of the year, you have a home game, you're the two seed, okay, the vibes are different. But it's a good thing. They get out of Philadelphia. They can kind of calm themselves, maybe come back together, gel, whatever you want to say. You get a win here. Who knows what happens? Yeah. And with, uh, you know, you're going to Detroit. So that's a team that you can beat next week if you can get past Tampa. Yeah, I am. Um, so, we, you know, everybody's talking about the six game collapse mm -hmm. at the end of the season. But, you know, the reality is, is the 11 games before that weren't that great either. No. Even though we ended up 10 and one, I say we like I'm like <laughs> snapping a ball to Hertz. But, hey, you're um, a good court. You're a good quarterback. <laughs> yeah, 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 you are my, my quarterback right forever. There. He and I oh, played in the, a 
uh, the, the NRG media game. NRG flag. media game. Yeah. 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 I, uh, by the way, won MVP. You did. <laughs> Thanks to you, though. Yeah. Ah, there, there, there we go. Threading the needle. That's all I do. Yeah, you know, I can't catch it for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you make the plays. No got to give it. You to make them. the plays. But uh, yeah. So so the previous 11 games left a lot to be desired. Yeah. I thought. Um, you know, and everybody's like, oh well, you know. I think maybe there were two, com like, commanding games in, of those 11. Like, one would be that Dolphins game, yep. and then the other would be the Bucks game. Yeah, absolutely. And those are the only two good games of those 10 wins that, that this team had prior to the collapse. Do you, do you think, because I remember throughout that case, and uh, the they themselves, the team, was uh, always sort of metering and mitigating the wins, like... No, they weren't. They, they were going, hey, you know, uh, make the main thing the main thing, the main right. thing the main thing the main thing. Okay, so yes, the W at the end of the day is the most important thing. Right. But can we can we can we please discuss all the stuff, all the other issues, all, all yeah. the meat that you're leaving on the bone? No doubt. Yeah, and I think when you look back to last year, just how amazing it was from start to finish, you can't help but do that in 2023. Look back at 2022 and say, why aren't we doing the things that we did last year? Okay, it's a new year. You're right. They went 10 and one, but the cracks were starting to show really early last year they were blowing teams out every week they would have a huge lead by halftime or the third quarter yeah this year was a lot different they had to grind through these games and then when you got to that buffalo game that was basically the end of the road 10 and yeah. one yeah but they had to kick a 59 yard field goal jake elliott in the rain just to get by in overtime and then the 49ers game happens and so yeah i think throughout the the early part of the season those cracks were, were starting to show, and then the 49ers hit and the Cowboys hit, and that tough schedule hit, and it was just like, boom, that's it. I like Nick Sirianni as a person, right? And yeah. I feel like if he probably coached another NFL team, I wouldn't like him very much, but there's a certain... Um, you like him when he's yours. Yeah, I, yeah. I, like, the, I like his bravado yeah. and, and all that, but, but I will say, um, after that game against the Giants, um, I, I, um, I have lost complete and total confidence <laughs> in him, and, and I just... I want a little bit more transparency. What I didn't like that he said, mm -hmm. and that a lot of people are saying that th that they liked that he said it, uh, is he, he said um, that he stood by his decision to start the starters. And okay. I want him to just one time say, "I stand my but I stand by my decision, right. but it was the wrong choice." I, I there it was um, a lot of people were split in this city on whether or not to play their starters and I said absolutely positively do not play your starters. Interesting. Not at that stadium that's claimed how many knees yeah, that's a of, tough of how the many turf there is not great. The turf there is terrible. The game was meaningless and and I don't care what the score was at the Cowboys Commanders game at halftime. I don't care. Cowboys were not going to lose that game. Interesting that you think that because I heard a lot of people say it's crazy that they're going to play the starters. They shouldn't do it for all those reasons. The turf sucks up there. Mhm. Mm but think of it in terms of Jeffrey Lurie. Yeah. You're going to fight for a home playoff game, and Jeffrey Lurie is going to make you do that because you bring in all that, yes. that money, right? Right. Being on the road, Who's the link's not is open. Is that Lurie or is well, that Sirianni? And I still think it's Sirianni, too, because you still had – it was a small chance, but you had a shot at a home playoff game and the number two seed setting yourself up better for the rest of the playoffs if Dallas had lost – to Washington. And big also, if, big if. Also, I, I'm I'm not a fan of the NFL. I think they're they're um, diabolical, and don't fact, hold back. And, and well, no, they are. They they yeah. they don't care about the players. They don't care about the fans. They just care about themselves and the and and their bottom line. And the fact that they scheduled the Eagles and the Cowboys games to play at the same exact time. It was crappy, um, yeah. you know, and so I think you, you start one at one. They and want one to keep the eyeballs on the product. That's I, what they do. I know, I know. But um, but I do, I blame the NFL and I blame Nick Sirianni <laughs> for A.J. Brown's finger. I mean, A.J. Brown's it's knee and, and, uh, and Jalen Hurts' finger. I, Understandable to, to, to feel that way. I thought they should have played. They needed to generate some sort of positivity, even though that place can be a house of horrors. Uh, it didn't work out. But I think when you still have, I think they had something like a 20% chance at that number two seed if you even have a three percent chance no coach is going to sit everyone mm -mm. when there is a possibility of that happening didn't happen here we are just yeah. a quick question yeah so concerning you talk about the nfl and obviously they're doing things and placing things uh the, the revenue is always the, the main consideration the, sure. the guys were talking i didn't realize i was watching a playback yesterday <laughs> of the game. and and i'm um, like ah, oh. but um the the uh, st stadiums that can you know close off the top yeah, open there I assume the NFL puts a lot of uh, exertion and pressure on trying to convert as many stadiums that are uh, uh, weather, you know, uh, impacted. Sure. 
to a place where they where they can not be because there's that's revenue and then right. and schedules get switched around. Uh, it, it, do you think that uh, they were indicating the Buffalo, that there's yeah, yeah they, a very emphatic push for that, and yet there's so many people who are resilient and want just the pure nature of the the stadium. Do you think ultimately they will m all stadiums will convert to that capability? I think they're trying. It's super expensive, and Buffalo is a really small market. So for a team like that, maybe. The taxpayer money isn't right. there like we're being larger from. cities because yeah, yeah. a lot of that comes from from that place. And, and also, I, I I read this. I don't know if it's one hundred percent true. I read it on the internet. Yeah. But in uh, when you have a domed stadium in a place like Buffalo, I guess the insurance money would be exorbitant to have a dome because of all the snow, snow that oh. falls. Oh, wow. Didn't even think about every that. every winter. So yeah. there is the possibility of a, a of a collapse. So oh, that, that plays a role in it. You just heat the heat the That's all. Yeah. Yeah. A little heater up there. Yeah. It was it was interesting to watch the highlights of you know what happened in Kansas City on Saturday night. Uh, I you know I can't imagine uh, being at a game like that where it's you know quite <laughs> literally cold. thirty degrees below zero with a wind chill factor. And we were talking last night about you know people were taking uh, bottles of water out of a cooler and they would the freeze. cooler was keeping it warm. Yes, the cooler was keeping <laughs> it warm. Yeah, I mean. You know, Andy Reid's mustache had icicles on it. Had some other stuff in there, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> what have, um, speaking of weather, what have you heard about Buffalo? Because I, I, I was getting some messages like it's, it's they, a great they, town. I, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I meant the stadium. Like, because their game I think is scheduled for 4:30 today, and they yeah. got so much damn snow yesterday. Well, you, did you see the uh, video of yeah. them having people come out, shovel? They were having fun in the stands. Okay. Yeah. Sli yeah. There's some dude in, in just yeah. shorts sliding down, sliding down yeah. onto the, the Eagles field. did that um, years ago when they were yeah. playing the Falcons. Yeah, uh, and the ago. NFC Championship game needed uh, some help with with shovelers. They were paying twenty bucks an hour in Buffalo. They had a bunch of people come out, have some fun, gave them drinks, food. If oh, I yeah. if I could save the life of an ill loved one by attending a game like that, and those, <laughs> I would not do it. <laughs> I, I, there's just there's just no way. And I'm always blown away too by okay. You you want to stand out there for a couple of hours? Be my guest. But the players on the field that are wearing t-shirts, yeah, yeah, uh, like yeah, yeah. Sh short sleeves. <laughs> I, that's a, that's I, another yeah. level that I can't get to. So I'm nope. watching the game with my son, and Tyreek Hill is sitting there, uh, you know, just no no undershirt, just, you know, the skin and, yep. uh, and that hor horrible. And I'm like, why is he not? And he's like, he's like, Dad, you haven't played sports in a while. He's like, yeah. and he's trying to, like, school because he plays <laughs> yeah, rugby. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, have you played rugby in negative seven degrees? A little bit So you're going to tell me? And I always love the guys yeah. that come out pregame with no shirt on at all. Uh -huh. <laughs> Negative seven degrees. Uh, yeah. No, not for me. Not for me. Listen, if you can do it, I'm that's, very frail. That's, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's your God. hook, right? Yeah. I'm frail. I'm frail. <laughs> and I have a lot more meat on the bones than you do. And I still, even at like 40 degrees, I'm like, oh, oh my God. God. Listen, I get to chill. I understand if you're yeah. active and you're running around, you're going to generate some body heat. Not enough to compensate for that. Mm -mm. What's, it, what's your favorite stadium that you've been able to visit outside of Philadelphia? Uh,. Football stadium? Yeah. Well, let's see. Washington, dump. New York, not that great. Detroit, actually. I went there uh, at the beginning of last year, and you if you watched last night's game, you saw how loud these fans yeah. were. They haven't won a playoff game in 32 years. That place is like, the way it's built, really cool, has like an indoor brick facade. It actually it doesn't traps. look that big. It, it, um, it's it's, big, it's bigger it, than, okay. it, than it looks, and it gets really, really loud in there, the way that it's built. So Detroit, underrated. And the downtown, they're like revitalizing. So maybe I'll be there next week. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> with, uh, with MetLife, it's a relatively newer stadium. Yeah. But um, players complain about it. Fans complain about it. Why, you know, it was a billion dollars or whatever. Why is it such a crappy place? It's almost like, you know, they built in the 70s, 60s and 70s, like the Vet and Three Rivers Stadium where these just concrete holes. It's almost like a new age concrete hole. And I think they kind of build it without personality because you've got two teams mm. splitting. Mm -hmm. Like you got green everywhere at the link because you know whose team it is. There. Right, you right. Got the Jets and the Giants sharing it. It's just so devoid of any personality there. It's oh, and, schizophrenic. And, yeah, and it, it's just a big concrete bowl. There's no personality. It's kind of... Kind of gross. That's what I mean. <laughs> it's not as gross as Washington, though. FedEx <laughs> right. Field is by far the worst stadium really? that I've ever been to. And it's oh my new. goodness, that place. I mean, new ish. New ish. I actually heard that back in the late nineties, their previous owner, Jack Kent Cook, was he was like on his deathbed and they wanted him to see the finished product of the stadium before he passed away. And so they rushed it, finished it. It's horrible. Okay. And his, and now, his dying words were, it's horrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Why now, did you do that? So that's why it's like that. And now Josh Harris is one of the Josh Harris, owners. Sixers yeah, owner, yeah. And, um, yeah, so Preston, he's one of the owners of the Sixers and he also the Devils too, the right? The Devils, yeah. Um, what have you heard um, about a potential arena in Center City for the Sixers? Because it seems like there's a bunch of back and forth on it and, and it, 
if I'm a betting man, I don't think that it gets done, but, you know, there's a lot of money to be made either way. Seems like a coin flip still at, yeah. at this point, but you've got the, the Flyers who obviously don't want to lose their tenant. They've put all this money into the new Wells Fargo Center. Uh, they're going to try to keep them there, and the Sixers, they, they want to branch out on their own, have an NBA-only arena, which a lot of teams around the league are, are implementing. So I get it from both sides. Um, I... I would like to see i guess an arena in in downtown hopefully revitalizing that that area right there but then again it's nice and easy to get down to the stadiums where mm -hmm. you got everything uh, all in one place too so and, and people say well you have mass transit uh, no i think people want to have their cars as, yeah you know, some level it is as now obviously when yeah. stuff is going on down there it's a friggin nightmare but it's for me mm -hmm. it seems less a daunting notion than going into the city. You know? A lot of logistics I, I, yeah, in yeah. building one right in the middle of town. Yeah. How much time do you spend at the Wells Fargo Center? Uh, not as much now as I used to. Well, now it's football season. So yeah. once football season's over, I get back into Sixers, Flyers. Been there quite a bit. Because that's so. where we got our Papa Shot machine. So mm. you might want to spend a little more time. Yeah. Yeah. Is it there? Is yeah. it still there? It's there. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Go search it out. If you're just tuning in, it's Pat Gallen <laughs> from uh, CBS3 uh, who's uh, chatting, you know, football with us, obviously. So uh, we haven't even talked about tonight. And, yeah. yeah. And, oh, yeah. Well, was a game. The way, yeah, <laughs> there's a game, but but how you feel going into this personally from your expert, uh, you know, position? I feel like the rest of us, like it could be a 30 point loss, it could be a 30 point win, like depending on which Eagles team mm. shows up. We know which team hasn't shown up in the last six weeks, uh, <laughs> it, it, a good one. So hopefully they can turn it around. That's why I said I think it's important that they were able to go out on the road and kind of leave behind all the chatter here in Philadelphia and they can wrap their heads around what they have to do here in Tampa. It's a little bit warmer down there. Maybe that helps a little bit. Um, I, I still think that they find a way to squeak this one out, even though their best receiver, A.J. Brown, is out. That's a huge, huge yeah. loss what for them. What is wrong with him? I, I don't even know. It's a knee injury. They've been very vague about it. He hasn't spoken. Uh, and so they're trying to keep it under wraps. The, the thought is that if they get past this round, that there's a possibility they could play in the next round, but that doesn't help them for, for right now. So that's a, that's a key loss. Mm. I'm going to send a little get well music out to AJ. Here we go. Right. Yeah. Casey loves this. Uh, oh, song I heard for this commercial. It's so, so peppy. Mm. It will will that help it, with knee injuries? Uh, <laughs> no? It'll, it'll help lower guys. A1C. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Blood sugar. Maybe yeah. that's something they haven't. That it's a novel approach. They well, haven't thought about lowering uh, his A1C. Side state. effects of knee injuries may include mm -hmm. diabetes. Yeah. How many times does that commercial air tonight? <laughs> oh my. What's the over under? Uh, I'll say like one and a half. One, I was going to say three. <laughs> oh. It feels like it's once a quarter, doesn't it? Like, it's, <laughs> are they uh, are they it's favorites tonight? I mean, they are. Yeah, two and a half point favorites. So Vegas is telling you they think that the Eagles they're clearly the more talented team than Tampa. Right, but I don't know. everything's up for grabs. It totally is, considering yeah. how they've been playing. Yeah, what scares sure. you the most in, about tonight's game? Um, is it Mike Evans and Chris Godwin? Actually, or? Yeah, they're, they're really good. Mike Evans, um, Tampa Bay receiver, who is now going on a decade of 1,000 yards every single season. The dude's a machine. Uh, yeah, because on the Eagles defense, they get Darius Slayback, who's their best cornerback. He's coming off knee surgery. He's 33 years old. He's an old, you know, like an old man at 33 yeah. years old in the NFL. But uh, you start to lose the speed as you get a little bit older. So he's 33, had knee surgery just a couple of weeks ago. Really hard to do that in season, come back from that. But Jalen Hurts dislocated his finger a week ago. Yeah. And he's going to try and throw a ball. It might be wet a little bit in Tampa. There might be some rain showers. How is he going to be able to grip a football? I think that's a that's a huge question, too. Mm. Lots of questions. What yeah. do you think, Case? Yeah, uh, Case. Uh, yeah, well, quarterback. I, here's what I think. I think the Cowboys got smoked <laughs> yesterday, and uh, and I'm happy about that. And then so I have um, uh, I have actually not fully, but uh, I've um, uh, partially emotionally. Uh, you've detached? made you've made detached, peace. Detached myself right. from this team. Okay. All right. And and it's not just because it's also because of what happened with the Sixers. At the end of the season, last season, and the end of the season, and then the Super Bowl, and I and the Phils and the Union, and and there's just been a lot of heartache over the last couple of years, yeah. and I have allowed that too many times to dictate my own personal mood, and I can't do that anymore. I'm not going to do that anymore. So when Marcus Mariota threw that interception with his first play, I laughed out loud last week. I <laughs> you're laughed. a changed man, look dude. At you. <laughs> it was hilarious to me that that had happened. Yeah. And uh, and so uh, yeah, I, I've um, emotionally checked out. Obviously, I want my team to win tonight, but I'm I, and I'm not going to be able to sleep 
uh, win or lose after the game tonight. It doesn't, uh, you know, so, you, so, so there's still a little bit of that, but, but I'm, um, you know. You have to, as a, uh, this is your deal. You have to, yeah. you, you, so you obviously are emotionally invested, but you also have to retain a sort of distance yeah. to do your job properly. How do you balance both of those? Well, look, I, I'm from Northeast Philly. I grew up here. Like, I was a huge fan of all of these teams, but it's, it's almost like if you're a player, once you step in between the lines, like, you, you have to kind of blank, right. blank all that out. And so, yeah, that, that's that's what I do. I, I I would be lying if I said I didn't want to see the teams do well because yeah. it's just better here in the city. Our mental health relies upon Everyone good sports. Yeah. <laughs> we need it. I am interested to see what happens with the coaching staff, though, if they lose tonight. Yeah. Uh, if you look in the NFL, it's all about win now. And mm -hmm. if you end a season the way they just did, losing five of six, if they get blown out tonight, Nick Sirianni could very well lose his job. That is definitely on the table. I'm not saying I know anything, but yeah. that is, is certainly on the table. Well, no matter what happens, we did. The Flyers are playing well. So they are. We have, we have that uh, little thing to go to as well. So nice wouldn't that be that. wild if we, <laughs> we out, out of the left field or left, uh, that corner of the uh, the ring, yeah. we get a Stanley Cup at the end of all this? Well, that would be we fantastic. Have three games today: the so Flyers and Sixers and the Eagles all yeah. play today. Yeah, yeah Sixers have an afternoon game. Uh, by the way, I think the president's in town. Uh, yes, yeah. and he's flying into South Philly. He's, he's going to fill abundance. Fill abundance. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's going to be a madhouse down there. Yeah, if you're the Sixers game. All right, one I think. So you're putting a money line parlay on the Sixers, Flyers, and Eagles today. Who ruins the the parlay? <laughs> I'm not allowed to bet <laughs> publicly. You can't, uh, <laughs> you can't openly bet on air. No, I can't. <laughs> you I will can't say call your your bookie. Who I feel the least confident about? Well, Flyers are playing a tough road game in St. Louis. I still think the Eagles are going to win. I'm going to say the Flyers. Okay, I'll say the Flyers. I think the Eagles are going to win somehow. I don't All know. All right. Why. Call okay. me crazy. All right. No, it's all good. That's yeah. uh, it's Try, I'm trying to, it's been so negative here for the last six weeks that I've been trying to drum up some sort of positivity from somewhere. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I have any of that left now, but we'll see. The, the glow of your bronze win has diminished. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so the, the city needs a new hero. Look, I don't Thanks, know. Thanks, guys. I'll see you later. Yeah. I don't know if there's any coincidence to this or not, but when, when the everybody at the Philly Stadium at the ballpark did the standing ovation for Trey Turner. It, it quite literally helped to turn his season around. The yeah. guy put in work. He's a professional ball player. I'm not saying that a standing ovation made his season better, but it didn't hurt, sure. you know, and so, like, like there is some power to positive thinking, and I, there's just so much negative thinking surrounding the Eagles at this point. What so if the, the stadium any, erupted into the Jordians? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. no, we can stop with that entirely. <laughs> Instead of fly, Eagles fly, they can play this yeah. Yeah, after a touchdown. That's like, what, what if that carries us through like Gloria did for, uh, for, the, for the Blues? Blues, yeah. 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 Oh, God. <laughs> All right, well, listen, man, we do appreciate the knowledge. It's very much appreciated. Oh, thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate it. Anytime, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, and any word on uh, anything going on at CBS3? Absolutely. We so need to much. Know about? Yeah. Uh, I've got a, a podcast slash show called A Gallon of Questions that uh, is, you can see it on CBS philadelphia.com on our streaming site and it's going to make its way to tv soon don't have a date just yet but nice. you can see it on philly 57 coming up very soon saturdays at eight o'clock very so, cool yeah, yeah i saw you and uh, jay wright uh, was that a uh, uh, video video from that yeah jay encounter? wright cool. hanging out we get some pretty good guests uh Love have it. a lot of fun and since my last name is gallon i like a five-year-old bought a paint can a gallon paint can <laughs> and i pull questions out of the paint ah, can. Last night. that's yeah, how you do I like it, it. That's producing. Uh, yeah. I like that. All right. Thank you, Pat. We thank appreciate you, you stopping so by this morning. Pat Gallon, guys. And he predicts a, uh, an Eagles win tonight. He's like feeling that. it for sure. So uh, let's see what ends up happening. All right. With that, we will take a break. Come back in a second. Bizarre File Stories. Yep, they're on the way. Stay with us. Uh, the ESPYs are stupid, uh, <laughs> yeah. but I didn't see it. Marissa, you watched it. Uh, how did Danica Patrick look? Uh, she was hosting it, right? She looked good. That's you know who looked really good? Pretty much all I'm concerned about. Yeah. What? Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. Well, Kate Beckinsale. Of course, came she out. would look great. How was she there? Uh, yeah. Is she a, a wife of someone? She yeah. She presented. Uh, I don't know if she's promoting something, maybe. She but it. she presented uh, best. Um, championship, I think, which went to like best the championship, <laughs> best, best championship. <laughs> That's uh, a category. Steve and I got up close and personal to uh, Kate Beckinsale when we were in Hawaii. Whoa. She was promoting the uh, uh, the movie uh, Pearl Harbor, and she was at that time, Steve. I remember us going, "This is the most beautiful human being." <laughs> 
that I've ever been in close proximity You and I to. were like, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like in Zoolander. <laughs> I mean, we had <laughs> we, we could not understand <laughs> what, what kind of what is this thing what what is <laughs> <laughs> We're just hitting things. I mean, <laughs> it, it's like no human yeah. looks like that. Yeah. And then you have the other end of the scale, two sloths yeah. like yeah. us. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She comes walking closer. We just start bouncing up and down. A little bit. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, here's a gummy bear. Then he calmed down a little bit. Our next guest is excited to be here. He was just talking about the Eagles' uh, Super Bowl victory because yes. last time he was here, Bo Allen was in studio. That's right. And they got to hang out together. Bo like, Allen was, was like ecstatic. Ladies and gentlemen, Paulie Shore yeah. is here Thank you. with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. It was sir. like it was like it was like Bradley Cooper against Mark Wahlberg, right? Is that what the vibe was? <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hilarious, right? It truly yeah. was. Yeah. yeah, it was great. And and Mark, I had... was so happy for you. First of all, congratulations. And I'm not just Thanks, saying man. that. I'm obs- I love sports. I love sports. I'm obsessed with sports. So I was really into it, and I was so happy. I like that pass that he did. Yeah, oh, the that side pass. Oh, the uh, the, the Philly so Philly right in the yeah. face, dude. No, that it, was like straight up right in your face. Yeah, they pulled out a trick play there. And yeah, it was freaked right in everybody your face. Out. Belichick's like, what the, what the, what, what? He starts sweating, and then that uh-huh. big, and then the big Samoan guy threw his headphones. Like, this is crap. What's going on here? You know what I mean? Yeah. In LA, do um because here the sports celebrities are are they're the biggest celebrities. Yeah. It's like the sports guys, and then like your news anchors and stuff like that. Right. Like. Who's bigger out there? No, I was, uh, no, I was, it's funny. I was at the, so- there's a, there's an exclusive club called the Soho House. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of the Soho? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're like in LA, New York. I was there and I saw, um, this was just two weeks ago. I saw Carmelo Anthony hanging out with West- Russell Westbrook and they were just sitting there and I freaked out. You know, I'm like, you know. I now, love it, you know. Do I they do it. they do they notice you? I mean, because you 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 know, is there is there any? Because- yeah, they're like, man, keep that guy away from me. It's scary, <laughs> man. That dude is scary. Keep him away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, no. They all grew up with me. Yeah, because yeah, 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 you're, yeah. you're, you're, so there's like a, a connection you lived there. Your yeah, life yeah. actually from the MTV days and from the movies yeah, and yeah. from your, the access that you had. You talk about access and about mm. celebrities and seeing celebrities and, and living out there in, in L.A. and on, on the Strip. And the Playboy Mansion you were a regular at. Mm. I mean, you you have got the kind of stories. I, I forgot think. about that part. That was, <laughs> that was the part that you carve out those seven yeah. years. <laughs> you just carve them out. What, um, was that, what was that like in the you know, heyday? I just say the word heaven. I was very fortunate, very lucky, very blessed. My mom and dad gave me the most amazing life in the world. Yeah. And I grew up, you know, right on the Sunset Strip back in the heyday. I mean, that you had know? to be it was amazing. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was awesome. I saw every genre, every band. You know, from Iggy Pop to the Pointer Sisters to, you know, X. You seem a little, not. Uh, I don't know if jaded is the right word, but you, you're used to growing up with um, TV comedians, uh, No, I'm actors. a fan just like you guys are fans right. of people. I mean, I'm okay. obsessed with Sean Penn, you know, I, you know, De Niro, you know, all the great actors, Pacino, we will you know, see all these guys. Celebrities that, who sort of blow that off as, or try yeah. to act as if that's not if a thing. If you saw me, like, when, like, what people don't know, like, I'm just a normal guy, dude. You know what I yeah. mean? I just go home, I make my oatmeal. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? Make your oatmeal. I s- smoke a little weed. It's California. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you can't say that here. Sorry. No, of course no, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can. It's, it's, it's legal it's now. Medical. Pulled off the radio. Yeah. Sorry. No, we're good. No, it's legal. My friends in New York are hilarious. Hilarious. They come out to L.A., my friend Tony, they just pack up a whole bunch of stuff. Because you, yeah. you don't need a medical thing. Yeah. You can go and just, just get, get it. it. You were in Moscow and uh, Jerusalem and spent some time there recently. Yeah, it was my summer vacation. First time? Pretty, yeah, my first time ever. I've always wanted Israel. to go. Always wanted Israel. to go to, to Whereas both. the Jews say, it's real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> uh-huh. But it was weird going there because it was basically, you know, every, every dude that I saw, I'm like looking at myself. Really? Yeah, because I'm Jewish. Yeah. You know what I mean? These are my roots. So it's kind of like... 
it's kind of like just going back to, you know, I don't want to say, see, I don't want to say weird things. <laughs> say weird things. <laughs> no. Because I've always wanted to go to, to Israel. It looks fantastic. It's great. It's actually, you know, it's not what people think it is as far as, like, being dangerous. You right. Know what I mean, it's mm-hmm. very... But, I mean, the geography of it is very interesting. It's Israel, and then you got all these kind of Arab countries surrounding it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Heavily, though. Yeah, yeah. And you have a lot of Arabs that live in Israel that are very pissed off and bitter, which are, is hilarious to me, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because they're basically... So do you know what the name of the uh, Jewish money is? Uh, no, not off no. It's called shekels. Oh, How sure. hilarious oh, yeah, yeah. is that? Okay. Right, I mean, yeah. it's so Jewy just to begin with, hey, can I get some shekels? <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> you know it's I mean? But imagine the Arabs having to pay shekels. They don't, give me your shekels. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they're on their land. Like in the Arabs' people's minds, that's their land. The Jews stole their land. Right. Yeah. It's all about real estate over there and religion and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That's the big kind of, you know thing where people are fighting all the, all but, the time. But outside of that, the, the, it's known for incredible r- yeah, resorts. it's kind of like Miami, you know, or yeah. Brazil. I hadn't been to Rio or anything but like that, but Miami where people are on the beach and it's like that's Tel Aviv, but then you drive about 40 minutes and you go to Jerusalem, which is the holy city, yeah. which is amazing, which is the center of the universe. And I didn't even know this, but this is where Jesus Christ was crucified. I didn't know that. I, didn't, I thought I'm the Jesus Christ. I don't think he's in Jewish. <laughs> And you know what I mean? I'm just like, yeah, most people like, sir, what the, did you know that? The, the, Rick, and Morty, the Rick and Morty shirt. shirt. Come here. Did you know Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem? No, I did not. You didn't. Where did you think Jesus was crucified? Come here. I honestly had no idea. Yeah, me neither. Okay, go sit back down. <laughs> Sorry about him. It's the Bible. It's the, the, the Torah show. part, too. <laughs> I, pretty, I pretty much went there for my mom. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why I went. My mom passed away. I was really close with her, and I wanted to just kind of like Check bring it. her to Jerusalem and I wanted to be with her in Jerusalem because both my parents are Jewish and they never made it. No kidding. They never made it to Israel. There's yeah. a lot of people that are Jewish that don't Did you make plant it. a tree in her name? Well there that's that's kind of an honor that I didn't know that I screwed that up. <laughs> Sorry. You can go back. I, you- I'll definitely be back to Jerusalem. Besides that, and besides all the other stuff that's going on, with your, you're, you're busy, you have your podcast, you have all these other things that you're involved with, yeah. uh, and and uh, to the point of the documentary, is there in fact a documentary in the works, or is that just hearsay? No, and yeah, no, for sure. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's almost like it's got to be presented at the right time, you know, it's kind of like uh, my agent's have to present it to Netflix and Showtime and HBO at the right time. You're a pop culture all-in-one. I mean, you you were at the center of a lot of what, uh, you know, like before a lot of the... um I was reading a, an interview with you, and you talked about running into Will Ferrell at some event. And, oh, yeah. And, and he sort of gave you a lot of credit. Tell me what he told you. Yeah, it was a Funny or Die event. It was like the birthday of Funny or Die, which is his website which I, I do a lot of stuff with them. And, 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 and Adam it, McKay, too. Yeah, yeah, and I came up to him, and he came up to me. It was just like, yeah. you know, and he started mimicking me, and he started kind of like saying that I started it and, you know, kind of, you know what I mean? So he was a fan. That's nice yeah, to hear. Yeah, he was a fan, yeah. Who, who's blown yeah. your mind recently about, uh, again, like a Will Ferrell, was somebody just out of the blue or somebody that you thought you weren't even on their radar came up to you and, and was a fan? Oh, man. Um, I don't know, dude. It's too early for that. <laughs> I don't know. I can't think. Um, I, I'm, you know, I like watching Donald Trump. Okay. You know what I mean? Just because I can't believe it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, everything that happens in this, it's like, I, I it's like, it is a reality show. Yeah. You know, it well, is. Well, we were talking the other a, day about it, it, there, there are so many reality shows that I just can't stand and that people watch that that they hate, but they still watch it. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I, I don't know why people do that. My first inclination is to go, mm, let's put me in a bad spot. Let me just change the channel. Yeah. Let me turn it off. Yeah, yeah. You, know? you watch it in doses, you know, and the whole Amorosa thing is hilarious. Like, she was taping people. I'm going to tape this. <laughs> I'm gonna, I think I'm going to tape this conversation. <laughs> it's hilarious. Did like, you ever run into like, her? Because no. you've done your share of no, but I knew stuff. Donald Trump from back in the day. Right. Yeah, because he was always around the, the girls. And he was at the mansion occasionally, always. right? Yeah. And also Hawaiian Tropic down at Spring Break. Right. <laughs> with, with Ron Rice. Hilarious. Wow. Vince Neal. Uh, it was Vince Neal. It was Jim Kelly. It was OJ. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? It was the Fa- story. Fabio. <laughs> oh, my God. It was the best. That's amazing. Dude, the- <laughs> this, uh, that's, I want to see this documentary. Fabio. It was the best. Fab- we had Fabio in here. Fabio he was Trump. awesome. He was cool. He was He's awesome. Cool, right? He was, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. wow. Fabio <laughs> understands Fabio. 
He yeah, gets he, it. Yeah, he gets it. Yeah. Jim Kelly, OJ, Amazing. and our current president, <laughs> and, Bobby, and, you. and Fabio, and Fabio, and, and, and Pauly Shore. And Paulie Shore. <laughs> they didn't like me because I was getting all the babes, you know? They're like, get that guy out of here. <laughs> Spatch, bro. Spatch. I remember watching those and seeing you, and you were hosting contests and all that stuff, and I'm like, this guy's just swimming in it. Mm -hmm. Just swimming That's in it. That's how it was. I know. Back then. <laughs> Back yeah. then. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's how it was. What's happening now? Now I'm just chilling, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching CNN. You know? uh, once you've starred in a movie that's nominated for an Oscar, it's safe to say that you're famous, right? Yeah. Well, Saoirse Ronan, who is 24 years old, still doesn't feel famous, though. Yeah, she's uh, she's adorable. Yeah. I love her and the, and the accent. It's wonderful. It's just thinking. It's such a garden party, asking inappropriate questions to Meghan Markle. I love how they uh, how they drop the G yeah. on, uh, on ING right. words. Uh, Ronan continued saying she avoided reading about her. So she said, I was farting. <laughs> <laughs> what was that sound? I was farting. <laughs> farting hard. <laughs> <laughs> you just know that they adore uh -huh. Just outside, standing in the glen, farting. <laughs> In the glen. In the glen. <laughs> the morning dew collected on the leaves and grass. Yeah. And just decided it'd be a good time for farting. <laughs> <laughs> It does sound better, doesn't it? Oh. It does. Oh, it needs to be a Where song. Where were you, Angie Sarsha? I was outside farting gear. <laughs> farting hard. There needs to be a song called Farting in the Glen. <laughs> farting in the Glen. You know what? I want to let Marissa vent for a moment uh, because she posted something on Instagram yesterday. I got a lot of response. I thought it was kind of interesting. And there is a movement right now to phase out uh, some plastics that we use in the world to maybe uh, cut back on things that don't biodegrade and they're uh, clogging up, you know, they're getting out in the water, in the oceans, or they're, they're filling up landfills and so on and so forth. I know they're actually in the UK, there's a big movement to uh, to get rid of the plastic tampon yes. applicator. Oh. Yes, and going to use... back to wood. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Like George Washington's <laughs> teeth. Martha Washington used wooden tampons. <laughs> and they were not effective. Well, they were balsa. They were very They, they were balls a little absorbent. Um, they, no. they left rings. But, but the applicator, <laughs> the applicators, I saw Alice Eve, because I follow her on Instagram, had posted a video of, of trying to end that. So they would go with like a cardboard or paper or something. My thing with these floating garbage farms that are in the oceans is that... And so many times they kill sharks, Case. Oh. So they're, 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 oh. there's no, no. some good we might be overlooking. Okay. That's what they're trying to eliminate, stuff like that. And I, and I can get it. Uh, your, your, your thing sort of actually, believe it or not, Marissa, hit home to me because I, I think I have a, a level of passion about what you're talking about. All right. Since I was a little kid, like I'm thinking like second grade because I was in school in the 90s and there was a big push to like uh, not have the refrigerator open for too long, to turn off lights, to make sure that you turn off water, to yeah, conserve like water run, yeah. Yeah, while you're brushing your teeth. I, I followed all this. It's stuck through my life. I have I walk whenever I can. I take public transportation. You're like I, a contestant on uh, Who Wants to Be a Million. Exactly. Like, I will do anything to like see for you. WMMR. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, before we do the Bizarre File, uh, last minute addition to today's roster on the program, uh, we have uh, a guest who is on the Xfinity mobile guest line. Yes. And the last time we spent some time with him, it, oh, it was only about four and a half hours. Yeah, it was all the time. <laughs> and that's all. Yeah. Uh, so this time... We're, we're running late in the show, so that's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, plus, he's in Mexico right now. Ladies and gentlemen, our good friend on the phone lines, Bert Kreischer. Hey! 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 Bert! Guys, guys, what a weekend I have had in Mexico. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't even you know. Have... What, what are you doing there, first of all? What part of Mexico and why are you there? We're in... I don't even know where we are, really. We're in the Mayan Riviera. Okay. Uh -huh. And I have had a celebrity-filled weekend. Let me tell you, I am insufferable, okay? <laughs> okay. For any fan that's ever come up to me and felt weird, got like I felt like I accosted him. Uh, I've done that to everyone I've run into <laughs> this weekend. So what, what, what's, what's the event? What's drawing all these celebs to the area? It's, it's the dead ahead. So it's, it's, it's all the musicians are coming down and playing with the Grateful Dead. And... I, it started with, 
Derek Trucks, who I wow. earbeat for about 30 minutes about how good of a guitarist he was. Wow. <laughs> I then ran into Sturgill Simpson, wow. who got an earful. Poor Goose, my favorite band in the world, Goose. I'm making them work out with me at 10 in the morning this morning, okay? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> But but the my 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 feather in my hat. Last night, I see no. First of all, Thursday I saw him. Three days in a row, I've seen George R. R. Martin. Game of Thrones. Wow. wow. Game of Thrones. He walked in. He's by himself. He's with his wife. He's like he goes into. We, they have a private suite that we go up and hang out and we watch the shows from there from the hotel. It's all out on the beach. And wow. he goes into his own suite, and three times I've said look, to everyone, if I accost him, punch me in the face. Do not let me do it, because I will get awkward. I will get uncomfortable. Do not let me go up to him. And, of course, I get drunk last night, <laughs> and you see him, and he's by himself. I, and I go, that's it. I'm in. I walk right in. And he is the nicest guy in the world. I sat with him for 15 minutes. Wow. What, 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 did, what, did, you, what did you lead with when you went over uh, at Say Hi to him? Yeah. When I was 22 years old, I got involved with the Russian mafia. <laughs> 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 and then George R. R. Martin says, I own a train. I'm like, I want to rob your train. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> so he, I, you, you could completely discount the fact that you might have seen him in the gym working out? No, I didn't see I didn't, I, <laughs> With all respect, I did not see George R.R. Martin in the gym. No. Right. Uh, no, that is cool. So you, you you were able, you're passionate about everything. We know that about life in general. But you were able to temper it enough to get a full 15, 20 minutes out of him? I didn't temper it at all. I <laughs> geeked out. I blew cocky that guy with love. <laughs> that poor man, he, we're going to dinner when I go to New Mexico. Me and him are going to dinner. Wow. Like, I, Got his phone number. I got it. Was, it will. It didn't hurt that his his team was with him, and they walked up and they went razzle dazzle, and I went shut up. Oh I wow! Oh, that's it awesome. No, I, listen. I will Phenomenal. say that you are, and and I I don't know why I came to this realization when you were in the studio a couple months ago, or last month or whatever it was, but like you're all positive like all the time. You, you know what I mean? Like I I never hear you say like a mean bad word about anybody and it's just you know so um you know the fact that george r r jar jar binks jar jar binks <laughs> took to you does not surprise me uh, one bit oh i wake up with regret every morning that's the way i behave <laughs> i i can't help it i can't help it poor sturgill simpson last night i confused him like he i walked up to him he was amazing he was absolutely amazing i walked up to him and i was like uh, uh, of course, you know, I name drop. I'm friends with Joe Rogan. You know, like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, and, and then I wake up and I go, why couldn't I just be the cool guy? Why can't I be Segura and just not care? Like, he just doesn't care. I lost my mind, but George R.R. R. Martin was my white whale. I, I timed it perfectly. I walked in. I wow. said, sir, I don't want to bother you. I just want to tell you thank you. And he says, uh, oh, sit down. Uh, what, what's your name? And I said, uh... The machine. My name's Bert. Um, um, and then he was the most generous guy. I was like, of course, I get pictures with everyone. I can't help him. It's on my Instagram. I, I literally was like, do you mind if I get a picture? And then he gave us coins from from where were they, babe? Where were the coins from? Uh, they were a Joffrey coin, um, oh. an Edard Stark coin, oh. and a Rob Stark coin. Oh, oh my God, gross. Bert, are you with <laughs> Colonel Sanders right now? What? Um, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we we are we are we geeked out and he could not have been more kind and the whole event has been insane. I'm like the only save is I didn't I didn't accost uh Margo Price uh, of course, Goose. Let me tell you something. We had a private show from Goose at the hotel. Twenty people, and Jeez. I was sitting ten feet from his, and them as they played acoustic. And I had to put sunglasses on. And the lead singer Rick, after the first song, said, "Huh, sunglasses." And I said, "I started crying." <laughs> <laughs> tell, wow! Tell man. Goose that I'm a big fan. By the way, if if you oh. have an opportunity, just tell them that uh, I've seen them live. Uh, White Nights is is an absolute banger. Uh, and I'm a huge, huge fan, and I'm I'm even happier knowing that you are friends with them. Oh, I told them, and of course I can't help but be 100 percent honest. They're like, "Hey, it's really fun." You're like, "We're in the pool later talking," and I was like, "I go, I'm really upset 
that one day I won't be your most famous fan because you guys are blowing up. And I go, I'm just savoring this moment. I made them commit to play at my funeral. You don't understand. <laughs> you locked it in early. That's smart. I, I locked them in real early. I'm meeting them at the gym in seven minutes. That's cool. That's that's great. So uh, listen, uh, yeah, uh, you you come across very positively, as, as Casey was saying. You're, but you... You're saying you know you're name dropping. Well, now you're the name, man. I mean, you know, you 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 certainly have enough gravitas to uh, maybe not uh, you know George R. R. Martin as far as where the circles that he operates in, but you know you you you've got that that glow about you. Uh, but you still don't feel coming up and just being Burt Kreischer cuts it quite enough with these people. No, not with <laughs> these people. These people are cool. They eat drugs. <laughs> I, I'm I'm drinking cold beers in the corner. I. <laughs> I uh, I am like I bubble I can't I can't help it. I, the time I met Tom Cruise and they bumped into him, it was after he did that movie Magnolia and he had the long hair. Right. He yeah. looked at me and he goes hi and I said, oh, you have beautiful hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not cool. I'm not cool. And I'm I'm gonna go talk about that in therapy this week yeah. because I legit I get out of control. I get completely out of control and I walk. I walked. I saw Sir Simpson, and I just walked up. I go, "This is happening." And he was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think that I, endears it, you to us. I mean, as you know, fans, you know, outsiders looking in. I think that you know, when we see you behave that way, it, it makes us feel good. Like it, because we would do the same exact thing. Oh, I am the guy that gets his pass pulled because I can't stop. I mean, poor Bob Weir, that guy. I was like, <laughs> I just. <laughs> what happened there? I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> Let's just say he knows me as the guy who's going to work out with him at the beach every morning. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, speaking of which, we know you got to go work out with Goose right now. Are you um are you doing weight training or are you training for the 5K? Uh, holy cow, that 5K really took off, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, anyone listening, we got a 5K by May. Me and Tom are putting it together. Jelly Roll's in it. Louis C.K.'s in it. Oh Shane Gillis is doing it. Tim Dillon's doing it. Stavros, Mark Norman, Jesus. Michelle Wolf. It's going to be huge. And I won't, I won't let you know, but I will tell you, in May, there's a huge event happening in Los Angeles. We haven't figured it out totally, but if you're into comedy, Netflix is a joke festival. is tremendous. I am at the Forum. Tom's at the Forum. Shane Gillis just added a show at the Forum. And let's just say that would be a great place to hold a 5K. So if you're a comedy fan, you can see everyone you've ever wanted to see do comedy and get ready, get in shape, get healthy, and meet us out in L.A. in May. Wow. Nice, nice. I didn't know Shane was going to do it. I, it. Didn't somebody right off the bat say, no, I'm not doing it? No. Well, <laughs> listen, Shane, <laughs> Shane Gillis is my favorite person to bully in the world. <laughs> he says, I texted him the other day. I'm doing a Winston Churchill Day on the 24th in Austin, and I, I drink all day like Winston Churchill did, and I'm doing a call and sick to work show at Joe's Club, and I texted Shane. I said, hey, I'm day drinking on the 24th. Are you in? And he just one word, no. And then I wrote, I wrote, uh, you understand that this will be my joy the day you break and I see you drinking it at noon on the 24th. <laughs> and he writes back laughing faces and he goes, you know I'm drinking with you on the 24th. There you go. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's like a Jedi mind control. Done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so he'll be, he'll definitely be doing the, he'll definitely be doing the 5K. All right. All right. Awesome. All right. It sounds All right. pretty awesome, man. All right, Bert. Thanks for the bonus combo, man. It's great to catch up with you. So happy that you're just having a blast, man. Speaking of another person I geeked out in front of, yes. Baker Mayfield's going to have a game tonight, boys. Good luck. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, he's going to have, he's not going to have a good game, but uh, <laughs> we'll have a game. <laughs> All right, brother. We'll talk to I you love soon, you Bert. Love, love you. Too. All right. Bert Kreischer. Big Dead Festival going on. In Man. Mexico, had no idea. Yeah, so they do that down there. Uh, Nick, I know that Dave Matthews does it, and his is coming up probably in a little less than a month, and then Fish does the same thing. At the same same venue? I'm pretty sure it's the same venue. Uh, it might be like Moon Palace or something. Yeah, that's where uh, <clears throat> Dave and Tim uh, Reynolds go, and um, Casey people posting online shots of like them getting there or, or what it's going to be like. And when you're around here and you're seeing those photos, you're like, oh, it uh, looks yeah. like a, a lot of fun. Yeah. But we'll be in uh, Clearwater in two months. Yes. Uh, well, that's awesome that uh, Bert did a little check-in, man. I love yeah. it. He's having a blast. He's Excellent. Such a great I love his wife. All right, we got to do the B-Files, so let's go for it right now. Right now. WMMR.
presents Kristen and Steve's Bizarre Files. All right, let's start off with this. A strange prank has taken over a suburb of Oklahoma City. The police department there said that it's been made aware of several adult toys being placed on the tops of buildings, businesses, and intersections. The dildo fairy. Crews had taken the objects down by mid-afternoon on Thursday, and the sex toys are being placed in high areas... (laughs) With drones. Somebody is flying around dildos, and they're placing them in these high spots. I love this. I think this is hilarious. I have a couple of drones. Uh, I have a couple of dildos. Yeah. According to, well, we need to get you guys together. (laughs) Yeah. According to the police, uh, sightings from residents started surfacing on Wednesday. Sex toys were found on top of a stoplight. Uh, Reaction on social media to the sex toy sightings was mixed. Uh, One person wrote on Facebook, whoever did this, I want to be best friends with you. (laughs) Another one wrote, now I want to drive around and find them. Officers are investigating the incident and will decide whether charges or municipal fines will be filed. There should be some sort of contest associated with that, right? Where you can just spot them and... Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, This is disturbing. In uh, summer of 2023, a rash of bomb threats hit suburban Chicago libraries. Uh, They weren't alone in getting these threats, as libraries in several other states also reported such email and phone calls. In Chicago, the threats dragged out for several weeks, with multiple libraries getting them more than once. A potential suspect was arrested, though no further details about the individual's involvement has been shared since mid-October. But now, Minnesota public libraries have become subject to a similar wave of bomb threats. It's like a Unabomber vibe going on here. Uh, Beginning on Friday afternoon, several public libraries received bomb threats via phone call. Among them were Fergus Falls Public Library, which closed for the remainder of the day in an abundance of a caution, as well as East Central Regional Library System, which received the call late in the afternoon and closed several branches. Uh, Northfield Public Library also got a threat on Friday and closed early. Jessica Faust, who's the manager for the East Central Regional Library System, said they received two separate phone calls. It appears the call came from the same person who seemed to be reading from a script. Hmm. Bomb threats continued into this week on uh, Tuesday, this past week, actually. Heritage Library in Lakeville, part of Dakota County Library System, received a threat as well. That library closed. Uh, Library workers across the state shared their experiences on social. They were shaken and disturbed by the threats, which comes during a wave of backlash against library workers nationwide. Uh, The rise in book bans alongside rhetoric about types of people who work in libraries has encouraged uh, stochastic terrorism like these bomb threats to flourish. Mm. Uh, They should be nationwide headlines, but they're really just making a blip in local media right now, and I thought that was strange as hell, so... Keep an eye out for those stories. Wildlife officers in Queensland, Australia, responded to a home where residents made a surprising discovery in their chicken coop. It was a crocodile. Crocodile in the chicken coop? Yes. Wildlife officers were dispatched to a home on Monday when residents spotted what they initially thought was a goanna lizard but turned out to be a crocodile. This is Gene Simmons from the United States. I want to know what you're going to do about this. <laughs> Reptile was hiding out in the property's chicken coop. Was he disguised as a chicken? Fortunately, all chickens and pets living on the property have been accounted for. So One, they, two, yeah, three. As he's counting the chickens. Yeah. Uh, the crocodile was located, was loaded into a PVC tube and transported to a facility where officials said it will remain until yeah. they can find it a new home at a licensed farm or a zoo. You think you got a problem with a chicken hawk if you have a yeah. crocodile in there? All right, here's a story out of New Jersey. A little Egg Harbor township man was arrested Friday on arson charges after investigators allegedly discovered he'd set off three separate fires at a vacant home in Ocean County. Uh, his name is uh, Stephen Johnson, and he was charged for the fires that uh, occurred in the, in the last week at a property that he lived next door to in Little Egg Harbor. Authorities were first responded to the vacant residence on January 6th around 1.30 a.m. for the report of a fire. They later determined someone had set off the fire in the living room of the structure using an open flame to ignite a liquid. Four days later, around 12.30 a.m., police and fire were dispatched to the same address for a report of another fire. This time it was started on the home's shed 
and the cause was again determined to be an open flame and ignitable liquid. I'm not an investigator, but it, it seems to me this person wants to burn this place down. The last fire was set at about 1 a.m. on Friday at the same home. Police were surveilling the area ah. this time when they observed an unknown man later identified as Johnson hopped the fence of the neighboring property and pour flammable liquid on the deck. What are you doing? He, he then lit an item on fire and ignited the item on the deck. After Johnson left the property and returned to his own home, officers quickly put the blaze out and placed him under arrest. An investigation revealed that Johnson was allegedly responsible for all three fires. And He's currently in the county jail. Any reason for directing this one place? No, but you're pretty stupid if you're going yeah. back to the same place three times in a row that happens to be next door to your house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, whatever. Um, the FBI is investigating a Spirit Airlines passenger who allegedly asked flight attendants to join the Mile High Club earlier this week. <laughs> hey. James. <laughs> hey, pretty lady. Warren Finister is facing criminal charges for interfering with a flight crew member and sexually harassing and assaulting flight attendants and engaging in other disruptive behavior. I know tickets on this flight are cheap, and you look cheap, too. Court records state the Detroit native first asked the lead flight attendant if she wanted to join the Mile High Club before pulling a second crew member into his seat and asking her the same question. Who, who remotely thinks this is acceptable? The passenger is also accused of lying on the floor of the plane after being moved to a new seat and requesting entry into the cockpit. Finister later told the FBI that he had consumed multiple <laughs> alcoholic shots to calm his nerves prior to the flight, which he stated was his first. His, his first, first flight first, ever. First time on a plane. Though he was up to speed on the Mile High Club, wasn't mm -hmm. he? Uh, if convicted of the charges, which violate federal criminal law, Finister will face a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison. Wow. Yeah, it's a big one. And that is what I have in the bizarre file. All right, we're breaking. We're coming back in a moment. We'll get the lesson question, the trash, the music news, those things on the way. We'll be going long, so stay with us. It's, it's just second nature to me. I don't even think twice. I recycle, I reuse. But when I drink a vodka water, I want to be able to mash the crap out of the lemon and lime that come in my drink. And with these gosh darn paper straws, they get destroyed. And then I have this mushy straw in my drink, and it pisses me off. So the I gist of it is you do not like the paper straws because you do not believe they are uh, resilient enough. No, they suck. Okay. Whoever's, whoever's making them, <clears throat> they are they have no integrity and they fall apart. And I do, just want a plastic straw. I'm sorry. I love the turtles. Why not I just love. Use any, uh, well, hang on, yeah, yeah. Steve. I, I would. This is the only time I've ever asked to do this. Can I come over there and borrow your reverb for a moment? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my, my God, it's yeah. a it's a pleasure. <clears throat> uh, hold on. Oh. Turn it off for a second. Ladies and gentlemen, to me, this sounds like a first world problem. Yes. <laughs> but we took a long journey to get to the point Wait. that Marissa doesn't like paper straws. I just had a realization, Preston, this is probably something that like I deal with three or four times a week. Is that more of a first world problem? <laughs> yeah. That, that I probably have a vodka water three or four times a week. Well, your alcohol addiction might be the bigger yeah. issue here. No, the, the raging alcoholism is a secondary <laughs> issue. The waking up in alleyways and... Uh, uh, so uh, I... Uh, listen, we were at... knife fights. <laughs> I, have you ever seen people drink uh, sodas or anything that comes in a bottle out of a straw? You put the straw in the bottle? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. I think part of the... Now, do women sometimes, uh, Marissa, opt to not drink out of a bottle or right out of a glass because of lipstick? and a straw instead? Well, lipstick or staining your teeth, all of those things, or my mother would never drink anything out of a bottle. Like, that would, like, for me, like, when you see a, a bride, it like, it, well, like, I, I don't know. There's just time and place for that, and I think, uh... She'd take the bottle, go over to the windowsill, there we go. <laughs> 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 oh, I love yeah, opening bottles yeah. that way. Yeah. Yes. Well. There's a great scene in uh, Overboard where Goldie Hawn comes yes. back. That's she's exactly what yes. She's <laughs> opening the beer that way. Yeah. Yeah. I try, that hurts your hand. Yeah. Do you think guys would drink beer out of a bottle if uh, the top of the bottle looked like a little... Wait, I probably shouldn't say it out loud. Okay, I was... <laughs> You guys would drink it. With the, I got a question. Yes, Casey, something you want to tell the class? You think guys would drink something out of beer but look like a vagina? No. He said the other thing. If it, if well, it like a Opposite, every bachelorette party ever would buy those bottles of beer. Right? That's true. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure there are things that, that are that are similar, you know, 
Uh, but they, they, you know, people get picky about the taste of the of the uh, the stuff in the can and the bottle if it affects the taste. You know. Yeah. Those Stra- are, and straws are just one more step. Those are things you think about, huh? Oh, it's just what you know. Dear diary, <laughs> I wonder if men would drink out of bottles. Yeah, stop it. If it looked like penises. <laughs> Somebody in this room had mentioned chocolate tampons earlier, right? Yeah. So well, I was trying to help the health industry. <laughs> oh, yeah. And and there's an obvious cooperative between Hershey's and. Okay. <sighs> Right. Tampax. Well, Marissa has had it. I thought you would get more support on the phones, Marissa, to be not honest. Not a one. On the paper straws, and it's not really happening. You're a complainer. I yeah. got a lot of hands-up emojis on my Instagram, so I got What hell a, does that mean? I don't know. People were Give like, up. praise. <laughs> yes, Give up. Word. Put your hands up. Like, Give up stop. your stupid cause. Give it up. Yeah. Yeah. No. Praise. No, like, word girl, we support you. Word girl. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen. It reminds me of Pat Boone's first day in Compton. <laughs> Word, Word girl. girl. <laughs> Word girl. Oh, I'm so, I just hate these goddamn paper straws. They're so That's I mean, it. Word I, girl. That's it. Word, Word girl. Preach. Preach, girl. What is the, where is the Q in Q-tip derived from? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. There's, it's technically, it's a cotton swab. Right. You would, so a C-tip. So I don't know yeah. where. No one wants to put a C-tip no. in their ear. I have no and idea. And by the way, uh, Q-tip. Um, you've done something to your product. You've, uh, uh, you've, you've cut some corners. <laughs> Are you talking to directly you. to yes, the Q-tip Yes, I am people? talking to you, Q-tip. Uh, you've cut some corners, and I have noticed. Uh, but fortunately for you, you're still the best product on the market. That's your fight song. That's right? my yeah, fight that's song. Joke, One case. second. It's, and I have this noticed. This is my fight song. Take Wait a minute. What is this? Is the swab part smaller? No, the uh, the cardboard uh, medicated. The, the cardboard is thinner. It's like they've they've shaved off a, a layer or two of the of the cardboard stick, and it's and it, why do you go like this? With the I don't know. Stick? So, I don't know. <laughs> the hell is that? This part. This part right here. Okay, but yeah. this holy is... crap, you have one. Yeah. Oh, I have. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> oh, Nick, you don't see it. He sits here while we're in the middle of breaks, and he cleans his ears. You know no, what he's like, I, Preston? I, I, he's like really Hyman like, Roth sitting there. I itch my ears, or scratch my ears, because they get itchy. And I'm, well, oh, I don't care, whatever. Don't You're sticking little, that thing in your oh, ear, I, and I, I turn I got over. In my ear, I got a little I got the thing in my Listen, ear. Man. There's I, usually something in one of his orifices when I turn and look at it. I got a bit of a boogie here in my yes, nose. Exactly. and my ear. Yeah, Pick an orifice. It stands for a quality tip. Steve. We're bigger than oh. U.S. Steel. Oh, did you hear that? What? It stands for quality tip. Oh, okay. You tip. All right, all right. Uh, yeah. And so you've noticed a diminishment in the quality yeah. of, the, of the quality tip. Yes, this should be uh, less Q tip, less quality. How about S B sub uh, S P sub par? Mm-hmm. Everyone's trying to be environmentally friendly, so F maybe that. that's a part of it, like the uh, the cardboard straw. Oh, you know what? Here's here's a bit of trivia, and I did uh, rem- I, I have heard this before. the The original name of uh, Q tips were baby gays. Now you're talking. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> Can you get those delivered? Stop it. Televangelist Kenneth Copeland has a lot of experience with planes. We've seen, you know, him and, and the other guy. There, there are two of these televangelists that are really big into their aircraft. They are uh, really <laughs> consumed yeah. with the level of aircraft that they own. And often the current plane they own is not good enough. It's just It just ain't going to Because cut it. the Lord needs them to spread the gospel. We were blessed to have <laughs> a... An airplane that it was a Vickers Viscount. A Vickers Viscount. And a man on our board of directors owned that airplane. And uh, his financial situation had come to the place where, particularly after he got after he got born again, and a lot, a lot. I won't go into all that. No, but more, <laughs> that I won't go into all that. That's the religious part, and it gets. <laughs> Bogs things down. <laughs> By the way, if we're all not clear at this point, not dime one is making its way to anybody who's poor. <laughs> I just want to be clear on that. And I know I can say that to you. God bless you all, everyone sitting here right now. And it won't matter. <laughs> You'll still gladly open up your wallets and put that money in the collection plate. <laughs> all right, let me continue. But they, that airplane had been parked for several years. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
It was a four-engine turboprop. <laughs> uh, I mean, t- I Jesus know. Christ, he sounds like he's talking he, about. Sounds this like you're church. at an air show. Uh-huh. He's a preacher. Uh huh. He's in. He's, he's a man of the Lord, mm-hmm. ostensibly. Mm-hmm. Airliner. So, <laughs> this was back in the days when George first came along, and and oh man, we had we had fun in that old airplane, didn't? We? Oh my God. <laughs> They had an older sort of navigation system on that. I know that many of you are going to remember that they didn't have the, uh, the triple GPS coordination system that you find in the newer vehicles. Uh, did I mention Jesus yet or anything? <laughs> <laughs> this is a sermon? Oh, yeah. yeah. It, well, yeah. We, you know, we... There's a particular that. fuel mixture uh, that I'd like to talk about. <laughs> and then, of course, why you shouldn't covet your neighbor's wife. Right. Yeah, this is in front of a group of his followers. This is in church. This is, yeah, well... Or whatever. This is a televangelist. This is Airplane it's, hangar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we, you know, we put that thing back... back uh, in the service, we went through that airplane from head to from from nose to tail, and 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 they they did uh, uh, X-rays of of the fuselage and everything, looking for corrosion. <laughs> and there was there was some it wasn't wasn't all that bad, but there was some, there was the What's X-rays it? showed that there were some spots of corrosion. Okay, and he's saying, okay, how can I tie this back into what, the, what, how what's, the, back, what's yeah. my spiel? Yeah, yeah. Like the way your, your soul gets corroded. Right, right, Ooh, right. Oh, good, good, go with that. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Yeah. All right, so he takes big, long yeah. pauses. There we go. And so I was, I was praying over it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And just he's praying over the corrosion. Corrosion. Yeah, he's yeah. praying over it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So instead of uh, you know going and out then and earning money, I decided to return my faith to its upright position. <laughs> 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 because the Lord's beverage cart had been stolen. Yeah. Yeah. Because we were coming in for a landing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And just as plain. Listen to this. The Lord said to me, okay, so this is God talking directly oh, okay. to him. No fumar. <laughs> He's t- t- talking directly to him. Yeah. The Lord said to me, lay hands on it. I'll heal it. What? Listen, listen to the people talking. What? And he says, what? What? Even he doesn't buy it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I never heard him. What are you? Well, he said, Kenneth. You're an idiot. Said, <laughs> you're an idiot. He said, Kenneth, you're an idiot. Mm-hmm. This is your thing. Mm-hmm. You're all about the freaking planes. Give it a try. He said, corrosion comes from the curse. Oh. Self-pleasuring. Yes. Mm-hmm. And listen to the people going, oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Comes from the curse. Comes from the curse. He said, I provided that airplane for you, didn't I? Mm-hmm. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, lay hands on it. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I, I start. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wait, didn't he say that? All right, so this plane belonged to somebody else Mm -hmm. and the Lord provided it for him Mm -hmm. at the... uh, Lord didn't have much use for the previous owner. Yeah. (laughs) The previous owner had come to The previous owner could have gone down a ball of flames the Lord would not have given a rat's ass. (laughs) And I I started praying in the Spirit and the more I prayed in the Spirit, the happier I got. (laughs) So I just went, oh man, you talk about laying hands on that thing. I laid hands on it all over and it's a big old airplane. It took a while to do it. It took a while to do it. I I have to be honest with you at a certain point. I put my people in a few holes. <laughs> it felt good. Cause some of them have some of those rubber stoppers that feel like a woman's leg parts. It felt good. I mean, come on. I know. Who's sitting there? Who's sitting there listening to this? A and group and of people. And he has a a very large yep. following. The answer mm-hmm. is enough people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To pay for that mm-hmm. beautiful right. aircraft. Not one per. I, I, listen, I don't know how big that like, crowd is. Not are one- you out of your mind? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but that song never will get tired of that. It is 18 minutes after 10. Preston and Steve show. Cold today. High only 31 degrees. And we do have snow forecasted for later on this afternoon, evening into tomorrow. Calling for 
Anywhere from one to three inches in the general vicinity. It all depends. Further north and west, you're going to get a little bit more. Uh, so we'll see how this all plays out. Uh, tomorrow's high 35. And then Wednesday, even colder, high 28. Well, if, we do, if we do get some snow, it's going to stay around. We're going to see it for a while because of the uh, temperatures staying below freezing. Yeah, so. they're saying uh, the one to three inch potential. Yep. Not snowmageddon, but uh, we haven't had really anything in years. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see where this goes. All right, we're going to ask uh, today's lesson question, and we are going to give away a pair of tickets to see Mrs. Doubtfire, the live show. This is going to be Tuesday, February 6th at the Academy of Music. So if you can answer this question correctly, we'll get you tickets to that show. The question is, Snus <laughs> is a tobacco product for your mouth. What tobacco product can you put in your butt? 215-263-WMMR. Snus. Is it Snus or Snus? I said Snus, snus yeah. Snus is a tobacco product for your mouth. What tobacco product can you uh, put in your butt? To, or that we said. I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of tobacco <laughs> products that you can actually put in your butt if you really wanted to. Yeah. What's the one we mentioned? 215 263 WMMR. Call now. The trash business is a gold mine. 933 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. Brought to you this morning by Tr Pro Team Collision, your certified collision repair center. If you get into an accident, Pro Team Collision is there for all of your auto body repair needs. What's going on this morning, Steve? Well, rapper GGG and Little Mermaid star Halle Bailey have revealed their newborn son, Halo, already has a video game endorsement deal. The couple admit they see a lot of business potential here and are planning on having a daughter named Master Queef. Wow. Oh, my God. Kelly Clarkson drawing approval from many parenting groups for deciding to keep her kids off of social media. Clarkson says she doesn't want her kids distracted, especially when they have such demanding sweatshop jobs. <laughs> oh, my God. And finally, Kristen Stewart revealing in an interview that she hated working on the 2019 Charlie's Angels reboot. An interesting coincidence, we hated watching it. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's how All right, we're going over to the phone, see if somebody knows the answer to this. Uh, Snus is a tobacco product for your mouth. What tobacco product can you put in your butt? Uh, I have uh, Shadow we're going to go to. Hey, Shadow, good morning. Hey, how you doing? Good. All right, Shadow, what's the answer? Uh, snass. Snass, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got it, buddy. Hang on. <laughs> got it right. We're giving you a pair of tickets. See, Mrs. Doubtfire, Tuesday, February 6th, the Academy of Music. Everyone's favorite Scottish nanny is headed to Philadelphia. Mrs. Doubtfire tells the hysterical and heartfelt story of an out-of-work actor We'll do anything for his kids. Tickets are on sale now via EnsembleArtsPhilly.org. Show dates are February 6th to the 18th at the Academy of Music. Now, Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Yeah. Yeah. Friday this morning by CSB Media Arts Center. Uh, trained for a career in broadcast media, web development, social media, marketing, and filmmaking at CSB Media Arts Center in Cherry Hill. Visit GoCSB.com. That's GoCSB.com. Multi-platinum artist and uh, lead singer of Stained, Aaron Lewis, is releasing a solo album that'll be titled The Hill. He described it as unfiltered and unplugged and says it's deeply personal and written from a lifetime of highs and lows. Uh, through a press release, Lewis commented... I'm coming up on 52 years old, and I'm on the hill, and I'm going to stand on. And what? I'm on the hill, I'm going to stand on. Oh, okay. I'm on the hill, I'm going to stand on. Uh, nobody's going to change me now. Music has always been my escape, my Ain't way no break in my stride. of expressing the things that I don't express very well in life. Uh, the 10-track solo album will be out on March 29th. Did he suggest if he's walking on sunshine, Preston? He did not say anything about that, Steve. And if it makes him feel good. Uh, yeah, none, none of those yeah. above, unfortunately. Um, this is a Sheryl Crow. I know we don't really play Sheryl Crow on MMR, but this has an interesting twist to it. Uh, she's released Evolution, the title track from her upcoming studio album. Uh, the lyrics convey her uneasiness about artificial intelligence, and she commented through a press release saying, As a mom, I want to leave a better world for my children, a healthier planet. It's unsettling, and this song deals with those anxieties. And... The cut includes a guitar solo 
like Tom Morello of Rage Against the Machine. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, and she said, to me, Tom's playing comes from some other planet. So Cheryl's new nine-song album, Evolution, uh -huh. will be released on March 29th. That's a little hypocritical. She's that. uncertain about AI, but doesn't mind guitars from other planets. Oh, this is true. Yeah. Well, doesn't mean he's artificial. He may be alien. Well, good point. It's a little different. And we actually, we talked to Cheryl not that long ago. Last year, I think. Yes. We had a nice conversation I love her. with her. She's yeah. great. Yeah. She's I, one of those super multi-talented people. And during the pandemic, I got to introduce her vir virtually. She was doing um, a gig for Le Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Oh. And I, I was the host of it. Oh. And so, in a way, I got to introduce uh, Cheryl Crow doing a live performance, even though we weren't in the same room. That's or, awesome. Was even in the same state. But yeah, it was really cool. She, she was super nice. I got the impression that uh, all she wants to do is have some fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then finally, a famous bootleg recording of the Allman Brothers band that has been passed around for years is now officially and legally available to purchase. Uh, the concert was April 7th, 1972, on the campus of Syracuse University and happened about six months after Dwayne Allman had died. Uh, available now in digital form, it was pulled from the source recording and has been remastered. Uh, the band performed the show at the uh, Manly Fieldhouse. It's a very Manly Fieldhouse. The school's indoor track and field facility. Uh, the 11-track collection titled Manly Fieldhouse Syracuse University features classics such as Statesboro Blues, Midnight Rider, and Whippin' Post. Yeah, I listened to a little bit of it, and when they remaster it, it changes the sound of the of, of the like the pitch of, of the voice. If I'd you like want to hear, hear it, yeah, 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 I'd like to hear it. Too. That's how I know. Is that Greg? Yeah. Sounds, it's a higher. Yeah. yeah, a little higher than normal. But that's when he started getting candid about his uh, his uh, health issues. Yeah. And especially those dance moves. Oh, my God. Incredible. It gets the crowd going back in 1972. All right, and there you go. That is the last bit of information in music news. Let's take a final break. We'll come back in a second. Uh, Sarah Parker is in for Pierre Robert. Yeah. No, and it's not Sarah. It is Sarah. It is Sarah. Yeah, it is Sarah. Oh, okay. I, I thought somebody said something else. And, and they were wrong. They were wrong, and I'm wrong, and I uh, apologize, President. We'll More come back this is a develop. <laughs> in just a moment. More on this in uh, breaking news when we return. Stay with us. Hands on that thing, just laid hands on it all over and praised God, and laid hands on that and commanded that corrosion to, to leave in Jesus' name. Seriously. Then I crawled up and I kind of hunched my back and started chattering like a. <laughs> Serious and I saw that corrosion disappear. Then I exploded. <laughs> Come on. They did more x rays and came back. There was just one little old spot there. I said, Lord, what were they? No, he said, I want to remind you. <laughs> I said, uh, What are you reminding me of? He said, they could have said maybe the maybe the X-rays were wrong. Oh, oh. Said one of them, maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe the X-rays. Oh my God! Are wrong. If only you could see see Steve's face. Come on! I say that. I say it. Oh my God! <laughs> What? Uh, X-rays are wrong. Yeah. I'll tell you this. <clears throat> Take them out to a, to a, uh, to a, an airport. Mm -hmm. Get a plane that has some sort of um, error with something wrong with it, something that makes it really not safe for flight. Lay down on it, and would he lay down on it and pray and then get in that plane? Well, he, God didn't tell him that. That no. would be the defense. God, well, yeah. God didn't tell me to heal this one, so I can't do it if He's not telling me to do it. Oh my you God! Know what I mean, uh -huh. so you know, that's there's there's a there's a, a failsafe, a built-in yeah. failsafe. <laughs> so we laid hands on it again, and it's gone. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. <fighting>. Yeah. <laughs> Even I don't believe it! <laughs> <laughs> we need to loop that. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow was spotted at Long Island's New York Center for Innovative Medicine, a center known for its holistic treatment of Lyme disease. Mm. Uh, the was she wearing a lab coat? Uh, the founder, uh, I don't know if she's oh. wearing a lab coat. The founder, Dr. Thomas Zulk, 
has been featured on her website, Goop, for his uh, energy blanching procedure. I read, I read Zulk on Goop, and uh, I like <laughs> Oh, his wait stuff. a minute. What? I said the wrong thing. <laughs> Not energy uh, blanching. Yeah. Energy balancing. <laughs> Now, like, listen, blanching is lightly yeah, boiling none something. None of us would have noticed. Listen, <laughs> no. in the world of goop, in the new. world of goop, that yeah. makes com- complete does. sense. Yeah. Now they can blanch your energy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. I'll try that. Yes. Can you can you I'll also whiten my anus? Yeah. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. We can whiten your anus. Here's the app for that. that too. <laughs> I'm blanching both my anus and oh, my energy. God. Hey, I had, I had a story that uh, that keys off of uh, teachers, and I thought this was kind of interesting. Uh, this is out of, where is this? Somewhere in the south. I think it's in the... Uh, is it Florida? No, it's North Carolina. Uh, yeah, the teacher at uh, Northeast Carolina Preparatory School in Tarboro, North Carolina, had apparently uh, punished uh, one of their students. By punish, I mean making them write a phrase over yes. and over and over and over again. A la Bart Simpson. Because he called her ma'am. <laughs> ma'am? Yes, ma'am. And she didn't like it. And... Uh, so he had to write the word ma'am numerous times. Uh, his teacher asked him to write it. He told his mother uh, um, that uh, she had to that he had to return this with the parent's signature after he repeatedly called her the word despite being told not to do so. Okay, well, if she told him not to, then. Yeah, he completed his assignment during class hours, which made his mom worry that maybe it had interfered with some of school, you know, the school work. Yes. Uh, according to uh, the <clears throat> mom, uh, Mrs. Wilson, the teacher also told uh, the young boy that if he, uh, if she, or the girl, if she had something uh, she would have thrown it at him. I'm sorry, said to the boy. So she, if she would have had something, she would have thrown it at him. Uh, after the the mom signed the paper, she had uh, also had the boy write down the definition of ma'am, which is a term of respectful or polite address used for a woman, <laughs> according to Oxford Dictionaries. There's some people that hate being called ma'am, and my I hate it. My wife call, uses ma'am as a sign of respect when she's on the phone with someone asking for help. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Thank ma'am. you, ma'am. It you is, know. and and especially as you start to go south, you're going to find it is a term. It is a respectful way to refer yeah. to people. Yeah, I, I would uh, f- f- the. Um, I, I I I I. It's a weird thing, and I know, Preston, you're right. Ma'am, to for ma'am to set someone off. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I don't I've know. always known it as a respectful way to re- refer to someone. Maybe she's younger and well, she that, doesn't want to feel old. Yeah, or that's a, like that's that. how I see it. I see it as an older woman. So when somebody, I remember the first time some uh, he was a kid, uh, probably a high school kid, called me ma'am, and I was like. Oh my god! I mean, I didn't tell him don't call me that, but it made me feel old. It's not. Did he just say ma'am? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, I never. <laughs> was it the word that set the teacher off, or was it the fact that the kid was repeating it over and over? I don't know. Well, okay. it had to be. It had to be the initial thing graded on her because right. she asked him to stop saying it. Yeah. But if he's used to saying it as a sign of respect right. to, yeah. you know, like somebody in an authoritative manner, like then you just got to get that flag out of your butt and get over it, right, Press? I would think so. Yeah, get the flag out of your butt. Yeah. Did I say that one day? Yeah. Okay. I, I I was walking, I was hiking around the area. You know, uh, maybe on Friday, said hello to this this young feller, probably thirteen or fourteen. Uh, uh, how how are you? How's it going? Very well, sir. I'm like, yeah. That's yeah. Right. yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, it's, it's a kid, title. It's a kid, title. We're not. This doomed. kid walk along. You know, then you, you, come with me. I want to show other people what you just did because it was so good. It's a title you've earned. I earned it! (laughs) Hey, here's a text that says, Women should know better than to call other women ma'am. I joke that they're traitors. Uh, And then she writes, It's well known that most women don't like it. What do you mean? How do you know that? Because of maybe, that extensive maybe survey amongst, she took. Yeah, exactly. Maybe amongst a, a handful of your friends or something. But what do you mean most yeah, women? Yeah, but I, see, I would agree with that. But how do you know most women? Because anybody, I mean, just anyone that I know, it's not like I took a survey, but anyone I know would agree. That it's got to be everyone. Yeah, and, and you know what? Here's the thing, too. I think it's, no, but I, th- I do, like you said, it's regional. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, or, that, or like I can see the, that. Can in be, the South, yes, they do that. They're here, uh, not as much. But, I, but I've, I've born and bred, you know, Northeast, and, and and ma'am to me was always a sign of respect, and I I would say ma'am. Or maybe an old is it an older thing like it? You I know, don't know. Like it, I don't know. I just you I, keep going back to old. No, um, the, 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 the standard people. thing would be pretty good, ma'am. 
wouldst thou take us me? <laughs> but here's yeah. the deal. I think it's all about intent. And if you yeah. hear someone saying it as a clearly as a sign of respect, yes. you should understand that oh. they're just being polite. Yes, of course. I'm not going to get mad at them, but it doesn't make me like it. It's still, right. I still I think it's... I don't like it. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> One last darn bit. <laughs> uh, I'm working on my activities list. Oh, God. Uh, no, I, I listen, and if it rings to your ear and you don't like it, you can simply say, oh, it's okay, you don't have to call me ma'am or I'll punch you in the throat. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't, I would never read it as, a, as an insulting thing. It's that's not. A, that's a way to, to no. respect. It's your own fault for being old. Jesus yeah. Christ. No, what's what's with you in that aging thing? It's not insulting. It's just... We just don't like it. And that's what, fine. What, but uh, all right, your personal preference. I don't preference. think somebody saying it to me is insulting me. All right, uh, but what do you want your like server? It. What do you Good. want your waiter or waitress to call you when when they go up? Sugar to the teas. Table? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Young lady, maybe. <laughs> Young. I'm sorry, I'm lady. Oh my God, she has to see my ID. <laughs> now we're living in a wait, fantasy. Now, now you're getting wait, wait, into wait, pandering. Wait, 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 wait. I haven't been <laughs> underage for. 38 years. <laughs> Wait, let me tell you something that happened on Saturday. I have to tell you this. So I went out for Preston. I went out for my birthday and yeah. we went into the bar and they were carting everyone as we were walking in. And me, I was with um, Elisa, you know, yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. both 40. Uh -huh. And she goes, oh, let's see if we get carted. So we walk up to him and we stand there and he goes, hi. And so we were like, do you want to see our ID? He goes, sure, if you want to hand it to me. <laughs> <laughs> see, he did. There is uh, a crap job available in San Francisco. Francisco. That's a complete waste, but it pays up to $185,000 a year for those who are interested. The city where Tony Bennett left his heart has an enormous feces problem. There's a lot of poop there. That has gotten so bad. <laughs> a lot of people are taking poops on the street. Officials decided to create a poop patrol to clean up the streets. To now, clean up the poop and the turds that are on the street that I love so dearly. <laughs> Uh, the I took a poop in San Francisco. Sing along if you know. The five-member team now... Was, I couldn't control it. Walk up and down San Francisco. Started with the shirt and then I left my heart. <laughs> there it is. In San Francisco. <laughs> I left my shirt. I took in a shirt. Then left my heart in San Francisco. Uh, so poop. they are now cleaning up human feces and uh, they're, we're assuming... Uh, other feces yeah. as well. Like and vomit. Animal feces yeah. and vomit. And, and piss. Yeah. <laughs> Can't forget piss. <laughs> I've got the first chat. <laughs> chat? It's uh, the past. Shot. Yeah. That was, there was a lot of things going on right there. There was a lot going on there, yeah, wasn't yeah. there? There was too many words in your mouth. <laughs> Had your first shot at it. <laughs> Not the past tense of... Don't no, even no, no, elude no, no. to my uh, flub there. It's there. Uh, yeah. Thank you. All right. So anyhow, uh, I even forgot the name of that damn song. Sarah, what's the name of that song? You know. <laughs> wanting and waiting? Want, waiting and wanting. Waiting and wanting. Got to do it in the right order. Wanting and no, waiting. No, it's wanting and waiting. Uh, oh, so I had it right the oh, first right, time. Right. Yeah. Well, that bodes so. well for my show today. <laughs> I would like to thank two people. Our guest, uh, Pat Gallen from yeah. CBS3, talking uh, Eagles and uh, obviously the game tonight, wild, wild card game tonight. He seems to think that they can squeak it out, and Vegas is calling them a two-point favorite as well. So yeah. you know, that's, that's where the money is. Things are headed in that direction. Uh, so we thank him for coming by. And last second call in from Burt Kreischer. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. That was really cool, hanging out with George R. R. Martin, the creator of all the the Game of Thrones and all those books, and uh, and uh, he's in Mexico and having a great time. <laughs> it was Fa like fanboying out, yeah. tremendously. <laughs> great to uh, catch up with him. How you doing, Sarah? I'm doing well. It's Excellent. so weird to see and hear you guys here because there's just a smattering of people throughout the building working today. Yeah. So somehow you guys <laughs> yeah. threw the short straw. It's uh, it feels uh, COVID esque, does it not? It does. Oh yeah. God, yeah. Remember that? Remember that nightmare. We kept coming in for that whole yeah. thing, but uh, uh, no, but uh, yeah, we're all good. We've had a good time today, and we're getting ready to turn the reins over to you. So, uh, shall we do the letter of the day? Let's do it. All right, let me see. Here we go. Preston and Steve on ninety three three WMMR. Now the daily letter and the Preston and Steve show is brought to you today by the letter P as in Pierre. All right, and we have a four pack of lower level tickets to give away to see Green Day, the Saviors tour. With Smashing Pumpkins, Rancid, and the Linda Lindens. Friday, August 9th at Citizens Bank Park. Green Day is our featured MM artist this weekend, by the way. So listen for your chance to call in and win uh, fill in the block 
of Green Day, and uh, you can get the new album, Saviors, on CD, and also qualify for a pair of pit tickets for the concert. Info and another chance to qualify at WMMR.com. Excellent. So we'll give that away on Friday. Uh, what's going on today for you? Easing into the week on a Monday as I fill in for Pierre. We'll have the workforce blocks with you 2 uh, a Jack White slash White Stripes block, and also a block of The Clash. And we'll see what else we can get into. So make sure you text me, 39333, or call 215-263-WMMR. Would love to hear from you. And is, is it a uh, one-off for Pierre, or is he taking any other days He will be back week? tomorrow. Okay, right. so just you today. Yes. All right, well, thank you, Sarah. And I want to thank our sponsor, President Steve Show, brought to you today by Duncan. President Steve Show runs on Duncan. Uh, tomorrow on our program, there is a high probability that we will have in our studio one Mr. M. Night Shyamalan. Oh. So we'll see if that comes together. He likes us. And we're also going to talk to uh, Craig Ferguson. Nice. Ah, I love Craig Ferguson. And we like him. Yeah. So that's going to be good. Uh, that and, of course, uh, another chance to possibly win that trip to Clearwater for the Clearwater word of the day for spring training and more. That's it. We're done. Rage on. Have yourself a great day. We'll see you tomorrow, friend. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.